Well, a woo to you, Chad. Happy Halloween. Hopefully, the night's treating you well. Got a, a little a little spooky stream ready to go. Hopefully, everything is going to go all right. I don't know 100%. Let me just wait to double check my audio because of that del you know lovely little delay that YouTube always puts on there to make you look retarded when you're trying to get shit to work properly. It's always fun. Uh-oh. I'm not hearing anything. Oh, now I heard my echo. Great. Nice, nice 30-second delay. Because that's the kill switch I need to be familiar with. Now, I need to give you a warning. Fair warning, chat. I don't want you to get put on a naughty list. Because somebody's out there. All right, he's keeping an eye on things. We don't want to we don't want to mess with this bad ombre. All right, so I'm putting this warning out for you right now, chat. You better take heed and pay attention. Might save you. Might save you being put on a list. And I want you to know right now that if I I will be keeping track and I will be keeping tabs and if I ever see people over here trying to play trying to play cool with all of us here at Nightwave. But then if I ever go over to a gym stream and I see you donate in a gym and suck in his fucking fake cancer dick. You're done. You're fucking done, kiddo. Oh, you don't know what kind of trouble you're in. You're done. It's game. Let me take a smoke break. Oh, yeah. It's game over for you, bucko. I've got my eye on all the kiddos doing donations over on Jim's stream. I'm going to rain hell down. Here comes the fucking thunder. If you look in the video description, there's a merch, I'm sorry, merch link. If you want to buy some things. Of course, be warned. You might be hunted to the death by, by our boy here. <laughs> he, might, he might come looking for you. Don't, whatever you do, don't go there and buy useless shit. It makes him, it infuriates him. I don't know why, but it does. That would be the link right there in the description. I hear Mersh is having a little bit of difficulty with a, a porcelain video that's come out and a alleged documentary in the works. I'm sure that's not something he's super looking forward to. I also heard that uh, he tried to get the internet arrested. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Nicely done, Mersh. Get those mean people arrested. Oh, where are the mods? Get the mods. They're talking in my chat about me trying to get the internet arrested. Stop that. Where are the mods? Who writes Who writes a letter to the police? Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Tink, 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 tink. Tink, 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 tink. I mean, who writes an email to the police? <laughs> Listing off half the internet who's offended you. What the fuck is that about? Are they Are they being mean to you? Like you know, they're passing around your private information and saying awful things about you. <laughs> that, that happens to everybody. What are you doing? What are you doing, Mersh? <laughs> I mean, I know Baked Alaska is going to jail for like six months now, probably. He content sprayed a cop at his uh, his bouncer trial, so he's got to go to the clink for a little while. But Mersh was out there. He was really he was really putting the work in trying to get Baked arrested earlier. Uh, if you saw that kill stream that he appeared on, drunk and disorderly, uh, spurking out in front of an entire audience full of people and just generally making everyone uncomfortable, he's that guy at a party that has one drink and then tells you his deepest, darkest secrets, and the seething hatred just comes flowing out, but for whatever reason, he decided to address uh, Baked Alaska and try to get him uh, accused of rape on the kill stream. if you missed that. I got a clip for you, though. We can take a look at it. Of course, be warned. Watching this clip with me at this time will put you on his fucking list, kiddo. Just so you know. Me me getting with, like, Baked was completely, like, uncalled for. I just got, like, invited to... Did he rape you? <laughs> Can you say he raped you, please, live on air? Oh, like, give me no. That. No. Was, oh he's a God, rapist. No, wait. What the he's fuck? Not, he's not he's a, rapist, a literal but... rapist. No, what rapist. What the fuck? No, no, no. You can't say this that. Is, you this is levels of jewelry that shouldn't exist. <laughs> you can't say that. She said he had sex with her against her consent, which would be rape. Come on, Dingo. No, it, it wasn't. Side. It was not rape. He never. It was raped coerced. I, I don't know where you, where you pulled that out of your ass, but it's completely fucking fake fuck? news. Coercion? He did not rape me. It was one hundred percent consensual. 
Um, the only thing that I would say is kind of like faulty is probably that like I felt like I had to fuck him in order to like be on his stream and be content. That's like, called I feel coercion. Like Oh he, he would have like thrown me to the that's side rape. if I wasn't fucking him. Ralph, that's rape. Ralph, that's, you need to kick this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's, not rape. that's not rape. That's not rape. He's calling crazy. people a rapist and gay and shit. That's kind of fucking crazy. <laughs> what the fuck, man? What are you? What are you doing there, Mersh? Why are you? Why are you trying to get people busted for rape? <laughs> I think that's a little bit of jealousy. I think that might be a little bit of jealousy seeping through there. I don't know. Maybe he's a little angry that thought got her ass tapped. <laughs> now he's looking for payback. Will you just say that he raped you? Will you just go live on this fucking stream and say this man raped you? I fucking hate you, Yoba. Say he raped you. It's got that Vince McMahon, if you've ever seen that Undertaker clip. <laughs> when Vince... When Vince was a little, you know, fucking off kilter, there's one where he's talking about the Undertaker and rape. It's a, it's a hell of a clip. I'll be honest with you. I really, I really do enjoy the Mersh content and uh, the Mersh laughter. <laughs> I'm sorry for condemning you all to being put on a list, and uh, hopefully, Bake, uh, Baked can go into witness protection program for those rape charges Mersh is going to have brought against him. <laughs> Nicely done. Woo. I think he might be a little bit mad, Chad. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm overthinking things. <laughs> maybe I'm overthinking it just a little bit. Oh, it's Halloween. Who doesn't love Halloween? Well, aside from Mersh. Mersh doesn't like Halloween. I'm sure he'll have something to complain about. I don't know how a guy who makes $20,000 a month can then bitch about a $300 vet bill. <laughs> I guess things are going difficult for him. He's probably a DIY kind of guy looking for those solutions uh, to get around that uh, quandary of how to spend his money, like building his own kitty litter. I imagine him like going to an elementary school and just stealing the sand out of their sandbox and then swinging by Home Depot to get some fucking planks from used boxes in the back and just assembling it together. And he probably likes to save on the water bill too, right? Because, you know, that's just how he is. So he takes his sweaty ass and he glues it up against the wall kind of gets a nice posture locked in place and he just he goes and he blames it on the cat that's probably half the reason he's going to the vet in the first place doctor why is my cat have human-sized shit why well, I, I don't know mersh why do you keep bringing it into the vet what the fuck is the matter with you mersh 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 what are you doing okay well that was that was that was fun. Last time I spent five minutes talking about Mersh, I got six weeks out of him. Let's see how long it goes this time. I'm almost imagining. Let's say two months. Let's say eight weeks. <laughs> You're welcome, Mersh. You got eight weeks of content out of me. <laughs> Make that fucking money, buddy. Oh, I see the the view counts dropping. I you know I understand chat. I can understand why some people are running for the hills. I would too. You've made the list. And you're done now. And I want you to know right now that if I, I will be keeping track and I, I will be keeping so much. And if I ever see people over here trying to play, trying to play cool with all of us here at Nightwave, but then if I ever go over to a gym stream and I see you donate in the gym and suck in his fucking fake cancer dick. Dramatic pause. You're done. You fucking done, kiddo. You fucking done. <laughs> I fucking love that. It's just it's so edgy. It's so fucking edgy. I love it. Done. You're all fucking on the list now. Oh boy. I bet you didn't see that coming. You're all fucked now. Oh, God, everybody needs to pray for uh, Porcelain. If he's actually going to do a documentary, uh, he's he's definitely on the list. Tink, 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 tink. <laughs> ah, well, this was this was entertaining. I know it's a bit of a, a, a random stream, but I felt like doing something for Halloween. A little bit of spooky entertainment. I think too much. Uh, hello, Jim. Uh, Rod Howard, <laughs> of course. 
If you're looking for a great anime, Skyrim Anniversary Edition is coming out in 11 days. Make sure to pre-order your copies before they run out. Well, Rod Howard, I mean, I do love a good salesman. Nothing wrong with just, uh, you know, flashing that merchandise in the description. Right, Rod Howard? I'll go. I'll make sure to go pick up a, a Skyrim a special edition. <laughs> Be my 19th fucking copy. Uh, Ace0017, I guess I'm done. Hi, Jim. Oh, well, all right there, Ace. Mr. Kill Everything, does this mean I made the list? We've all made the fucking list. I'm debating whether or not we should watch the entire breakdown of Mersh on that Killstream fucking episode where he really flipped his shit. He got super drunk and went on a rant about me. And then he like he started getting aggressive, wanted Baked Alaska, you know, arrested for rape. <laughs> and then he, he went into more detail uh, about, I don't know who the fucking guy was. I guess it was somebody that wo or worked in the industry. He was a comedian or something. I'm not 100% sure. But throughout the entirety of the thing, he kept saying, I've never... I've never, uh, I never said Styx was a pedophile, right? We, we this was this, this fabrications, falsehoods. But the first thing out of this dude's lips when Mersh was like, you know me, you know who I am, was, oh yeah, you're the guy that accused my fucking boss of being a pedophile. <laughs> and that was after he tried to get the chick to accuse <laughs> Baked of being a rapist. Baked, who's now going to go to big boy jail, or at least county lockup for the uh, macing of people, his content spraying. Who knows what the Jan 6 shit will lead to, but uh, he might be taking a, a quick preview of the future by going to county lockup. Who knows? People saying, uh, watch it. You want me to watch it? I mean, we could watch it. We could watch and commentate on it. Uh, yes, yes, play it. Okay, well, uh, you know, uh, what the hell? We'll take a look at some of it. Let me see if I, I pull the clip up here. We'll watch it. We'll, we'll, I'll give you the breakdown. But I just hope you know we're all going on the fucking list for this, guys. Uh, Jim, before you leave, why? Well, I guess I'm not leaving. We're going to be watching Mersh get drunk and scream at people. You want to be on the list twice? God, you are also brave. Let me see if I can find where it is. I'll have to throw it up on the desktop. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's the rape one. That's not the one I'm looking for. Which one am I looking for here? Is it this one? Give me a second, chat. Uh, I, I'm going to have to fucking dig shit up. Let me ask you. First, what's medical? What's your problem with medical? The fact that Alice didn't show up is not the most shocking thing to me ever. They're both undependable people. Chicken and Alice are both. Okay, here we go. All right, let's pull it up, chat. Let me get everything set up and ready to go. And we'll, we'll, we're, all, we're all done, kiddo. You're all fucking done, kiddos. All right. Let's 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 get this going here. One second, everyone. Put that down. Pull that up. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Because I'm just going. I'm just going to show the desktop. Why not? Just make sure I hide all my hardcore pornography first. Give me a second, chat. So much filthy pornography. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Let me let me pull it up. We'll watch some of it. <laughs> I'll give you my my response, but you understand. Five minutes will get eight weeks out of him. If I watch this thirty minute clip, who fucking knows how long shit's gonna go on? But let's let's give it a go. Uh, where are we? Display capture. Pull that up. All right, I think you should see it. Oh wow, windows and windows, huh? Okay, here we are. Undependable, so. Oh, Dove Death. Hey, Merce, what's your problem yeah, right, with Metalcore? Dove Death? Metalcore? What's your problem with Medicare, Merch? And this is, by the way, this is about the point where he started going off the rails. Just a little, it kind of gradually leads into it, but this really definitely no did. Problem with, uh, here's the thing. I've gotten so much shit for this. I don't have a problem with Medicare. I just have a problem with his fake cancer. <laughs> oh. And I don't like what's, what's. Can you, can you hear how sloshed he is, by the way? I just, uh, uh, he's he's three sheets to win by this point. Fine, like have fake cancer, but then I can see you have fake, fake cancer. Like what is it? Uh, what what evidence? Hey Andy, let me fake? let me ask you this. What Ooh. is what is Jim's real name? I don't know. What what is Jim's real agenda? 
I, I guess I should give a little bit of background on this. Um, I think Mersh is convinced I work for the government. I think he thinks I work for the CIA or the FBI. And you'll get the, like, he's brought this up, I guess, before. In, in a non-ironic way. But we'll, we'll let I it know, go. I, Adio Furniture. I, I, he makes entertaining yeah, videos. He has I fake don't. cancer. He's a fake person with fake cancer. He's a fake person, so his cancer by default is fake. So stop it. Uh, and also, well, Dingo, I, I'm not saying okay, it's but he's writing by the way, Dingo, stop I'm not saying it is chat. true. I'm just saying, I'm not sh like, I'm just like, whatever. Oh my God, that's so bad. No, you're right. I, I called a guy out for having fake cancer. He might have he might have real cancer. He might day. or he might not. Tell, yeah, tell me, true. tell me, tell me, give me details. Tell me details. I don't details. care. I don't you care know, if he you. does or if he doesn't. <laughs> Andy, I'm not directing this at you. I'm directing right, it at right. the super shatter. So to all the Medica fans, tell me about this friend of yours that you have a deep connection with, <laughs> whose name you know, and he means so much to you and he he has cancer. Tell me some stories about him. Otherwise, it's he's a literal fake person. He's the whole gimmick of Jim was that I'm a fake person. I'm not a real person. Like it, it, it kind of makes me wonder. Like, I don't know if Mersh understands my my docs have been up on Encyclopedia Dramatica for like six, seven years. Right? Like he knows that, doesn't he? Show me your face. Give me a docs, you're a fake person. I tell you, I need to see some fucking image scans. I need you to stand with your medical records because you're a fake person working for the CIA. <laughs> I just, I don't know what started him on this tangent, but like he's, he goes off the rails anytime it gets brought up. I am, Chad. I see it. I see a lot of, uh, uh, you're a fed. A CIA glow in the dark. You're this correct. Is, I'm just a voice on the internet, and I'm doing this. This is funny. So until you're a real person, your cancer is also fake. Sorry. Like as, Sorry. as the res. I don't. I don't even know what that means. He's so drunk. President Jim Imposter. I, I kind of have to to go on the defense room a little bit. He called me the oldest fag, and I, you know what? That was the nicest thing anybody has said about me. So I have to defend him here. I think no, I his answer is real. I, I get you, Gator, and you know what? You're right, brother. The fake internet guy made you feel special for a moment, and you know what? Yeah, enough of a reason to not even <laughs> slightly call it. By the way, the funny be the funny thing is like all the Medica fans are like. How dare you call out his cancer? You're calling out COVID on vaccinated diagnosis this is daily. So shut up. <laughs> I, he, this is what I think it is. If I had to, because people have asked me, why is Mersh so mad? I, I did COVID streams back from like December 2019 to like March of 2020. And then I did a few anime streams and then not much. And then, you know, I got my cancer shit going on probably around August. But, like, I think he's really honest to God convinced that I work for the federal government and that this is some elaborate plan. Like, this is some master conspiracy where I'm going to uh, unleash the COVID pandemic myself or I, I don't know what it is exactly. But it's deeply tied into that. He really is mad about those streams <laughs> that I did two years ago. And he's still fucking pissed about it. And then it kind of, it weaves itself into fake cancer, and then it goes into the you're on a list kiddo thing. But I don't buy that, oh, it was just a job, just, it's a bit. I'm just goofing around here with the you're on a list kiddo and all that shit. No, he, he he's letting the fucking mask slip a little bit here. He did it with Baked Alaska, you know, he kept running his mouth about Baked Alaska, right? And how he was going to, you know, he's not afraid of him, he'll take him on. Go watch the video. The moment he ran into Baked Alaska, he waddled away. And he's like, I'm not going to fight a federal agent because, of course, Baked is also a federal agent. Everybody is. Well, Baked might be. But the point is, <laughs> Mersh is like, he, he waddles away. He's like, I'm not going to fight him. That's, that's the government's trying to set me up. Ah, you're going to get me in prison. No, nobody's saying you had to throw a punch at him, but you kind of you kind of tottered off pretty fucking quickly. And then, I guess, wrote off more emails to the local sheriff's department because you got upset. I don't fucking know. Let me see if I can find on this fucking thing where he, he starts going off on 
up there's the baked Alaska thing. Oh, I think it. Who uh, that was the guy right there? Let's see. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. About, the, about merch. Oh. No, Whatever wait, you want to say, I don't know. You, go ahead. Go, go, yeah, ahead. go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. All right. Oh, I mean, you know, fuck. Uh, this dude <laughs> named Judge Jesse Pop. Uh, his name it's not Jesse Pop. It's some other, some other name. Jesse. Pot uh, Apple news, TV. Jesse, Pot Apple TV. It's yeah. Pot Apple t- a TV. Pot yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, Pot Awful. He's great. He's, he seems like a good guy or whatever. He said he had a friend uh, from out of town who wanted to do, see the studio. Could I uh, help him out? So I was like, well, hey, maybe. Be a sure, I guess. You know? uh, I didn't mind doing that. He didn't tell me who it was. Didn't tell me anything about it. Uh, didn't say anything about it. And uh, this dude shows up, uh, you know, uh, Mersh, I guess. You know, with, with, you know, he's shooting. He's got a stick and everything. And uh, he's, uh, you know, like in the past, I think he called my, my boss a pedophile or something. And uh... <laughs> so that's that. I, I just want to really try to again. Uh, let's pull this back up. There we go. Uh, like emphasize this. You know, he said, oh, the sticks thing is bullshit. I never called sticks a pedophile. That didn't happen. If you go watch the uh, Morning Kumite, they basically said yes. And then he's saying happy birthday as an apology for, for doing that. But like every person he encounters, it's like this shit. Like this guy's like, oh, yeah, he wanted to meet me, he talked to my boss, and then called him a pedophile, tries to get to call Baked Alaska a rapist, <laughs> insinuate Sticks as a pedophile. And he just kept going off the rails. Like I have a snippet of it, right? Uh, but I don't have the whole thing where he gets like, kind of driven out of the call because everybody's just dead silent for every joke. But I guess, I guess so you know, chat, where we stand. Uh, you're all on a list for watching the stream or buying merchandise or super chatting or even just chatting itself. And I work for the federal government as part of the CIA coronavirus corps uh, to, to convince you the disease exists. We've been working really hard to fool you, I guess. That's what we've been doing, me as a CIA agent. That's been my goal the whole time. And now I've used cancer as my smokescreen to disappear from the internet, even though I really haven't disappeared from it. But uh, that's uh, that's your lore. That's your background, chat. Uh, King of Pole's boxing videos. Yes, I am aware that King of Pole wanted to box Ethan Ralph, uh, but <laughs> I don't want to watch King of Pole's boxing videos. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for your service. Well, you are welcome. I'm glad glad I could help. Glad I could help, chat. <laughs> You're all part of the ops now. The glow-in-the-dark ops. I know it's been a clever ruse. I've worked really hard at it. Yeah, it was the other weird thing, too. He was like, oh, Jim, Jim wanted to disappear off the internet with the cancer thing because he was embarrassed about coronavirus. I... I publicly talked about having cancer back in August of last year, which is like a month before the death uh, toll fucking shot sky high. So why would I go away then if this was all part of an elaborate CIA operation? Why would I choose that moment to go away? <laughs> it was like 4,000, 5,000 deaths daily. You'd think I'd be sticking around for that part. But I guess that's just the mysterious government organization I work for. We don't really... We don't really play by the rules. We're all bad boys over here at the CIA. <laughs> it's also why I threw Terry under that bus. He's getting a little too close to the truth. You know, I, I had my eyes on him about that whole glow-in-the-dark thing. He needed to be silenced. He went too far. Sorry, chat. I just couldn't help myself. Uh, so he deleted it a lot. But uh, Wayne, from my understanding, is convinced that I am a federal agent. Which is like the fourteenth person on the internet that believes that. I mean, we've got Mersh. I don't. I mean, do we need to remind you of Mersh? Let's do it anyway. And I want you to know right now that if I, I will be keeping track and I will be keeping tabs. And if I ever see people over here trying to play, trying to play cool with all of us here at Nightwave. But then if I ever go over to a gym stream and I see you donating to Jim and sucking his fucking fake cancer dick. You're done. Oh, you're so fucking done, kiddo. So we got Mersh, who in his drunken ramblings 
uh, outside of uh, getting angry about anybody ever donating to me because he'll put you on a list. Uh, convinced that I'm like a Fed or a CIA guy. I work with a team of Hollywood people. <laughs> I work with a team of Hollywood people to to push forward the uh, the COVID narrative. It's not insane at all. Now we've got Wayne Lambright building pipe bombs in the desert, who's parroting the same idea. I'm not sure why it is so many people are convinced I'm a federal agent. That just uh, what what department am I in? What job do I have? What what exactly am I doing? What government agency do you imagine hires me to fuck with people on the internet? <laughs> why don't you just take a two year vacation? Where they like Jim? Done. You've done enough. Okay, Gamergate was, that was an accomplishment. And that whole Trump thing, brilliant. And you actually got them to believe COVID. It's time you take a vacation. I think the heat's getting too hot. Wayne Lambright and Mersh are on to you. <laughs> They're convinced. They know who you are, buddy. Oh, I like to, I like to bring up Mersh a little bit here and there. Just, just, you know, check in on him every once in a while. I, you know, just to see what he's doing. He's, he's donned a new look, if, if you know. He's been uh, heavily engaged in exercising <laughs> and eating healthy. And uh, the results are showing. Look at that. That's what I call a sexy man. Now, mersh has got the look. I would call this, uh, this ensemble, really, this entire get-up, this, uh, this look that he's going for. I would call this peeking your head under the stall at a bathroom. Now, I'm not saying he'd suck your dick, but if you left it hanging there long enough, who, you know, maybe something happens. <laughs> he looks like that uncomfortably gay uncle at, at uh, <laughs> family get-togethers that you're not allowed to use the bathroom with or be in a room together with. And I like how the mustache, how the mustache, it like, it's, it's, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's very short and little on one side and very big on the other. Now, I understand sometimes cum can get in there, you know, and you, you try to clean it out. It's difficult. And so it's, it's, it's like waxing, really. And so you get this uneven mustache. Now, I'm not sure why he's got a goiter on the size of his neck that looks like it's filled with 18 liters of pus. Uh, maybe he's like a chipmunk, and that's where he stores the semen that he gets when he goes under the bathroom stalls. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a mind reader. I just work at the FBI, Mersh. Oh, well, you know, what do I, what do I do? What do I do? God, it's like a rogues gallery of people. God. Where do we even start? What do we start with, fellow chud buds? Well, let's start with an oldie, <laughs> but a goodie. Apparently, there's a documentary being made right now. A porcelain documentary. Maybe you've watched some of his videos before. He's decided to uh, cover a subject. Uh, that you might be familiar with. If you've ever donated to the stream, you're probably on a list. Turns out he's going to be doing a documentary about the person making that list. And I got invited to, uh, I don't know, give like three seconds of audio after a six-hour conversation. But our boy, our boy Mersh is going to be the subject of a documentary, probably coming out in the next couple of months. Not exactly sure how long those take. Might be wondering, what would a, what would a Mersh documentary even look like? Just so happens I've got a trailer for you. Something Porcelain had put up. I thought I'd I'd show it off for you. Let you get a little taste of it. Mmm, tastes good. <laughs> let's uh let's take a look at that amazing a documentary that's soon to come. Get me a worthy adversary or stop wasting my goddamn time. That is my message to these fucking Redditors and these faggots. Now, I know that uh, some people have called into question if I have cancer or not. I, I heard that Mersh said that. In fact, you might want to be careful, Chad. I also heard that Mersh told people if you donate to me ever on any live stream I do, he's going to be very disappointed in you. But when I gave him this 375, you know, his eyes lit up as if this thing was going to last him for a year and a half. Damn, you're fat as fuck. Holy shit. Why don't, why don't you fight me, bitch? Talk some more shit. Oh, he runs like a coward. <laughs> oh, like a tower! Oh, it's Revenge of the Sis. Revenge of the Sis is ROTC. Yeah, those guys are losers, dude. I'm telling you, I got everything to prove. 
that everything he said is a complete fucking lie. The amount of passive aggressive shots this motherfucker has taken at us. He's like literally attacked everyone who can suck his dick. Who writes a letter to the police? Oh, I'm sorry, that's right. Tink, 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 shh, tink, 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 tink. I mean, who writes an email to the police? What if Mersh had more money? What would that look like? Fucking coward, fat fuck. Dude, I couldn't believe he's so fucking fat! <laughs> you wanna know why they hate me? They hate me because for probably a year, they emailed me and they were like, Nick, please come on our podcast, please come on our podcast. And I never responded because it's their name is so gay. I don't know what his show is when it's not pot awful fucking with him. A 40 something year old woman's diary. Don't follow Merch. I don't be part of the Merch effect. And I always told you I wasn't part of it. And obviously, you could see I wasn't because he hates me. I was ready to fight him right there on the street. But he wanted to waddle away like a fucking bitch. So let's let's organize it now. Number one is the play on Star Wars. Number two, Revenge of the Sis, the Sith gender. We might see a man who's barely able to make these payments on this rent. I love that. I love when someone's in a financial bind. I hear Mersh is having a little bit of difficulty with a, a porcelain video that's come out and an alleged documentary in the works. I'm sure that's not something he's super looking forward to. Can somebody get me somebody who's worth a shit? Please. Because I don't want to do this anymore. Oh, are you excited, Chet? Has that got your chud energy feeling through your body? Can you feel it going through your veins? <laughs> uh, so I, I was unfamiliar with a lot of Mersh lore. Like, I only really knew of him from our interactions about being put on lists. Uh, but apparently, there's quite a bit of Mersh lore out there which is why the conversation went for six fucking hours. So uh, that should be fun. Look forward to that. <laughs> Mersh has quite the uh, entertaining history. Let's put it that way. I'm not going to give any spoilers away. I know working on a documentary of this size is probably going to take a while. I don't want to ruin any of the twists and turns that you'll encounter. But our boy Mersh is still out there. Still angry. <laughs> still very mad that you donate and buy things, apparently. And he had a message for me. Uh, my career is over, but my the but my favorite part of this is really the second part. So let's just uh, take a quick listen. I think you'll enjoy this. You peaked in 2017, and you're still walking around YouTube in your fucking Letterman jacket trying to pick up chicks. It's pathetic. All right. Walking around like it's high school, like you're the Fonz, in your Letterman jacket, fucking pussy. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling this dude got stuffed in the lockers daily? It's such a weird thing to say in your Letterman jacket, walking around, bullying, acting like YouTube is high school. We should treat it like it's a college, really. Academics, please respond. Walking around like it's high school? Are you trying to get pussy? Are you trying to pick up girls in your Letterman jacket, big tough guy? Oh, oh you fucking chuds in your Letterman jackets, bullying the shit out of me, shoving me in lockers. I can't take it. If you'd like to bully Mersh, <laughs> if you'd like to bully Mersh and shove his ass into a locker, have I got news for you? <laughs> Chudbud officially has Letterman jackets now available for purchase. Remember, bully the weak, they deserve it. <laughs> if you ever run into Mersh, just point at the back of your jacket. Let him know you're there to bully him. That's right. Thank you, Mersh. Thank you, Mersh, for allowing me to sell more shit. High school bullies, please respond. Pick up your Letterman jacket in the office so we can push nerds into their fucking lockers where they belong. <laughs> oh. Of course, classic merchandise is always available. But if you want to be part of the bully crew, if you want to shove Mersh into a locker where he's having nightmares, apparently, and reliving them daily, even into his middle of his life, uh, make sure to pick up that Letterman jacket. Just remember, when you do, ah, you're done, kiddo. And I want you to know right now that if I, I will be keeping track and I will be keeping tabs. And if I ever see people over here trying to play, trying to play cool with all of us here at Nightwave, 
But then if I ever go over to a gym stream and I see you donate in the gym and suck in his fucking fake cancer dick, you're done. You're so done. You chuds, you're done. No more honking for you in the hallways. You hear me? What are you? Wait, wait, stop it. What are you doing? We are going to right now. We're going to punch you to the teacher. Oh, and you chat, bud. Bully the week merchandise. Okay, thank you, Mersh. So, so it looks like you got a you got a solid hour of Mersh for me. <laughs> so it's been really <laughs> difficult um, to try and... I've spent all week doing this try, uh, to try and sort of condense everything down so that, first of all, you've got enough context for the chunks of material that I've got here. But also that it's not just so overloaded that um, we're just sitting here just watching Nightwave <laughs> together. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I've, I've tried my best. Uh, I think we've probably got uh, some of the better stuff. Um, I've had to leave a lot out, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, I, th I figured that the, the format of sort of watching a couple of little clips here, and then I've got a couple of like follow up questions as well that's sort of more formal, and then we can, just, you know, have a, have a little chat about the kind of uh, cringe that we're watching here so uh so, so you, uh, you, you don't really know much about merch right you, you only the recent sort of things that he's popped up on in, in your world really that you've, you've kind of picked up on uh, yeah i can tell you my my knowledge as far as merch goes so um i am familiar with him from back when uh tonka was still a thing he had done a morning kumite with uh merch and royce right <laughs> Royce is the other guy's name? Yeah. Is, yeah. Um, and so they had come on and they were talking about, because uh, at the time they were doing all these videos about Dan Schneider, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. pedophilia in Hollywood. That uh, was a big thing that they were covering kind of nonstop. And for whatever reason, at that at that time, Styx had had um, people posting like this picture of somebody uh, that looked uh, remarkably like him, uh, dressed in women's clothing and makeup. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, and there was a lot of other stuff that was being talked about. People were saying that Six was leaving comments for an underage girl, right? Um, but when you would go and look at the archives, because people were archiving the videos, you mm -hmm. could see that that wasn't actually a case. People were just doing, you know, funny image edits. Um, so for whatever reason, at the very end of this morning kumite, um, Royce and Mersh go in there and they throw out the thing basically calling Six a pedophile, right? And then they, they leave. Uh, and so I, I think Tonka restarted the stream. So it's like split into two different episodes. Um, they come back on there uh, and basically are forced to apologize and sing happy birthday to Styx, which was just uh, an amazing ritualistic uh, humiliation for them. Uh, and so that was really my first getting to know Mersh and Royce. Hmm. Um, and then obviously since then, I've, I've come to know, <laughs> know more about Mersh, um, just watching him essentially fight the entire internet, it seems like. <laughs> It's like he's, I, I don't know what it, I mean, like, yeah, there's a thing involving me where he's, you know, um, <laughs> but taking shots, I guess. Um, yeah. But then, you know, kind of following through with it and seeing that, like, he does this with everybody. It seems like he does this with fucking everyone. Oh, yeah. It's it's his MO. It's, um, it, I think it started off, uh, he, he would call himself, unironically, a giant killer. That was in his Twitter bio. It was uh, Mersh, Terrorspur no, leader of the Terrorspurks. Uh, giant, the giant killer really giant killer but then it turns out that the two giants he tried to try to slay was Styx and then matt christiansen and both of them made a fool of him so well the yeah. thing that fascinated me was like the depth to it right because um i wasn't really like that Styx thing and the kumite thing happened like four or five years ago right mm. um or whenever the, i mean it, god it would have been like three or four years yeah um it, it, but so i don't know a ton about him but just kind mm. of with his recent interaction with me um, like just the small things that I've seen and heard in his interactions, it seems like there's a lot of depth there. Like, I mean, I caught the thing where he was bragging about, I make $20,000 a month. And then he's posting about his cat bills on Twitter. Like it's a financial burden. And like, if you're a high roller, why are we talking about kitty litter merch? Like you're driving a, a used BMW. You're bitching about kitty litter. Like what the fuck is going on here for as somebody that's been paying attention to this and uh, have formulated a number of my own theories on on a lot of Mershisms, um, the those moments where you see him tweeting about sudden expenditures, uh, you know, sudden sudden costs uh, just out of the blue. Uh, it's usually mechanics or vet bills, that, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and it's usually preceded by a night wave in which there's a massive boom in donations, and it's mostly night wave fans 
super chatting in saying, oh, this is for the cat fund. Oh, this is for the BMW fund. And I think it's a way of, like, his chat feeling like they're part of his life. You know, it's that kind of, like, two-way thing. And, and I think I think he's kind of realised in a Pavlovian way that if he even just lightly mentions an expenditure, then that's that's sort of, like, it's 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 like this Pavlovian click in his fans' minds of like, oh, I best get my wallet out. <laughs> and help so it's like, it's, it's like some weird kind of um, self fulfilling prophecy. He's using kitty litter expenses to make the twenty grand a month. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's def He's making money. I mean, I've had a look at his Patreon, and obviously the the money that he gets on Nightwave, um, you know, have at it at the end of the day if he's making money. Sure. That's great for him, but. Yeah, and I, I agree. See, I don't hold any grudges, <laughs> Mersh, oh, yeah. against people making money on the like, internet. That's yeah, fine. You're not he, going on a list. Yeah, I think he, he thinks that we want to try it, that, that, or at least I, I say we. But I, um, I'm going to guess we as in anybody that laughs at him. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah. And, and and that goes into, if you remember, the, the whole Arrest the Internet saga, and it turns out... Oh, only... my God, that was the... <laughs> best shit that i did pay attention to that that yeah. whole spiel where he's like tink 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 <laughs> <laughs> i laugh so fucking hard but it's the the notion that of all the because he only really knows the names of like me uh jesse from pod awful alan powell like a couple of people that he knows that the tangible names of and the rest of it is just kiwi farms and a subreddit dedicated to him so he has no idea so anything bad that happens because he can't attribute it to a single tangible identity it's emails to kitsap county sheriff's office with my name on it or jesse's name and and it's kind of like if he can sort of shoehorn us into it by uh, just even tangentially then that seems to be enough now, do you envision yourself getting a call from a, a local sheriff sometime five months from now asking you about the documentary you made on the, the kitty litter king, the giant slayer, Mr. Marsh himself? <laughs> the giant slayer. I would I would welcome that. I would be so happy if, if, if that did happen. But I'm pretty certain that uh, Tiffany Dobbins is her name. I'm pretty sure that the minute she skims Marsh's email, she probably put it in the trash and ignored it. Um, you think she's going through it like, what should I deal with today? A rape, a homicide, a, a burglary, a robbery? Oh, another email from Mersh about being laughed at on the internet. Let's get on that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just it was the audacity as well of of him uh, subtly trying to put other things in the email that could probably you know trigger their attention. Like he put the um, Christchurch massacre in there as, as a kind of like. Yeah, you know, they're sort of involved with for, uh, with with Kiwi Farms, and as we know, Kiwi Farms were sort of involved with the Christchurch massacre. And now, now I'm not saying anything here, okay, uh, officer. I, you know, I'm just the people laughing at me may or may not be involved in violent uh, <laughs> homicidal massacres, okay? It's just something you might want to take into consideration. <laughs> Yeah, and it was like I said, it was just the audacity, and he he does he's done that before actually. We'll, we'll get to this with Mike Cernovich. There was a, there was a deep platforming attempt from Mersh and a couple of uh, well, I say a couple. It was a thousand of his <laughs> of his circle of fans, where they all signed a petition to deplatform Cernovich. And the reasons that he put there were things like he tried to throw the Me Too thing in there because of Mike Cernovich's rape accusations, and he tried to throw in the fact that he's a Trump supporter. He tried to throw in the fact that he's a uh, that he's a conspiracy theorist and and talks about Pizzagate, and so it's the same thing. It's it's like he will, he will like load his bases. He will just front load um, <laughs> any kind of agenda that he has in order to really maximize the attention that it's it's going to get. It's... Oh, see, I thought he was going to get upset with uh, Cernovich. Yeah, I, I guess I don't know the backstory on this. I thought you know, it just based on my uh, surface level knowledge that. Mm. Um, he was, you know, trying to get like a refund. He didn't really gain the Magilla Gorilla mindset from reading his book, or he was having difficulty <laughs> fucking trannies after following the the, the how to guide, and he, he wanted that money back for kitty litter. I don't know. Well, as we'll, we'll find out, it's not just trannies that he's having trouble fucking. That's <laughs> um, that's the most recent. There's been a huge recent amount of uh, of stuff that's been happening. That's incredibly internet-y and it's going to take a lot of explaining but when we get there and if 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 we kind of do get there then it's it's going to be a big payoff i think because it's some of the most unhinged uh crazy i mean we're talking about a guy that's literally right now he's holding up in in every single stream he's holding up a, a, a cutout of a girl that that wronged him of her naked 
and he's put loads of like squares on it and he's playing a game that every $500 donation that he gets he pulls off a square revealing more of her naked body and it's and this girl is like she's getting lawyers involved and she's like she's complaining about revenge porn and all this kind of stuff now, and now I think I think I know a tiny bit about this now is this is this the girl that went on to um jesse's stream she is yeah. and and, sh and shared the dms where he talked about didn't he try that i'm kind of a nerd thing with her when he was yeah. talking about his uh cb radio hobbies and <laughs> shit <Yeah>. ham radio <laughs> ham radio yeah, there we go yeah. you know I, I, maybe i can take care of you if the grid ever goes down i'm a survival man i yeah. got my cb radio <laughs> And it's just funny how how quickly he goes from the kind of milady stuff at the beginning of that, where he's he's talking about like, oh, I thought you hated me, oh, all this kind of stuff, and then as soon as the discussion turns a little sour for him, and with a, with a disagreement of, I think it was a disagreement on who, which one of them stopped the kissing from turning into something more serious. He claims that he stopped it. She claimed that she stopped it. And um, we will never know. But then he turns into the most enraged incel that you he just full on MRA McTal just just real just started attacking her like and um, and look she I mean she is a former cam girl so I guess you know she she gets what she gets but <laughs> it was just the turn was 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 quite beautiful but we will get to that I don't want to I don't want to spoil oh um, yeah 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 no like I said I, I I know just just a little bit so I mean you kind of got the idea then you know I, I, that one kind of mainstream and and then I, I guess bits and pieces and fragments I've heard people make jokes about that I kind of get, but I don't know the deep lore. So it'll be well, good I'm to just know. happy that like because it, it, with Mersh, it's a weird it's a weird topic because so many people don't give a shit because obviously why would you? <laughs> but, right. Yeah. But I feel that once you get the bite, once once it kind of like once you understand why he's funny and like it's really difficult to 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 let it go. Really, I, I find at least. Sure. Yeah, a lot of people seem super, uh, super fucking excited for the documentary. <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably the second most requested thing I get after fucking Ethan Ralph. <laughs> like, it's just oh man. yeah, with all the shit going. Yeah, right. And it's yeah. weird that these two are um, like bosom buddies now, they, right? Really like are, they're doing yeah. the bowling thing together, and uh, you know, they're going to Vegas. Or they both. I mean, it seems like once Ralph started going to Vegas, because isn't Mersh in Vegas right now? Yes. Yes, he is. Yeah, so we got all these high rollers going down with their kitty litter money to, to bet on black in the casinos, so. Yeah. It does feel that this is all self-preservationist when it comes to, you know, alliances that you can make. And it's it's what I feared would happen uh, from back in the day when it was a little less like this. And then, you know, suddenly no, there's not really any count accountability anymore. And people are allowed, people are sort of like are able now to, to create create their little enclaves and create their little communities where everything is fed back to them and they've got protection from from everyone involved there and i think that it's almost like this mafia cabal thing with, with the five families and now you've got mersh's group you've got ethan and the killstream and everybody there and i feel like it's it's almost like everybody looks after each other and uh it's a weird I mean, for entertainment purposes, it's fantastic. I can't wait for this bowl, <laughs> this bowling thing. But um, yeah, I, 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 I kind of see the sinister elements to it as well. Yeah, it, it is weird. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I think it's part kind of just generalized censorship, kind of pushing people away. But true, true. Um, a good majority. Oh, oh, shit! My screen just died on me. Sorry about that. <laughs> power saving mode on there we go um but yeah i think uh, yeah it, it is kind of i've noticed too like there's this weird transition I, I don't know if you've noticed this with content on the internet that went from um almost being just you know kind of exclusively videos kind of transitioning into streams but now it's mm -hmm. like everybody's doing podcasts oh. and like those podcasts are like the most segregated things right um and i mean I, i'm fine with that i know everybody you know a lot of people listen to them i think um oh, yeah. you know like sargon's a good example right his channel started to kind of diminish, and then he went to do the what is it, White Lotus? Yeah, that, and I, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think yeah, it's and that's doing really well from is, what I understand. Yeah, Dude, yeah or, they're, they've got staff. That, um... Yeah, like he's got a whole studio and everything. Like he's doing his own Tim Pool thing. But I, I, I've noticed like you know he, he's doing that. I mean, obviously like Tim Pool does his kind of thing where it's kind of a split. Mm. Um, but I, I think I'm noticing like I wouldn't be surprised. I guess is what I'm saying if you notice. Uh, like the next step or iteration will be something like Ethan Ralph and Mersh and maybe a few others um, trying to hop off, maybe even live streaming altogether and move into a uh, more podcast focused, right? Mm, 
Yeah, similar um, to yeah. Like yeah, I I mean I don't know like what's going to happen with uh, what is it Fuentes and Cozy TV. I can't imagine that's going to last long. Yeah. Um, yeah. and once that's gone, I mean it's really just what Odyssey and Rumble, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so they're going to need something, right? They're going to you know they're going to be on Podbean or whatever fucking mm. podcasting uh, service they can find, but. Um, that's going to, I think, excel what you're seeing. That's going to accelerate it, right? Because if you thought it was like a feedback loop before where the, the, the garden was closed off, it's going to be crazy going forward. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right, I'll, uh, I'll start playing the uh, sure. the, the clip then. Uh, so we first, um, first of all, we've got the... Uh, sorry, go ahead. How long is this documentary going to be? Oh, fucking hell. Um, I, don't, I, I, was, I was thinking about doing it in parts, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to just I want to do it all and just get, get it done with and, and just leave Mersh alone for the rest of my life. Um, so it's, it's probably shaping up to be a, a couple of hours, I think. Um, it's, it's just I, I will end up having to drop a lot of stuff as well, though, to be fair. But uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be quite, quite lengthy. Well, personally, I love documentaries like this, um, and, and I think a lot of people like long form videos. So mm. uh, don't don't try to constrain yourself too much. I mean, I, I'd sit there and watch it if it was seven hours. Yeah, you know, like I watch oh, yeah. those fucking uh, uh, video game analysis videos where people spend eight hours talking about Morrowind. So <laughs> if that can if that can hook me, watching Mersh will cry about kitty litter for ten days is gonna probably do it too. <laughs> All right, let's go. Stand-up comedy. So um, this is just a couple of clips. Uh, it's mostly just laughing at the things he's wearing. Uh, so just hone in on the things he's wearing, is, is, is essentially. Focus on the outfits, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. I'm sorry, pause. Is this, this is him? That is him from mid-2000s. Uh, you can so... see the finger <laughs> gloves there. And... Uh... No, I couldn't because the video quality is so terrible. But now that you pointed it out, I wasn't really focused on the gloves. I didn't. This I did. So okay, uh, he was a stand-up comic. Yeah. Well, <laughs> was he a successful one? <laughs> well, he's now podcasting. So. Oh, I'm probably... sorry, I forgot. Yeah, he's he's now he's now the co-chair of fucking yeah. Nightwave, right, or whatever the fuck it is. Our Return of the Sis. Return of the Six. I mean, he might as well be called that. To be is fair. that? It looks like he's wearing a conductor's hat. Is that a train conductor's hat? Have you ever? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to. The uh, fat didn't he... <laughs> yeah, didn't he recently say he needed like a fashion help or something? Yes, yes, yes. He did. He uh, he wanted a professional stylist to uh, essentially to help him with photo shoots, which I guess he's going to be doing. Oh my god, I want a headshot of this motherfucker. Like, I want, like, a full fashion catalog of merch. Just nothing but him and his goiters. His giant fucking neck goiters and his little conductor hats. All right, I'm sorry. I just, I, you caught me off guard a little. I thought we were going to, you know, the, the this was going to be, like, <laughs> his cross-eyed ass looking around on his podcast. I didn't know we are going to go right into stand-up. Oh, yeah, it goes, it goes back a bit. <laughs> so, oh, um... how old is he? He uh, he's about thirty eight now, thirty seven, thirty eight. I think. Maybe no, no, no. I meant in the cl in the club. How old is oh, he? In he would the have club? been in his mid twenties. I would say probably twenty six. I'd say maybe even oh. maybe a bit older than that. Maybe late twenties. And, and based on the outfit, I'm guessing he's doing this routine in the village. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> I would imagine so. It's like a like an S and M Freddy Krueger with his t shirt with his shirt there as well. And he's he's uh, as you can see the, the the jacket the sports coat is a is a favorite of Mersh's. He's been wearing it. I think he wears it now, or at least he, he got bullied out of wearing them. But he was wearing them for a while to cover the what well, you know the, the excess chunk there. But... Is it the same one? Is he that frugal? He's held on to the same dinner jacket now for a good decade or two. Do you think? It wouldn't surprise me. I I think the one that he clung on to the longest was this kind of cream one that started getting less and less cream the longer he wore it. But, it became uh, more and more merch colored, did it? Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was certainly looking uh, <laughs> disheveled by the end of it, and then. Again, I think he just got bullied out of it. Jesse used to just do he used to do streams dressed as him. <laughs> with oh, like, really? Yeah, with like pillows up his body and everything, and he'd just wear his <laughs> he'd wear like because he's bought loads of Nightwave t shirts from Mersh just as a joke. So uh, <laughs> I think that's why Mersh doesn't wear them anymore. Oh, you he's... know the thing that's fucking with my head too is you, you said this would have been when he's in his mid twenties. He's his late thirties now, so this would have been like. 2010 like 2005 to 2010 that, yeah. yeah about 2005 2006 well, why is he wearing 80s fashion then like what the fuck is the deal with the fingerless gloves that's so out of fashion by this point right oh yeah it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense i think 
I believe it's it's just a, a case of trying to make himself look interesting and trying to stand out. Perhaps I've no idea because I don't remember. I mean, I'm fairly old now, and I don't remember anybody dressing like this uh, in the. Well, not not anymore. not in this one. Uh, like I would expect, like fingerless gloves like that. Like okay, maybe that's like um, a, like a chick in the '80s that's into like a hairband. Maybe she'd be wearing fingerless gloves, but not a grown man in 2005 <laughs> when people are walking around with you know technology that's starting to catch up with the world. Right? It's just a little weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, we, you, Big J Okerson is obviously famous for the fingerless gloves, but he's he's kind of he does it for like you know I think I think he's kind of like into the goth scene and stuff. But well, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna do the whole look, I drink a lot, man. I drink, man. My liver is fucking hardcore. for one sec yeah. I, I, you know more than the fashion of the fedora what really struck me on that clip is he's doing his stand-up bit in front of the restaurant and they're talking louder than he is they're so uninterested in the punchline to his fucking joke that they're just shouting over him that's got to be so demoralizing <laughs> i think stand-up always looks incredibly uh, lucrative it looks like such a great time but you forget that you're watching people that aren't performing to four people eating their dinner trying to get on with their lives so it just must be an absolute train wreck trying to do stand-up well, it's, it's, it's a choice for the uh for the patron right do i want to enjoy my uh my fried chicken and my uh overpriced beer or do i want to look at this guy who's dressed like a commando up on stage <laughs> that thinks he's an extra from like fucking rambo or something with his green beret hat uh tell a joke about puerto ricans i don't know i think i'll eat fuck him <laughs> yeah He's just uh, it's so. Is he's, this from Halloween? Uh, it's frozen right now on a picture of him dressed. <laughs> was he in the Green Berets or what the fuck am I looking at here? <laughs> Do you see the hat? I think that's a cap, but I think it's like a sideways. He used to. Do oh, oh, maybe it's yeah. Okay, look. yeah. Uh, okay, because the angle I'm looking at with the coloration mm. makes it look like a Green Beret hat, and then it kind of looks like <laughs> the zipper around his neck is dog tags or cat tags in his case. And so I'm like, did he go up there as like a, a faking and being a veteran to get laughs? Yeah, like he's some kind of like wigger prop comic. But yeah. uh, well, you've also got to remember as well, he was homeless until a few years ago. I mean, even... <laughs> because of course he was. And even before living at Royce's, I mean, we'll get to the homeless segment. There is a homeless segment. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know. But um, we're talking about a man that in during most of his 20s and early 30s was living in his car. I mean, he used to post on Whackbag with the old ONA forums talking about how uh, this Mercury he had was the greatest homeless car he's ever had. Oh, just like the BMW is the most fantastic vehicle that he's ever bought. Yeah. It's always, always rose-colored. So you're telling me <laughs> that these comedy clubs we're letting in a homeless guy who probably smelled like death wearing fingerless gloves that do stand-up routines he's parking a shitty mercury out front and scaring off the fucking patrons yeah, and that was his life through his 20s yeah and he's probably going to sleep in their parking lot <laughs> <what I'm> <laughs> i'll tell you what merch tonight we're gonna pay you with dumpster number a we'll let you dig through it before we call the police get on up there <laughs> Just the voice. You can choose a ready guide or some celestial voice. Dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> and I've always had bad relationships. A with a way that even the girl I lost my virginity to, this really beautiful half black, half Puerto Rican chick. I used to like to joke that I didn't lose my virginity, that she stole it from me. But uh I'm glad some people thought that was funny. I think had a single laugh in her sweet sixteen. Not a single laugh. Yeah, this is X Fest, I think, two thousand and seven, I believe. Okay, now I've got to ask: Do you think that he was legitimately invited, or do you think the parking lot they set this up in, he was already sleeping in, in his Mercury, and he just wandered on stage? <laughs> well, uh, from what I gather, this is a music festival that he was brought on stage basically as they're as they're dismantling the set from the previous band and getting ready for the next band, whilst you know everybody else is getting drinks and minding their own business that's that's even funnier so basically the the owner of this gig was like listen we just need to drown out the sound of construction in the background pick <laughs> any random asshole they don't have to be funny we just need them to talk exactly yeah we just need 
We just need to keep people in one group, essentially. <laughs> just ensure that they don't wander off and uh, until the band comes on and, and, and you're all set. But uh, he, I remember he put out a tweet calling this the best day of his life at the time. So uh, that's Well, he's got a captive audience. Nobody can run away. <laughs> he can claim that I've got, uh, what is it? So X-Fest, Music Festival, uh, 5,000 people, 10,000 people that are forced to listen uh, to me losing my virginity to a black girl who stole it. Get it? That's a punchline. <laughs> His material you will find is essentially the sort of cutting room floor of Jim Norton and Doug Stanhope, essentially. He, he just apes their material, actually literally. Well, oh, of course, of course the homeless man's going to pick up the scraps. <laughs> That's what he's used to. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go on. You're, this this look, by the way, you can't see it. So it's incredibly uh, pixelated, but there is a still image of it, and it's quite possibly my favourite. Uh, so we'll go on. I went from hell, man. I actually got drunk last night, blacked out on the show. My car broke down in a jack shack. No joke, man. It was really hot. I actually had to end up being a hooker to death with a tennis shoe just to steal a car and get to fucking x Fest tonight. So uh, it was a lot of work. It's weird, right? Like, it's a weird mishmash of it feels like, like, really early attempt at being like, um, I wouldn't even say Norton. I'd say more like, like Jim Brewer. Have you ever seen Jim Brewer yeah. stand up? Yeah. It's like, it's like Jim Brewer. And then I, for whatever reason, I don't know why this is. Um, and I've only seen a little bit of it, but it feels like Owen Benjamin. It's like a <laughs> weird combination of Jim Brewer and Owen Benjamin telling really just, it's like the drunk guy at the party. It doesn't feel like a stand-up routine to me. Yeah, I mean, it, we will definitely see later on. It's funny you do say Owen Benjamin because he uh, he doesn't quite he doesn't only steal the sort of comedic uh, vein of Owen Benjamin. I mean, he he becomes him actually. He manifests Owen Benjamin's entire persona later, much much later on, and we will get to that. But... Oh, is that, is that one of the giants he slew so he can oh. wear his skin now? Oh yeah, I mean, it was it was a huge thing. Uh, <laughs> the Owen Benjamin, it was Dan Schneider basically got them sort of on the map, at least according to them. Although essentially they did about three videos that hit a couple of thousand, a hundred thousand views, and they, it's it's a strange one because I think Mersh really attributes Dan Schneider's downfall to them, to that show, as if they had any imprint whatsoever on what's happening in Hollywood. Oh, not not at all. I mean, Dan Schneider was being made fun of on uh, almost every image board you could imagine. I mean, that's where I think I saw it in a majority of people. I mean, it's always been a joke, what he did, right? Hmm. Um, and I think that's where they probably got the idea or the source material for their initial streams. I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, maybe the videos were great. I'm not trying to take it away. Um, but I do remember them doing Dan Schneider stuff. But yeah, I mean, it, he was talked about everywhere before that. Yeah, the, the, I mean, the only reason I bring that up is is obviously uh, Owen Benjamin became kind of like the, the... I guess it was a giant that he killed, but essentially Owen Benjamin was so off the rails that I don't think Mersh had any anything to do with any anything there with Owen Benjamin. I think Owen Benjamin just sort of self-imploded i think that's just what well I, I don't know how you can how you can make that assessment owen benjamin's totally sane when he's talking about opening his aperture so he can squirt out turpentine to kill the fucking parasites right like it's <laughs> totally normal yeah. really have to make some noise he's drinking irresponsibly tonight ah. you didn't drink as much as i did fucker I'm hardcore, man. I drink a lot, dude. My liver looks like a dead two-year-old Dominican kid. I'm not kidding. How is it? Uh, can you pause? How is it that somebody who's already waddling around because they look a bit pudgy is wearing pants that seem to be three sizes too big? <laughs> Do you notice that it looks like he took a dump in his drawers was, with this? I was waiting for you to notice. It's it's, it's more striking in the still image that we'll get to. Um, but but yeah, it's... it's almost a thigh level. It looks like he's wearing diapers. Like, if you go to thigh level, it's like a weird jean version of hammer pants. I've been watching him waddle back and forth in these, and I was like, God damn, those are big. They're like clown pants. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think You think he was too embarrassed? He went to, like, um, he went to uh, the Salvation Army because he's driving his broken Mercury there after eating a good meal from the dumpster at the comedy club, and he finds a brand new pair of pants, but they're clown pants. So he like spray paints them so they look like jeans. 
<laughs> like, no, these are really high end Jordash. You don't understand. I'm fashionable. <laughs> Look at my fingerless gloves. Yeah, you'll see the uh, the jacket's even worse. <laughs> if you think that the the trousers are too big, the jackets. I I, I'm trying to like. It. It's it's like someone to... like a kid wearing his dad's suit. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I'm trying to understand like the mentality. Do you think it was like he's a little subconscious? He thought, you know, I I'm not saying he's fat in this. He's just a little pudgy. But do you think like he thought, oh, okay, I can take away from that if I just wear something that's so oversized, I look thin? Or do you think that he just needed room to make a a, a boom boom in his big boy pants? <laughs> I think with I think with fat people, I think they just they really enjoy loose fitting clothes. I think it just gives him a bit of freedom and like, it, oh, I think it's, it's chafing me. Thing. <laughs> is there uh, there's going to be like a picture someday that surfaces of him at like a beach where it's just nothing but chafe marks up and down his legs is that what you're saying <laughs> looks like somebody attacked him with sandpaper i really wish there was a diaper under there now, now that you now that you've given me the image i can't, I can't oh, it's like it. there's there's a, i i'm telling you it's like the fucking demarcation line between north and south korea right at his legs like maybe it's just the 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 uh quality of the video but like it looks like there's something there. Like, it's top of the thighs to, like, right to the waist. I am fucking hardcore. Right, so here's some of it. <laughs> oh, hold on. I'm sorry. Let me, there we go. So I can get the full picture. Uh, how do I make that go away? Uh, if I click on that, well, that's not going to screw the video. Okay, cool. Um, I like the shoes there on that go. previous picture. Oh, here we go. This is fantastic. Yeah, look at the street. <laughs> The jacket's terrible, too. You're right, by the way. It looks like it's... I just don't get it, man. Was he going through, like, different uh, fashion looks, do you think? Like, he was trying to find his look, and, like, you know, everything is a different iteration. Was he trying different shit every month? Well, Mersh is a... Uh, he's, 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 well, he's famed now for having... He's, he's a man of phases. He's got very many phases. I mean, we've seen him go through fads, like going to the gym, going through cryptocurrency, buying a gun, getting a cat, all the things that he's been doing just in the last year alone. And I think he's got that with looks as well. We we, we like to joke that there's uh, there's like a Matrix merch, that there's a Wigger merch, that there's... Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, you'll see... I don't know if you've seen the picture of the Matrix merch where it's he's, like, he's got the kind of like sticky up hair and he's like smoking and eating. Is that the one where he looks like uh, uh, he looks like a... <laughs> A pedophile tried to walk in to hang out with like emo teenagers and abduct one of them. Is that the is that the one we're talking have about? To specify because a lot of them look like that. Oh, are there a lot of them like that? Um, <laughs> yes. I I like how it's like yeah, it's a thirty day limit. Is that do you think the time limit for his fads before he gives up on them? <laughs> Did he trade the gun in for the cat? Is that what we're doing? Like he's going to trade the cat in for something next? Maybe he'll try a new look. <laughs> I, I just. I just think, he, and it's the similar thing with with why he's gained the weight is I just don't think he's he's a guy that can really stick to anything. Um, but it's it's quite things, entertaining. Things certainly can stick to him if you look at that gut. Yeah, it, I think um, he he went through crypto and then for for a few months it was just constant. The, the only thing he would talk about and the only thing that he would tweet about, and then I think the penny dropped where he actually didn't really know how to do anything with crypto. And he was essentially spending six months holding the bag for uh, for the people making real money. So and... he, he went on biz, basically, and and read the jokes and thought they were serious, and so started throwing his money into it. Yeah, and I think he was probably, uh, he probably joined uh, Wall Street Bets subreddit. and So he's like the eternal bag holder. Did anybody listen to his crypto advice? Did Oh, God, how many people got fucked because of that? Oh, I tried to imagine, but... Um... Yeah, no we... wonder he bought the gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why. That's a slot. It feels like he wants to sell me like a timeshare. <laughs> <laughs> now this this is a I enjoy this one a lot. I mean not just the look, but the uh notorious comedic outlaw, aka the Duke of Douchebaggery, Mersh. Now did he did he make this himself? He did. <laughs> so that's the title he came up with, the Duke of Douchebaggery. Yeah, and it was it was something he was trying to run. I mean, this was this was around the time he was also trying to create a uh, a wrestling comedy the show. Duke of Douchebaggery. Oh, okay. I, 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 you know, Mersh, maybe you should have tried out something like the um, uh, the autistic uh, illiterist. There will <laughs> <laughs> maybe would have gotten better for you. Yeah. Um... I mean, this again. This he's got a weird thing about names and 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 sort of like 
you know, whether it's leader of the Terracebergs or uh, giant killer, it was actually five dash one giant killer. Essentially, him saying that he's got five wins. I don't necessarily know who those God, five he's, are. He's, he's doing it like Tonka, like that fake wrestling shit. Yeah, he's he's big into that. So I think I think that's probably where all these naming conventions come from. I think it's he likes to he likes to imagine his name being yelled through the through the PA speakers at a wrestling event or something. And so this was for a gig he was going to do. The, this uh, poster we're looking at. Um, I don't think it was necessarily a gig. I think it was it was just something I think he posted as a kind of like I don't know social marketing. It's, it's so it's so feminine, right? Like I I I I, I know right, but like, who does that? What guy does that? Like I thought, okay, maybe this is like a poster outside the comedy club, right? Like he's like, oh, just put this up, right, to you know promote me or whatever. But like I'm imagining him acting like a 13 year old girl on like Instagram, like oh they're gonna love this. I need to put my face in this so everybody knows who I am, and I get comments on what I look like and then how how bad I, I'm the Duke of Douchebaggery, how badass I am. Okay, this is gonna happen a lot because what you're saying there really fits into something that we're gonna see later on, especially regarding posts that look like oh, been have I, have by I, a teenage girl. <laughs> Have I plucked a thread already? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I am tempted to get there now, but I think we'll wait for it. But yeah, it, when, when we're talking about Mersh, uh, Mersh's social media feed essentially looking like it's been written by a teenage scene girl, then <laughs> yeah, we're definitely on. Oh on yeah, I hope I'm not. I hope I'm not talking too much. Like no, you no, got to remember, perfect, I, yeah. I know nothing about this guy, so this is I'm already interested. Just just <laughs> off just off a little bit of fashion, you know. It's kind of funny stuff. It's nothing huge, right? But just kind no, of you know is... funny outfits and uh, yeah. you know a little bit of attention whoring. Okay, so um, this was a post uh, 2011. So he had a break from comedy, and uh, so he's, here he is just talking about returning to comedy. Oh, did, did comedy dump him? <laughs> so <laughs> I think, a... Yeah, I, I think after X Fest uh, 2007, I think after that, um, things didn't go quite so well. And I think it was related to Opie and Anthony's Bobo as probably the reason, which we'll get to in a second. <laughs> No, at this time, was he living in the Mercury when he's posting from Facebook? It was on and off. I think he was he was living in the Mercury, uh, especially during the mid two thousands. But he was also couch surfing, and and he was Facebook posts talking about people these you know couches that he's staying on, and him being a burden to people. <laughs> and complaining. wait, so that wasn't see. I know a little bit about. It. So that wasn't just Royce. He wasn't just sleeping no. on his couch. It was more than just Royce. I think he's for sis- more than a his decade. Sister, uh, he, he was on and off uh, staying at his, uh, his sister's place, and um, and then just generic sort of friends here and there. From from what I gathered from from his Facebook feed, at least all these. I, I, like I'm already kind of getting like a sense, right? Like it's all these aspects of things. Like mm. I mean, you know, it would suck to be homeless. People have been homeless, or it would suck to have just not any, I, I guess, insight into bad fashion and walking around looking like an idiot. <laughs> but like those are all just minor little character traits or aspects of your life. But it feels like Mersh kind of compiles them. It, uh, this is the, the, where I'm almost seeing this going. It's like he takes all the stupid or bad things that might happen and he's made that into one person. <laughs> right? <laughs> like he's Again. combined it into this thing called Mersh. Again, we're about to get into something that, that feeds off perfectly for that. So, <laughs> Oh, fantastic. I, can't, I honestly, this, this one bit, I can't wait for you to get your reaction because it's... I just I wonder I wonder myself like what the what a kind of casual observer would think about some of this stuff. Essentially, it involves it involves GoFundMe to a degree, but we'll. we'll oh yeah, because we'll I'm a total virgin there. to this shit. Yeah, yeah. This is a lot of this is just like yeah. I didn't know he lived in a Mercury. So this is him uh, ready to work the stage, ready to hurt your feelings. Um, oh, the giant slayer's coming! Can you handle it? <laughs> Can you, you ready for my hot bands? <laughs> And then this is in 2012, where I guess he's he's sort of gotten a bit confident. He's sort of feeling like he's a real comedian, and then he's he's <laughs> he's posting um, basically any what why are why the hell aren't we all comedians? And he's there gatekeeping comedy <laughs> because despite what you think, none of your life experiences or opinions are unique, nor is your personality. You lack the fresh perspective and talent to craft a punchline. Unlike did me. he write this looking in a mirror? <laughs> <laughs> Did he get confused and it post by accident? You are banal and ordinary, despite how original and witty your co-workers at the dollar store think you are. The, I mean, this is the greatest projection of all time. You aren't funny enough. So I found that to be one of the funniest posts I think I've ever read, especially from somebody who's struggling in comedy. 
Well, I mean, I you know, there's a clip of uh, uh, Worski right doing stand up. Oh yeah. Um, and he like he, I, I you know, and I gave him shit for it, but like it felt like just based off the clips I watched, it felt like Worski put more energy into it. You know what I mean? Like he was, yeah. he was. It's just there's more a little bit of a. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just uh, I guess it and, <laughs> compared I mean, to Marsh. The, the the reaction that he got was incredibly surprising for for, for what it was. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, sure yeah. he'll admit that it, it wasn't the you know greatest set in the world, but. They were with him. They were definitely, you know, and that, well, and that's the thing. thing. I, I think Worski did it for just a little bit, but it feels like Mersh mm. has been doing this for, I guess, years. Yeah, he's he's he lives his life now as an as like an embittered want to be comic, and uh, you know, one that never really quite made it, and now he's sort of made it his life's mission. The funny there was a there was a moment actually when um, he he got Revenge of the Sis sort of off the ground with Royce, and they were kind of finding their feet and getting there so again similar to this post here Mersh got supremely <laughs> cocky and started posting uh essentially screaming at f all the comedians that uh, that that didn't give him chances all the comedians that passed him by and he was like and i think he said something to the uh to the extent of um we're going to be a success here and we will not be so kind to you uh to, to all you comedians uh when you come begging you know what encapsulates that the most um have you ever seen a show called um kids in the hall yeah yeah canadian I've, I've comedy seen, show yeah i've seen that yeah okay there's there's one skit they do where one of the guys becomes he's like an office worker and he gets bumped up to middle management mm. and his boss is like it's not really a pay raise but we just change your title and he goes ape shit with power with moderate power and it's the funniest fucking thing he's screaming at people all his co-workers he was submissive to won't let them drink water orders them under their desk and he gets fired in like a day that's mersh <laughs> that is. clip is fucking mersh <laughs> it is it's uh I, I should have put that in this because again it's another really really funny post um and it's it, it's again it's he's got this sort of gatekeeping mentality that the minute he has a modicum of even slight success suddenly he's made it in his brain he's suddenly he's having the greatest life the best life and uh we'll see more of that later where when he's when he's talking about just how uh you know how much he's made. i mean you've seen it with the twenty thousand dollars a month claims and all that kind of stuff he really thinks he's made it he really thinks he's so is he is he like a powder keg like that it just how you're describing this and that kind of that, i guess that kind of mentality makes me think that like this is a dude sitting on top of the world's biggest fucking uh, explosive load of bitterness, and it's just he's waiting to pop off to tell people how wrong they were, kind of thing. One hundred percent, one hundred percent, yeah, that's exactly him. Here we go. Uh, so this is just a post of him um, just talking about most of the comedic community hates his guts. <laughs> he's got personal problems with a lot of them. So essentially, his foray into comedy didn't quite go so well. And this is a, another projection sort of self-awareness tweet. Him talking to somebody else about trying to be a comedian and failing miserably. I just found that to be quite uh, interesting. Does well, he try to inject himself into, like, the comedy scene? I, I get that. I mean, like, as far as live streamers or podcasters go, I am aware of him. Uh, but it's not like he's a huge name. Not that I am or anybody. You know, like, that's got to be even more amplified in the comedy scene. Does anybody know who the fuck this guy is? sort of um i think i think some of the sort of o and a style that that circuit will know a little of him uh, well isn't that because he he tried to accuse them uh, based on the one stream i saw him go on with um was it was it uh, uh ralph and dick remember when they did that stream and he got really drunk and came in there and he was uh who was the guy he was with he kept trying to get him to acknowledge him this was a recent stream and then the guy's like, yeah, yeah, he, he kind of brushed him away. It's the one where he tried to say, yeah, Pat Dixon, right, um, uh, Dickerson or whatever. Um, he's like, yeah, you called my boss a pedophile. That was like the memory he had of him. <laughs> yeah. That's all he knew. Like what he was talking, yeah, you call my boss a pedophile. That's how I know who you are. <laughs> yeah, he did do that. <laughs> that is true. I mean, I think a lot of people have done it. And I think, again, uh, the, there is uh, certainly no smoke without fire on that one. But I'll, <laughs> I won't go too deep into that. Uh, this is probably too long to go through, but it's 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 amazing. It's essentially a whack bag it's, post that is that's. Oh, I thought it was him. like a resume. <laughs> well, it's, it's him. I don't know if this was a thing that a lot of people were doing on whack bag at the time, but I think it was from what I gather from what I've seen. I think he just volunteered all this stuff himself, and it was essentially him interviewing himself. You know, favorite food, favorite drink, favorite. This, this is so feminine. 
This is such a girl thing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's... Uh... Again, I, I, I can't say but this might be something that everybody was doing, so I don't want to, you know, attack him too. Oh, I'm sure this, I but... did gay shit like this too, but like this is, I, you know, what I didn't do was post headshots of myself calling myself the D Duke of Douchebaggery <laughs> <laughs> on my Facebook and shit. <laughs> it's embarrassing to read, but I don't think there's anything that's too. No, it's it just again, it's it's lighthearted, goofy shit, right? It's mm. a little, it's a nice little uh, uh, opener, palate cleanser, exactly, I suppose, for yeah. what you're gonna hit me with. <laughs> I'm guessing coming up. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Um, on the resume, mm -hmm. it cuts off at what would have been probably maybe the more interesting thing, and now to the sexual stuff. Oh you... wow, yeah, I see that. Worst sexual best sexual experience. experience. See above. <laughs> Oh, is there um, more below that? Favorite position, you can add as many as you want. And he, he says missionary. Uh, girl lying flat on her stomach. So she can't report my what I look like to the police. That's <laughs> <laughs> my favorite position when she can't identify me. <laughs> Cowgirl for its reverse uh, derivative. Derivative? I don't really know what he's trying to say, though. I, I guess that's a high-level <laughs> Merce joke we don't get. We're too fucking stupid. <laughs> I mean, the thought of any sexual stuff with Merce really does make me sick, especially the uh, the most recent stuff that where, where <laughs> I mean, even just thinking about it, where he's <laughs> describing it in his fattest state with his pedophile mustache. It's the grossest thing I've ever seen. But, oh, you... Uh, is there more? Do you know if there's more below that line of favorite sexual position? Oh, Does I... he get into talks about uh, just how much of a, a, a Lothario he is? <laughs> Unfortunately, this is um I don't even know where this comes from. I just I, I've just been given a bunch of stuff, and uh, this this was just a screen grab. But I guarantee I I don't even know if like the whack bag stuff is even archived or backed up anywhere. So I, I think that's probably all we've got. Unfortunately. Oh but... yeah, yeah, we shit that old probably. Yeah. Uh, so the next the next bit is um. It's Bobo of Opie and Anthony, obviously the resident retard there. Um, now, a little backstory to this. When Mersh's comedic ca career sort of started to wane off after the X-Fest uh, gig he did. <laughs> after the high point? Yeah, after his career <laughs> right. highlight. He, he tried to get creative, I suppose, and uh, figured that he would try and ingratiate himself into the Opie and Anthony show and into... You know, he's seen other comedians on the show uh, e elevate their careers ex exponentially because of Opie and Anthony. So, Mersh, he figured that by becoming Bobo's chauffeur to drive him to and from the studio, that would somehow get him uh, get him in with the show. So, he spent months, he must have spent about six months to a, to, to a year maybe, just driving this retard to and from Opie and Anthony's shows, <laughs> hoping... For any sort of scrap of uh, of attention or approval, he well, like, yeah, with the O and A stuff. Like I, I used to listen to uh, their Jacktober bits, right? Because that mm. I, I always thought that was funny when they're just shitting on other, oh, yeah. other stations. That was that was like my my favorite thing to listen to. Um, but I don't know how being the chauffeur for a retard is gonna. <laughs> like, how did he envision that playing out? Like they were gonna go, oh my god, what a beautiful Mercury! Please come on stage. Please come up into the studio so we can hear about your fucking car home. I mean, first of all, Bobo was not wanted by them most of the most of the time. He was um, he, he was annoying. They they didn't really like him around. They brought him in every now and again if they you know needed some a punching bag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, how do you expect to succeed being the re being a retard's retard, being lower on the on the rung than than Bobo? It's it just seems like a, not a winning that, formula. That, I think that speaks to the desperation, doesn't it? Like, it's not just that bitterness that's caked in there, but, like, a real fucking desperation to try to do anything to get noticed. Well, you're going all the way to a frat house in Buffalo that's to do a gig. hundred bucks. For a hundred dollars, but you have to get yourself there. Yeah, I'm, I'm being driven there by a friend of mine who, who's also a friend of Heather Heights. His name is Mersh. Yeah, yeah. Mersh. I love... Can you, can you pause? Yeah. I love dead silence. My friend and my name Mersh. Nothing. Crickets. 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 And they go, y yeah. <laughs> they probably are like, do you mean the smelly homeless guy that's parked out front? <laughs> Is that the same dude? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, his name is Mersh. Nobody knows him. Just <laughs> dead fucking silence. Oh god, I bet he was punching walls when he heard that. I hate to spoil it, but um, it might have been se selective editing on my part. They actually do know who he is a little bit later on but uh... keep the selective editing that's <laughs> that's perfect <laughs>
Can you uh, put the sound of a tumbleweed going through? <laughs> Is that too subtle, do you think, for audio? A couple of crickets. Yeah. Thank you, all the great audience. And now, let me introduce you to my next comedian. He's also a lovable fuck up. Give it up for Long Island's Merch! Yeah! Uh, just a heads up, I'm not going up yet, so that was. <laughs> While, while I appreciate the effort, Bobo, uh, Heather's going to bring your next comic up. <laughs> I just got to homeless. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, you put, called the wrong person up. Let's go into homelessness. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect fucking segue. <laughs> Yeah, this this sec this segment is just a couple of collections of uh, of him moaning on Facebook about the fact he's got no job, he's got nowhere to live, he's homeless, so he's I, suicidal. I guess, um, <laughs> okay, with this picture, so like hippo juice. So, um, was that was that Royce doing his own thing before, or is hippo juice something else? Yeah, it was um, Royce and his wife Marie used to do a uh, sort of a stream before Royce met Mersh. Uh, yeah. He would do a stream with with uh, his wife. It didn't really wasn't really getting any engagement which i guess is uh mersh would when he moved in with royce he would start sort of appearing on the show and uh i guess they got a little bit more traction and then i i, I guess i don't know a ton about the dynamics right like uh, my understanding of royce is kind of more the quiet guy compared to mersh i guess hmm. uh, or he'll he'll um read the stories or whatever the more deadpan i guess a little bit yeah, but he's uh, the more uh, responsible one right two, right so i mean like he's the guy that got married he's the guy that he's a homeowner right or would, yeah, he he's uh, he owns his own house uh, that was given to him by his, his his dad was quite wealthy, so he owns his own oh, house. Oh, okay. But more if, responsible is the vibe I'm getting. Yeah, like you know, doing are, his are, show. To be true, I mean, apparently people have gone through Royce's Facebook feed, and uh, he and his wife had a satanic wedding. <laughs> what? Honestly, uh, this is like now I I don't know what to think about it, and and I've not put it in just simply because. I don't know for certain, but there's so much noise about it, and people will tell me dead in the that's face. Kind that... of, that's, that's kind of a big one, especially because they were going after, like, wasn't there a whole, one of their whole angles on Dan Schneider is like satanic yeah. pedophile Hollywood, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they went after Styx because he was like, oh, he's a Satanist. You know, he's a, he's a, a <laughs> pagan. And then you're yeah. going to tell me Royce has a satanic wedding? It's just something that I've never been entirely convinced of, and because of how insane it is. I, feel, I don't even... I wouldn't know what a satanic wedding looks like. I've, I don't, so uh, I don't know. And also, it's a Mersh documentary. I don't necessarily want to just. Uh, oh no, no, yeah. I just as an aside, <laughs> dropping that one. That's fascinating. I, would shit. Probably I make never would have offhand jokes about it, but uh, that's probably uh, it. Accidentally call him Baphomet instead of Royce. See if he picks up on it. Is that what you're gonna do? <laughs> okay, that's going in. Um, it's it's <laughs> quite amusing. Recently, he uh, Royce has been in trouble about maybe a year ago he he ended up flirting with uh, some girl some some woman and apparently there's talks about the fact that his wife likes to have threesomes with royce and other women and uh there's, there's an audio recording of royce oh, okay i gotta say this like even okay this is the what makes this more fascinating to me is that royce is everything merch will never be you're telling me this dude <laughs> he has a rock star satanic wedding He's got a house and a wife. His wife is doing threesomes with him because they're getting chicks involved. He's got a stable source of income and job. And Mersh is living in a fucking Mercury, <laughs> chauffeuring Bobo around for a decade. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Mersh probably wants to be Royce. That's probably why he slept on his couch for so long. He was waiting for his opportunity. It's probably why he's 300 pounds as well. <laughs> he's probably I'm going to look just like him. She'll never know. <laughs> I fuck them from behind when they lay down on the floor. <laughs> She'll never know what's coming. <laughs> you do that old switcheroo uh, trick. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Here we are. Just another fucking week of being homeless. No big deal, right? Oh, uh, and he did the sigh thing, the too. Sigh. What a... Wow, oh, he's such a girl. Sigh. Gosh. Darn. What a... Just such sympathy whoring. Fuck off. <laughs> Oh my god, golly gee gosh, guys. Digging in a dumpster again. Post it on Facebook, though. And this is the... <laughs> so, 
Sorry, I shouldn't be laughing. I'm supposed to be getting your audio raw here. But oh, I, that's I that's fine. It, but... They'll find they'll find it enduring, yeah. right? <laughs> I think, I <laughs> so. These guys are assholes. Why do they keep laughing at this homeless man? <laughs> so this is the uh, this is the classic Mercury Grand Marquis. Uh, is it Mar Marquis or whatever it's called? Marquis, um, I think. I I don't I don't know. I like a Mercury I've is never... a really uh, <laughs> specifically old brand of fucking beat em up. I mean, it's from 1990, so uh, I guess he's got a thing for cars that are 15 years older than the current year. So, Did he um, just go to every fucking place on the internet and tell them all he was homeless? Like, I'm on Facebook. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm homeless. I'm on a fucking, uh, what, what, uh, whack bag? Hey, guys, I'm home. Did you know that I'm homeless? I need to tell you for the 400th time. <laughs> it's quite remarkable. I, I think that a lot of it, because you'll see in a, in a moment that a lot of the times he talks about how homeless he is, He'll casually drop his PayPal.me link, <laughs> so I think that that might be might have some kind of loose association. Oh, he's been doing this shit for for a while. Like he's honed the craft, <laughs> has he? This is 2013. He's he's getting better at it. Yeah, yeah this is his training. This is. Uh, this hey, is hey guys. Uh, yeah, just wanted to mention I'm homeless. Uh, by the way, here's a PayPal link. You know, completely unrelated, but uh, there it is. Yeah, I live in my car. <laughs> this is him with Master Roshi at Kame House training his grift. <laughs> so um, you'll see there, can't ask for a better homeless car. Um, he also says that when you put the armrests up, it's like a fucking sofa. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Can you yeah? Go, can you go back to that? Um, does that show how many posts he has on the forum? Is that just messages or is that posts? The thing is, whenever... I'm, try, I, I'm trying to figure out, like, how long was he a member of this forum before he started telling everybody his fucking sob story? Like, was that well, his, just his intro? Hey, everybody, my name's Mersh. By the way, I'm homeless. Uh, well, this is less than a year. This is like about eight months later. Oh god, yeah, this is such. This I'm getting like uh, cutter vibes. Have you ever, you know, like the the girls on Tumblr that would be like, "Oh my god, I'm so sad. I just cut all the time." Again. Like that's the vibe I get with his homeless shit. <laughs> Again, it's it's you must have crazy in, uh, intuition um, because we're gonna get to <laughs> we're gonna get to that. It gets um, better. To, oh, god, well, was, was he a cutter? With well, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> fuck you. You're screwing with me. <laughs> well, let's let's take a look. <laughs> Come on! All right, so this one here. Uh, why did I post this one again? Um, da -da -da -da. Oh yeah, yeah. This. I mean, this is from 2017, so I've, I've kind of put it a bit out of date. But essentially, it's him talking about he will do live videos for money, talking about how homeless he was. That's essentially like he, it was a post that he, he he put out asking, or or at least telling people that. Since I love doing live videos anyway, and I'm going to need people's help, I'm going to do a series of videos, if only there's demand for them. Um, you know, a huge market out there for homeless people to stream yeah. themselves. And it's like, oh, post embarrassing stories, all that kind of stuff. And then at the very end, there's the PayPal me link as well. And he's basically, first, here's the catch. First, I want to raise some scratch. <laughs> I'll update in this thread <laughs> if I get any contributions and how much they are. So essentially, he's trying to kind of stories for cash think i don't know I, I love the balls on this motherfucker he, look just think about like okay <laughs> the absolute goal the first goal is 125 that's not hard to do well obviously it is motherfucker if you're homeless in your mercury you've been working and making 125 dollars for like a decade now it must be hard to do <laughs> you mean it's not hard to give me your money it's 125 Come on, what do you might be cheap? What's difficult about that? Obviously, it's some difficulty involved. First, you live in a fucking car. <laughs> There's no awareness when he's supposed to put, you know, like publishing this shit, is there? <laughs> I like the bit at the bottom. Douchey picture is related. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next. Uh... Okay, so this. <laughs> oh, God. I forgot about this one. Uh, so, well, my phone is not getting shit off because a good friend came through at a pinch at Christmas to help out. <laughs> Holy shit. This, you know what this reminds me of? There was a dude uh, we used to make fun of on the Medica forums named Nintendo Advocate. Mm. And um, he was a guy that was, like, unaware of his situation, right? And he he was just not, I guess, very grateful is the one way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. But he did a video, a 20-minute video, where... He uh, complained nonstop about eating beans for Christmas because his family was so poor. <laughs> 20 minutes of this just uh, most autistic person just raging about eating beans for Christmas. And oh when he gets into why, you're like, this guy's the biggest scumfuck. Turns out uh, his parents were losing their house and had to sell their possessions just to make mortgage, right? Yeah. 
that's why they were eating beans for Christmas, not because the parents were assholes. As he's in a room, literally surrounded wall to wall with video games. <laughs> that kind of reminds me. It reminds me of Marshall a little with that opening. Like, wow, well, my phone's not getting shut off because somebody came through for me on Christmas. <laughs> it's just the idea of living your entire life at the behest of charity, of, of other people's generosity. I can't imagine. What has he ever worked? At, like, does, has he ever worked like a normal job? Uh, we will, we will definitely get to that. Um, it, it was. Let's just say it was quite the. Uh, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, just based on the, it. just what we've seen. You're totally right. This is going to be fascinating shit for people. <laughs> like, I'm getting into this just just based <laughs> off postings on Facebook and the forum. Like, I'm now interested in this backstory of Mersh. <laughs> well, the. Uh... Oh, you know, the other thing I didn't even think of, like, a lot of this shit's like 2011, right? 2013, yeah, yeah. some of these forum posts and stuff. Like, I don't remember a lot of people posting, like, give me money, here's my PayPal at that time. Like, that felt like that that was something that kind of developed more, in, like, mid-2010s. Like, he was mm -hmm. ahead of the curve on that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, um, yeah, he got it, he got in early. I mean, his ability to um, draw money from, <laughs> just from nothing... <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it in my life. He doesn't even need a tangible product or a, or a, or a service or anything, really. And there's nothing necessarily entertaining about how he draws the money uh, to himself. I guess the most recent example of him uh, essentially revealing revenge porn for $500 a piece, <laughs> that's that's probably taking the piss. But uh, Well, I mean... given that ability and that picture we saw earlier where he looks like he sells timeshares, he should probably actually try to do that. He'd probably make money doing it. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, again, I, I, I wish I had that ability to to, to have money come to me for, with such little effort on my part. God, is he even begging for weed on Facebook? Holy shit, Mersh, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm glad you saw that, yeah. I will provide the funny. I, I, I don't know, like, if you ever smoked weed as a kid or anything, and there was always that one that, that thought that they were going to, you know... You know yeah, we know, we, we called them the cunt. Because they were the ones that never bought any weed or brought any snacks or did anything, but they were always there to smoke. So, yeah, like, I didn't highlight this. Somebody else did, but I like where they did highlight. I'm being a major burden on my co-host by staying at his place right now. Uh, so this is just... Uh, 2017. How long did he stay with uh, Royce? He was living there from about two... From what I can tell, from at least about 2011 to 2012. And he stayed there until maybe two years ago. So... <clears throat> Near a decade, I would say, that he stayed. How did Royce's wife, uh, wife put up with that? <laughs> I mean, I think she was okay with it for for a while, but I think the more that Mersh for a while is like a month, maybe a year, <laughs> right? I think, I think the more sort of negative stuff that Mersh dragged in, because you know, and I think what the, I think the uh, the final decider was uh, Royce was recorded speaking to some girl on his Discord. And basically, you know, sexy, flirty, all that kind of stuff. And but doing it, <laughs> doing it by asking her if she likes Star Trek as well. <laughs> it was. Just, <laughs> it's such a funny recording because he's he's doing the cutesy, flirty thing, but at the same time, he's trying to get her to talk about Star Trek <laughs> and trying to throw in Star Trek references and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, Marie, Marie, hey, heard baby, that. I just want you to tell me how wet does uh, Captain Picard make your pussy? You know, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's get into this. Have a conversation. So let's just say it wasn't long after that that Mersh was uh, shown his marching orders. Um, so I think I think he, it was definitely uh, more to do with with the fact that there was a bit of you know, sort of trouble at home, and I think they just wanted to, <laughs> they just wanted him out as well, I suppose. Uh, what is the uh, oh? What was the thing about partnership offers? What was that on the Facebook post where it was talking about being a burden? The, the top of the second chat or uh, right. paragraph and some uh, and offers some... of partnerships, possible expansion and cash infusion. This is just big boy business words. Like these don't mean anything. <laughs> these these are just like he's he's got a sponsor now called CBDX, who I don't even think are a real company to be honest. They're 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 like clowns. Um, so, yeah. I, I don't even know what that is. What is that? C it's CBDX. A, it's like a, you know those CBD pens, and uh, they do like weed gummies and that kind of stuff. But I, I, they're incredibly shady, and and uh, there will be a, a big portion on the documentary for that. 
just the way that the, the owner guy or, or the guy that runs it, has been, he's just been running around the internet essentially trying to create drama. <laughs> like, I don't know why. He's got a CBD company to run and he went off to Jesse's show, started sponsoring Jesse to troll Mersh, even though he had a pre-existing contract with Mersh. And he just, I don't know what was going on, but it was just this guy that runs this CBD company that sponsors Mersh and he's running around trying to cause him all sorts of internet drama. It's actually, really actually, fuck, I know what that is. I know what that is. I posted a, uh, a clip on uh, my Twitter yeah, where Mersh outright admits how he markets himself and he'll send people that he's financially involved with in some way um, out to start drama to get views over to him. He actually outright admits that. He was talking to his moderator, Sword and Scales. Oh. And he's like, you should go to Jim Stream and super chat him talking shit about me because then people will come and watch and I'll make more money. I wonder if he's doing the same fucking thing with the CPDX guy. <laughs> you should go to Jesse, right, and tell him what a fuck up I am, so I get more attention and money. I think that I think you've got it. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. It certainly fits his motif. Um, so we're about to enter some of the. Uh, we we talked earlier about the the, the sort of teenage girl scene girl posts. Um, so we're about to enter some of those now. Oh, fantastic! Um, some of his cutter posts. Uh, so the first one is the older I get and the more smart people I read about, the more I understand suicide in a totally non-emo way. Holy fucking shit! If I ever off myself, please don't get all butthurt about it. Don't make it all about you. Thanks. <laughs> this is poetry. I love this. I love how he said... Just think of how he's worded this. The more smart people I read about, don't get butthurt about this. <laughs> I've, I've grown to understand a sophisticated uh, insight into suicide. Uh, lol, totally. <laughs> it's just such a fucking little teenage girl thing to do. <laughs> In a totally non-emo way. And it's it's funny, he brings up emo because, as we see here, he's posted lyrics to the band Alkaline Trio. And if you'd like Holy to... Holy fuck. <laughs> taking your own life with boredom. I'm taking my own life with wine. It helps you to rule out the sorrow. It helps you to empty my mind making the most of a bad time i'm smoking the brains from my head leaving the goal calling the kettle black and orange and red <laughs> very deep it speaks to me on a fucking emotional level of my soul <laughs> and this is 2015 so he would have been in his mid 30s at this point so he can't get this isn't mersh at 20 25 even oh, do we still... have like some uh my chemical romance coming up maybe or <laughs> um you know, is he is he going to be like is is he cosplaying as uh, somebody that would be in the music video for Black Parade? <laughs> is that what's coming up? Never have dreams; they don't come true. Never set goals; ain't going to happen. So, a rare bit of self awareness from from Mersh in 2012. Listen, you should just give up now, or you'll be living in a mercury, not a dumpsters. <laughs> All right, thanks for the fucking pep talk. So oh, it's official! It's official! <laughs> 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 Thanks for telling us, champ. We didn't know it's, but it's fucking official now. It only took you till 2017. <laughs> Hold that update, you know, close to the chest for the last seven years. So since I officially have no job now for a month, uh, to be fair to him, I mean, he was a strip club manager for a, a period of time, which we'll get to next. But um, oh, fantastic! It looks like I'm screwed. I'm just going to dive into Revenge of the Sis stuff and trying not to kill myself. Send booze, and then obviously there's the oh, and here's my PayPal link. Yeah, the I'm gonna, I, I, PayPal I, link. Oh, it's so tragic. I might shoot myself. By the way, donate here. I like, I was, <laughs> I like Nicholas's <laughs> comment as well. <laughs> well, you know that's actually yeah. Hey, why? And then the fucking response uh, is that Royce laughing that's Royce. in response. <laughs> that's Royce. <laughs> Did everybody, even the people who know him, shit on him? Are those sarcastic, sad face emojis in response to him? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, <there's... laughs> I didn't see that, but yeah, you're right. Wait, and when you think about it, he's saying, like, uh, I'm going to try not to kill myself because I'm officially uh, jobless, and people mm. are thumbsing it up. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's send booze, and then he is the... Pa and you, you read that first, the send booze thing, and you're like, okay, he's just joking. There's the PayPal link. Send booze, actually. <laughs> I, you know what I really like is 18 people gave an emoji rating to him talking about killing himself, but only one to the the post about giving him money. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is uh, this bit's good. 
All right, so probably going to need a bit more explanation from me as well. So here's a post in 2012. Finally got my fucking license back, yay. So as you'll see by the highlighted comment there, T minus six hours to the DUI. Now he's getting his license back because he had a DUI and uh, that's now done. That's now over with. He's finally getting his license back, back on the road. Now, how old was he at this time, would you say? 2012, he would have been probably about 29 Maybe okay, because I, I got nailed with the DUI, but mm. that was right when I hit 21, right? <laughs> I learned my lesson. You, you learn real quick, right? Yeah. It's, so it's, I'm just thinking 29, you know? And also, I didn't live in my fucking car. So really, when he's saying I got my license back, he means I got the keys to my house back, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a fucking bedroom to sleep in again. <laughs> yeah, I'm moving out. <laughs> I've got the got my car keys. I'm moving out. <laughs> So uh, the next uh, the next clip is a GoFundMe for a new car. If you can help, please do. I need your help. Last day I'm leaving this up, so this is a, a GoFundMe. Click here to support Mersh, uh, a car by Mersh Shill. I, I guess that means that means get. How do you Mersh pronounce Shill. that last name? Is it Shill or Shillelagh? Like how how Irish are we going with the pronunciation? He says Sheely, and interestingly, if you look up the origin of that, <laughs> apparently it's Jewish. <laughs> I don't want to. Is it really? I mean, I don't want to get into those those. Well, no, I thought I thought, I thought it was like like he pronounced it like Shillelagh, like he's going full mm. potato on this. But I don't yeah. know. I don't. I just know him as Marsh. I think he claims that he's he's Irish. I think the Jewish thing is just a bit of a joke. But I think he is an Irish. He's a. So um, is this the famous uh, car house? No, this picture? is this is the car that he wants to buy. This here is. is this is a step up. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, this is the car he wants to buy, and he's uh, as you can see there, he's uh, got a GoFundMe uh, with a goal of one thousand two hundred dollars. He's raised one thousand one hundred thirty dollars at this point here. So he writes, "Okay, so it's pretty simple. Since twenty ten, Mersh has had his entire career put on hold due to an unfortunate series of consecutive events." Many wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Let me let me stop you right there. Yeah. Did he try to write this like he wasn't Mersh? Why yeah. is it third person? Yeah. <laughs> Since 2010, Mersh, what is he, Bob Dole? What the fuck is this? <laughs> it's funny, though, because um, if you look at... Uh, so that's the description. Then you, if you look at some of the reward levels, he suddenly goes into first person again. If you donate $100, I will grant you an interview on my hit internet show. So he's all over the map here. He's... Uh... <laughs> Hey, hey now, if you if you give me $100, I'll let you on my hit, wildly popular show, where I apparently have to set up GoFundMes to buy broken down cars because I don't get paid well enough. <laughs> Ten Twitter plugs from at Mersh, and a month of radio plugs on my show. Oh my god, ten Twitter plugs. Well, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> uh, $50 will get you a tweet of whatever you want uh, me to say uh, for his 14k followers. How ahead of the curve was this motherfucker? Didn't Twitter just implement a, a, a system where you get paid for tweeting? I think so, yeah. Think and here right. he is. Here he is. And what year is this? 20... This would have been 2012. 2012, he beat, he beat Twitter to it <laughs> before they would have ever considered it. Again, I, I, I mean, like I said, the, the biggest compliment I can give him is when it comes to this, he's uh, he's, he's like, um, he's a genius. He's like one of those like... Uh, Artistic savant. Yeah, yeah. savant. I was, exactly. I was going to say savant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hundred dollars will grant you an interview on his uh, the fifth circle. Two Twitter plugs for the for the for the hundred. You only get two, and a link. Can't to be going site. crazy. Yeah. So about this page, uh, pretty simple. Twenty ten. We've read that bit. Um, due to a lack of an effective support system. <laughs> so not as an adult. Responsibility. But, uh, as an adult man, you know, at twenty nine, my my lack of a support system. Okay. <laughs> He never quite recovered from his financial and personal issues. <laughs> what, what what are those? Like, does he is there a backstory we're missing from when he turned eighteen to when he's living in a Mercury? Like, what what happened in that time frame? Well, apparently, when he grew up, he used to like he used to sell drugs to gay people, and that's not a joke. <laughs> so, Specifically, that was the target market. Yes. There's so a... when I made that comment about the village where he was doing his oh. comedy skit, I was pretty dead on. Yeah, that might have been something he borrowed from a client, or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but he, um, there's there's an infamous picture, one of my favorite pictures. I haven't put it in this, but I will I will definitely show it to you. Of Mersh, I guess he's he looks like he's on a night out, 
and there's a uh, like a gay it's like a gay club there's definitely gay people knocking about and there's like a stripper wearing like a like I don't even know what to call it like a male thong or something, whatever the hell it's called and he's got his crotch bulge and all right in Mersh's face and Mersh is sticking his tongue out to it <laughs> hello and um his his uh, explanation for this picture that's incredibly revealing is that he uh, he exclusively sold cocaine to gay people so only uh, the gays the, only i'll the sell gays. i'll sell weed to anybody but the cocaine is only the gays yeah i mean i don't know I, I the jokes about it being a front you know they've they've been they've been made for sure so uh do you think he was a fucking rent boy i think that I think that he would do anything for money. That's that's all I'm going to say about it. I think that he will do anything for money, and we've we've kind of seen that that's definitely the case. Oh my um, god, I'm trying to imagine him as like a rhinestone cowboy. Was that the movie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> god, that's a horrible image. <laughs> Give, giving hand jobs out of his Mercury, just driving down the village, just right out the window. That'll be five dollars. <laughs> I'm just picturing that scene in Sopranos of uh, Vito getting a blow, giving a security guy a blowjob. <laughs> but it's merch. <laughs> it's merch. Uh, so after many years of floundering, however, he has found a renewed sense of passion to turn things around once and for all, break the cycle of dysfunction, bad decisions, and bad luck. He's currently planning a small comedy tour, which he plans to grow his network and do as much stand-up comedy as humanly possible. He's quit smoking, paid off his parking fines, had his license returned, and has uh, been a passionate and dedicated team member behind the scenes for More Like Radio. I'm pleading with anyone who's ever known me or gave a shit to pitch in anything you can spare in order to get a reliable car. I need at least 1500 yada, yada, oh, yada. Oh, God. How, how, this is like an unreliable narrator. How did, what were his grades in school? How do you go from third person, first paragraph, to first person, second paragraph? Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> right? Like, that's you'd be getting failed in fucking your lit class for that. It just glided right into it. That's very strange. Um, it, it is weird, yeah. I guarantee you there will be no more excuses. That Now, hold on to that phrase there. Hold on to that. Uh, no more whining. Again, hold on to that. I will be successful. All I need is mobility. If you can't have that call too, I simply ask for yada, yada, yada. Um, and if for some reason I'm able to raise the amount greater than my goal, then the money will be set aside specifically towards my first small comedy tour, uh, which never happened. Um, Slated for the <laughs> spring of this year. Yeah. So these are a couple of posts, just uh, I guess thanking people. So did he? he did he get this car? Yes. Yes. Uh, he owned it for all of a year, I believe. And we'll see what happened to it in a second. Oh, fantastic. So, um, right. so these are just posts thanking everybody. I don't think they're, very, they're necessarily... Um, just important. a little backstory. Yeah, yeah just I more, more thanks, more thank you, everyone, more begging, more <laughs> that kind of stuff. Thank you to everyone. Did he, did he post about it every day, nonstop? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this was this was everything for him at this particular point. I mean... This so from like February life. 1st to like the 21st, so three whole weeks, nothing but Facebook posts saying, buy me a car. <laughs> yeah. It's so it's so funny because he doesn't have Streamlabs or Super Chats uh, on his show and he uses Buy Me a Coffee now. Um, so it's quite funny that it's evolved from Buy Me a Car to Buy, <laughs> buy Me a Car to Buy Me a Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're about to, okay. We're about to come come into something that's probably going to uh, shock you. So just be prepared. Oh well, okay. Well. <laughs> 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 what is this? Okay. this Who is, is Michael uh... Shalali? <laughs> Why was he arrested? He was arrested. DUI, alcohol or drugs. Um, was this after the new car? This was after the new car. He totaled the new car. <laughs> DUI. Hey guys, I'm gonna be so responsible. Listen, my life's gonna turn around once you buy me this twelve hundred dollar car. Oops, crashed into a wall after getting fucking drunk. <laughs> it's me, Mr. Shillelagh, the most responsible Irishman on the internet. <laughs> I used gin from all the coke I sold to those gay guys and drove your fucking gift of a car right into a goddamn wall. <laughs> so you can see he was, he was booked in Polk County uh, 2014. Uh, there's his arrest there, um, driving under the influence. Um, there's a violation of probation on there as well from 2015. So this oh, uh, probation, I'm guessing, probably from the car thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I imagine. Yeah. I imagine so. So 
Okay, so again, the next one's going to be even, even No, he didn't! Come on! A second GoFundMe <laughs> called Shit GoFundMe. Shit keeps getting worse and worse. I'm just a fuck-up, aren't I? GoFundMe slash I'm stupid. <laughs> Please and... tell me nobody gave him money. Please tell me that sat at zero. How? And why is it twice, the, three times the amount of the first one? Yep, you know what happened, blah, blah. Is that really the fucking description he wrote? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's not Shameless even... motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for your charity, faggots. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> hey, you stupid motherfuckers. <laughs> Give me more money. I'm going to drive it into a wall. My favorite bit is coming as well. That's not even the funniest part of this. Um, oh my god, I can't believe I'm about to. Oh, before we go there. Suicide watch! <laughs> <laughs> you Tumblr bitch! What the fuck? You can have one of a kind wristband for the medical unit where I was on suicide watch! <laughs> oh, oh god, he has no shame, does he? Holy shit, that's like that's a teenage girl. Oh, okay, so let me piece this together. He spends three fucking weeks spamming anybody who happens to even look his way, begging for a car that he wants to live out of, because that's his fucking house. He gets shit-faced drunk from all the profit he made selling coke to gay dudes he's giving hand jobs to, because he's a rent boy. And then he gets, he just drives it right, probably to a comedy club that rejected him. <laughs> and then and then he comes, he, I, I don't even, I don't, <laughs> is it a homemade? Is it like a knickknack? Did he fake a suicide watch wristband to get money? <laughs> and he goes back to them. Hey guys, a turtle fuck up here wouldn't want me to kill myself. I need another car. <laughs> We're talking bargains here, okay? Do I want to go in for the three hundred and fifty dollars suicide watch wristband, or go the extra fifty for seventy five seventy five free commercials on MLR? <laughs> That extra $50 gets me 75 I want my commercial to say, this drunken retard. <laughs> this drunken retard crashed into a wall again. <laughs> oh, I love it too. Here's here's value for money. Mersh's Twitter, over 10,000 followers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big dick daddy over there. I'm um, I'm amazed they gave him five hundred and fifty five dollars. Are the are the fake donations? Are people saying get fucked? What does it say? No, I mean, John and Elizabeth felt said that God loves you. We love you. Let me know if there's anything you need. <laughs> so these are... Mersh, God loves you so much he wants you up in heaven with the angels. So let's hope this car wreck finishes it. <laughs> it's fifty bucks. Buy a buy a fast one this time, buddy. Anyway, we'll get, we'll go to the lol suit next because this again is is just as good as the GoFundMe in my opinion. <laughs> wow. That is just a uh, that GoFundMe thing. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Perfect picture. <laughs> oh, you should have put that on his fucking GoFundMe. <laughs> it should have been that in his rap sheet. That should have been what it was with a goal of just pay me, thing. That should have been the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I bought these Puerto Rican horse <laughs> with your GoFundMe money. So I don't give a shit. Not living the high life, fuck you. <laughs> this this stogie cost a hundred dollars. Give me more money, you fucking retard. I'm in a golf cart. Did you notice that? I'm in a golf course. <laughs> oh, I like the Miami Vice look. Yeah. Hey, um, look at this hundred dollars. That's probably fun to go fund me. <laughs> Held on to that to show off. Yeah, so, okay, so the context of this, he's got a job, finally. Finally. I believe, I believe this was sometime around about sort of 2014-ish, there or thereabouts. And uh, he's got a job as a general manager in a strip club um, in Tampa, Florida. So, as wow, you can see, these, are, these are some pictures of him enjoying the successes of his, uh, of his newfound wealth. And uh, <laughs> what, what strip club? We have what strip club? What does his resume say? Like they're like, we need security here. Let's hire the guy that lived in his Mercury for fucking eight years with no work history. So, 
here's a story about a Tampa strip club manager who claims he was fired over the owner's racism. So the t- uh, Mike Sheely was uh, at the time he was general manager at, um, at a Tampa strip club owned by Southeast Show Clubs LLC. And uh, he alleged, Mike Sheely, Mersh, had alleged that his boss or the owner of the strip club, Michael Tomkovich, engaged in consistently racist behaviour towards staff. <clears throat> okay. So Sheely... Oh, wait, wait a second. Are you sure you have his age right? It, he was 33 in 2013? Oh, so this might be... Oh. Yeah, that, no, that does make sense. Holy... I think he's nearly 40 now. I think he's like 39, 40 now. So essentially, Michael Tomkovich, the owner of the of the club... Um, was engaging in consistently racist behaviour towards staff. Sheely claims that Tom- Tomkovich instructed him to actively thin the herd of black employees. <laughs> How does one do that? <laughs> How do you? Th- what does that even mean? I need you to thin the herd of the black. And- <laughs> was he a disciple? <laughs> like, what, what, well, it's such a weird way to phrase it, right? <laughs> forcing him to apply different rules to black dancers than their white counterparts. So these are just all allegations from Mersh. They're all unsubstantiated. Oh, so this so, is just shit he was throwing at the wall to see what would stick. Yeah, essentially. So, uh, And I think it was it was just a case that maybe there was a little bit of it, and yeah. um, I think Mersh saw an opportunity at this point to uh, you know go through a, a, a bit of a lawsuit, get a bit of money. Um, so apparently Tomkovich allegedly told him, fantastic, now I have an N-word door girl. <laughs> Uh, and <laughs> apparently, Sheely, Mike Sheely was fired soon after that. He believes he was wrongly uh, wrongly dismissed because of his refusal to follow Tomkovich's uh, racist Holy instructions. Holy shit. I, this, this, this is fucking with my mind. Again, he's ahead of the curve. So he's basically trying to cancel culture for racism. Oh, like, yeah. maybe five or six years a little too early. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, wow, this guy is he's, he's like in a time warp with <laughs> making money, with the Twitter monetization, <laughs> with the cancel culture shit. <laughs> Is that where the extra three years went? Is he like a time traveler and that's why we're fucking his age up? Oh, wow. <laughs> that could be it. <laughs> There's some kind of weird distortion going on. <laughs> uh, Sheely filed a suit against Southeast Show Clubs. The suit's not the first time, yada, yada, yada. So, yeah, essentially, Mersh uh, filing a lawsuit against uh, this guy Tomkovich alleging racist abuse towards the dancers. And what, what was the date he filed the lawsuit on? Does it say in there? This was, I don't know if this was uh, when it was submitted. This is when it was published, though. So 2017. This, he was this... working on this lawsuit for three fucking years? Yes. Four I, years. It was, yeah, it was It was certainly, um, he, he goes on to talk about it in a moment, and he, he does talk about how long it's been. And uh, So this, w- what I think with the 33-year-old thing, I think, I think this report was written a few years after. Um, oh, it could be. What's the date on the, the um, I'm trying to look. Story. Uh, oh no! I can see an upper left-hand corner, uh, 2017. See right next to uh, Bagenberg or uh, Bayenberg. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. So, okay, so that makes sense then. Oh uh, okay. I, I got all excited. I was like, oh yeah. wow, he got caught <laughs> lying about his age already. He claims a severance package of six hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars. Was that him <laughs> yeah. asking for that? Yeah, yeah. That was that was Mersh's, uh what he requested. Fantastic. Now I have a. They don't actually blank it out. The N word there, door girl. Um, during his employment, defenders instructed plaintiff to charge black entertainers, entertainers up front to perform, <laughs> while similarly situated <laughs> Caucasian employees were not charged until after their performance. So we're going to hear from Mersh. Oh my god, this is deposition footage? Uh, this is him just basically just uh, streaming after the fact when, when it all sort of collapsed. To give you the basic short rundown, uh, I was a plaintiff in a whistleblowing case. Um, I was the general manager of a nightclub in Tampa. Basically, I worked for... God, it's so weird. Chain you know, of- uh, when he loses weight, he kind of looks a little bit like, um, is it Tom Odenkirk from Mr. Show? Or yeah, Bob, Bob Odenkirk? Bob, yeah, he does actually. Oh, yeah, Bob, yeah, he looks like a young, doesn't he? He does, yeah. He looks like a young Saul Goodman. Right? Yes, he does. Is this a Royce's house? This is going to be a Royce's house, yeah. Okay. Uh, Strip clubs. And uh, I was the chicken manager. I was fired for political reasons. I was fired because uh, I basically there were I was being asked to do things that are illegal. And uh, anyone who knows me. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. 
is anybody that knows me knows I don't do illegal things. Said the dude that would post on Facebook about selling coke to gay guys. <laughs> <laughs> you all know me, Mr. Drive My Car Into The Wall, a drug dealer. I'm totally above board. When he made me do those mean things against those innocent black girls, that's where I drew the line. <laughs> I'm a fucking soldier, dude. I don't have problems doing illegal shit oh. for money. In this case, I was asked at a certain point to treat, uh, basically to thin the herd, so to speak, of my black and Hispanic employees. Uh, the impression that came from my owner at the time was that I had too many working for me and he didn't want to be that kind of club. So I was asked to you know, basically partake in certain measures that were discriminatory that would cause these people uh, to not want to be there and to quit, uh, basically force them out the door. And because of my refusal to take part in that, uh, those policies, I was fired. Can but you pause I had for a second? Yeah. Uh, just, just from a realistic perspective, um, I don't buy any of this. So you're going to tell me the guy who's desperate to make it famous, right? Um, who is living in his Mercury, uh, is barely scraping by, always begging for PayPal money, uh, you know, has to deal drugs to, for supplemental income, finally finds a stable position working at a place where he's a fucking manager, and he's going to be like, no, I'm not going to do that. I, I, I have a feeling like there's a real story to what happened. Is it, did the real story ever come out as to why this, this, this happened? And I feel like the lawsuit's like, well, I'm going to fuck with you because you fired me. I honestly think that He's not wired. I don't think he's wired for a kind of like um, a career, like a long job kind of situation. I think he's al he's always looking for the, you know, for that one big payout. He's always looking for that one grift that's gonna. And I think what what he saw, I think he he probably did witness some level of discrimination or some level of <clears throat> unfair treatment. Sure. And I think in his head, I think that he just he saw an opportunity, and I think he just he he just went for the it. The dollar signs flash, and he thought payday. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's my theory on it. I could be wrong, but um, that makes sense. Yeah, I think that was it. And and he, like, I don't think he he really like he thinks he knows law, and he like he does his lawyer merch thing a lot. And I don't think that he actually <laughs> was anywhere near prepared enough for, for for a case like this. And it got thrown out, and it cost him a whole lot of money as well, unfortunately. Oh, so the the whole suit got tossed. Oh yeah, yeah. They they didn't oh. want to hear it. <laughs> they just didn't want to hear it. So he got cock teased for four years on lawyer's fees for this fucking lawsuit and they threw it out it's worse than that like he would he would talk about the the lawsuit back in the day as if this was my way out this was my you know and and in his head it was a done deal it he really did think that this was my way out of homelessness of royce's house of all this sort of stuff i'll have a nice big chunky cushion to sit on um and uh, as you can see right here he's absolutely devastated Oh, so this is after he found out that he's not getting shit. Yeah, yeah. This is, oh, this fantastic. Is the fact, yeah. That's what, what that look is. I uh, found out today that uh, my lawsuit was, in fact, thrown out by a federal judge. Uh, we were not given a trial. We were not given any of the things that were promised by the system that we believe in. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, no trial, no jury, no nothing. Uh, just a federal judge who, for whatever, for one reason or another, didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like how you go from federal judge writing the guns for darts. So yeah, it's. I think the it was in, it was an important thing to to put in there just as a kind of like. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't know about any of like the GoFundMe shit or just how much he was using suicide bait for PayPal donations. <laughs> or even the reaction that people gave him, like you can tell just by the likes, like people, it, it almost feels like sarcasm. Like they're liking when he talks about killing himself, but not liking when he puts up the PayPal links is really telling. It's like that comment of the, of the guy talking about you should do a documentary on being a hobo. I think, yeah, I think is the people reading this, they, they, I think they just see him as a big joke. <laughs> it, that's probably why they're following him. It's like their daily dose of merch. <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird though, because I think that it's turned into something else entirely now, and I think that's probably a product of Mersh's own situation changing, and now he's in a position where he's not exposing himself to this kind of behavior because he thinks he's made it, and he thinks he's Barry Big Bollocks now, and, and that's... Uh, 
I imagine there was as 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 audacious as his suicide begging is. <laughs> I feel like there's at least some level of humility in there somewhere. But well, you know, it wasn't even like one or two posts, and I'm sure you're only showing me a select few. But I, like, I get the feeling like he was baiting all the time. Oh yeah, I mean he's still doing it now, so it's just it's in his DNA. And again, you know, I'm not I'm not hating on how he makes his money. In fact, I think Mersh with money is the funniest thing in the world because he does absolutely ridiculous things with it. He buys BMWs, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> so guns for tards uh this isn't necessarily that interesting it's it's just another one of his schemes so i'll play a little bit here do you like pranks guns and jokes about retarded people well so do we but odds are your liberal snowflake friend doesn't how would you like an easy cost-effective way of screwing with that friend anonymously without losing your twitter account guns for tards is the perfect way to trigger sjw anonymously through the mail for a low fee, your target will receive a beautifully designed professional oh, mailer for a fictional. So we're gonna own the libs by mailing them shit about guns. Is that is that what I'm getting from this? That's exactly it. But the, that is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard of. But the the kicker is that the thing they're mailing about guns is that they are that they're essentially saying to these SJW snowflakes that we're we're going to be giving retarded people guns and as a kind of equal rights thing. And um, I guess I don't know whether or not that that was something he thought of that was a, a gotcha or an own or something. But whoever's paying for these, there's no payoff. They don't know whether or not the recipient even received it. There's just you're just paying, hoping that Mersh sends this. I mean, you don't even know if Mersh is even sending this. He's probably not. And so, why is he mailing out shit with hashtags on them? Oh, he just yeah. said, if you don't want to get banned on Twitter, hashtag guns for tards. Well, like, you're mailing this to some fucking, uh, I'm assuming, some, you know, boomer liberal uh, who's going to be like, what the, why is there a fucking pound sign on this? <laughs> yeah. This is like a phone number? Is it an 800 number he's sending to me? <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's this care package that gets sent from, from Mersh to, I mean... The whole thing is is just nonsense. As you, I mean, you heard there that was their promo they used to play. It, that it would have been on like show. It, it could have been a funny joke if it was just a Twitter hashtag and probably not four tards. You know, make it a little more believable. Just like some, you know, parody satire, right? With no money aspect. You know, be funny for a day. But like that was his big money maker, huh? It was uh, seven ninety nine a piece as well. Oh, print. get the fuck out of here! Wow. All right. yeah, to print off a, a piece of paper and mail it, it's seven ninety nine. It's absolutely audacious, and and also the fact that like something like that, in order to make any kind of serious money, you need to, you need to be doing volume for seven ninety nine for every single order. You need to be doing mass volume. Merch yeah, is the, prof merch. the profit on that would have been what two bucks, three yeah. bucks, yeah. And and you're lucky to get a couple of idiots. I mean. It's called gun for, Guns for Tards. The Tards are the people buying this. Like, that's what they don't realize. So Maybe it's like meta irony humor. Maybe it was ahead of curve on that, too, and we just don't get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could be right. Maybe it's it's an attack on uh, the people buying. It could very well be. But this, this particular comment has made me laugh a little bit. Do you wonder where all the brilliant shitposting and attacks on people come from? Well, you know. We all know it's it's Mershing. Comedy genius, yeah. <laughs> or why I do what I do at the risk of constant Facebook timeouts because I'm fighting for the greater good. <laughs> yeah, the greater good. The greater good of my shit posting on Facebook. Oh, God bless you, soldier. <laughs> Check the below link to fund the online insurrection. Oh, dangerous wording. <laughs> um, so there, this is him reviewing his own product. This is more promotional material <laughs> for Guns for Tards. There's <laughs> I forgot I forgot that was coming. So there's <laughs> oh. there's, there he is with the probably probably the cardboard he was sleeping on earlier. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's his bedding. That's his. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's my dining room table from the back seat. Quite sure what that individual's doing there in the dress uh, in in the front probably of the buying cocaine room. from him. <laughs> He's like, can you stay away for a minute? <laughs> we're looking to increase increase the or sorry expand and increase our size and scope but we need your help to get there you oh i get the grift okay so let me get this so he sets this up knowing nobody's gonna like this is the stupidest fucking thing ever 
But then he appeals to people and says, no, no, you don't understand. It's wildly popular, but we need to expand it to deal with the volume. That's what I need you to donate for. Not buy the product, but expand my ability to sell the product. <laughs> yeah, and like, how do you expand this as an idea? I mean, does, where does it go into? <laughs> I, need, I need at least 42 different Kinkos working full time to pull this off, guys. Okay, so I'm going to need your financial support. <laughs> so this is a bit on him uh, offering... I think I think they did a GoFundMe where they increased tiers. So they had a $15 tier for like um, people that wanted two, for instance. So um, much marketing, multi-level marketing speed. We need a cash infusion to get to the next phase, right? <laughs> yes. It's so corny. It's. <laughs> I don't know where this where this comes from. It's, we need a cash infusion in order to get us to the next phase. Oh, God, he even does that. Yeah, you ever see those Trump emails where they would uh, email them out to beg for money and they would randomly um, try to press you for time? And they'd always yeah. uh, capitalize certain words. If you're a patriot that wants to take down Biden, I've you need that. to. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. He does that, but he's doing that again ahead of the curve. Look at this. Four days, people. Additional everyone before. He's just highlighting fucking words. Yeah, but the the, the idea for, for the capitalization, you're supposed to be capitalizing words that are, you know, that, that are going to draw you into something. These are just random everyone. You're not going to be looking at that word <laughs> everyone. And, and, and it's so out of place. You've got no context there for anything. Like, why is he capitalizing the word before? I, I, I just, sense. this is fascinating to me. <laughs> this is this is fucking fascinating. Trigger any SJW snowflake and ominous. So this is obviously there. Uh, Guns for Tard slash shop. Um, and then there's a GoFundMe. Apparently GoFundMe uh, shut down their uh, Guns for Tard's page because guns. <laughs> I guess they didn't like the idea that there was uh, a GoFundMe for something involving weaponry. So... Oh, there's the next one? Okay, what is this? It's going to get ugly, folks. Did he actually do another one? No, I think I think they didn't do another GoFundMe, but what I think they try to do is they try to they try to sell this as kind of like, look, we're at war with GoFundMe now. Let's try and drum up a little bit of drama with us and GoFundMe. Uh, buy more of our guns for Tards in order to, you know, own GoFundMe and all that kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure that was where his head was at at the time. Are you telling me that Mike Shillelagh the guy living in a Mercury beat Vox Day to the punch for this kind of shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Look at the uh, look at that look at, look at that sort of promotional material. <laughs> Just absolute trash. You want to <laughs> fucking play politics? Go fund me. Well, we'll fucking play politics. Game on, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Such a girl. So there it is again, just more more nonsense. Uh, I think I think that's pretty much it for uh, for, for guns for tards. There's Mersh sporting a guns for tards T-shirt, which, by the way, what a horrific design that is. Yeah, um, it's pretty awful. And there's more promotional material that looks like it was made with sort of clip art and other. So is this? I mean, this is 2017, right? So this is kind of yeah. like in the middle of the anti SJW stuff. It's really hype and popular. Oh, on, absolutely. Uh, you know. yeah. uh, so do you think it was just uh, attention? Like he, do you think deep down you know nobody's going to give a shit about this? But I'll I'll try to make something so outrageous that I'll, oh they're going to come after me and shut this down, then I'll be a hero kind of thing. Yes, I think that was definitely part of it. I think I think there was a part that was that was a really sort of traditional we'll sell this get money kind of thing. But you must have re he must have realized that again with the vo sort of volume he's talking about, he's not going to make any serious money there. So right. I think it was it was. It was some material for his show, I guess, and and also, like you said, I think it was just a way of injecting them into the conversation of you know the social media, social justice conversation to some degree, and and hoping, fingers crossed, that somebody out there is go with with enough Twitter followers or enough subscribers is going to get mad at them for for this, and they can start a whole a whole thing. But essentially, now, does he care. does he use like stupid ideas like when he does something dumb, right, or fucks up? Um, does that become a quote-unquote bid for a show as a way of kind of like deflecting away from looking like an idiot? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he'll use anything. Like, even even moments where he's absolutely looking like a complete and utter fool, like the most recent uh, thing we're talking about, he, he's he gotten uh, about three weeks out of that, and every single night he's been doing shows about it, even though every time he talks about it, he looks even more of a deranged lunatic, essentially. I mean, when Jesse did a show exposing the DMs where he's objectively embarrassing <laughs> embarrassing himself sure. he does a show called receipts maybe a week later where he goes through them himself 
all over again <laughs> and he's leaving selective things out like a, like he he irritatingly leaves out the ham radio bit for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just about aware enough to realize that he doesn't want <laughs> he doesn't want that i'm not too sure about essentially uh, so you gotta uh give me a little bit i, I don't know is this part of the um it's the part Schneider of the Dan thing? Schneider stuff, yeah. So Dan Schneider, you, you, you're aware of what happened there with all. all yeah, no, I, yeah, I know about so, Schneider, but I, I don't think I know who Gabe Hoffman is, though. So Gabe Hoffman is he's like a Jewish uh, film director, like a filmmaker, essentially. He okay. made a, he made a film called An Open Secret, which was about the uh, sexual abuses of children in Hollywood, and okay. um, and he was he he became a friend of the show. He became close friends with Mersh and Royce, and he he would interview a couple of times for them. We got Gabe Hoffman on. This is Thanks awesome. For calling we've been, in, uh, we've been uh, yeah. I, I've been a fan no of yours, obviously, since an open secret, but also when I saw you on uh, on InfoWars. With so Merce talking about being a fan of his. and um, So this is essentially a little rundown of what, what it is. So uh, this is somebody's uh, comment saying, uh, you may be wondering uh, why they would unlist a video with information that is important to the welfare of children. This was regarding a video that they unlisted um, with Gabe Hoffman. Uh, so Mersh complained to Gabe Hoffman about Gabe's working relationship with Mike Cernovich. Mersh, top, Mersh said that it was unwise for Gabe to associate with Mike Cernovich, given that he was accused of rape himself. Gabe, however, sided with Cernovich over Mike Sheely. And then Hoffman, Gabe Hoffman, would then go on to start posting a bunch of clips of Mersh talking about how much he hates Jews. <laughs> so, uh, um, so on the background on this, because like I, I know a bit about Cernovich with the McGilly Gorilla mindset and the mm. tranny banging. Uh, the rape <laughs> thing, though, I, I don't know about. Was he accused of rape? He was arrested, and uh, he, eventually he was charged with battery. But the 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 original arrest was regarding a rape, uh, potential rape, or something like that. I don't want to. Well, yeah, I, 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 this, this, I, I legit don't know. So I didn't know if like that was a real thing or if they were just mm. getting into a fight for the sake of getting into a fucking fight. The reason Mersh has an issue with Mike Cernovich, and we've got a little bit on Mike Cernovich a little bit later, essentially sure. is, is I think I mentioned it earlier as well, is when the, when he was doing his whole Dan Schneider thing, he was expecting, and and this was a uh, this was at the time where you know the Laura Loomers, the Jack Posoviks, the Cernoviches of of the world. Where they were, you know, a very tight knit group, and they were, they were all sort of raising in popularity and fame, and really sort of making a name for themselves. Sure. And I think that Mersh, at the time, was hoping that the Dan Schneider thing would elevate him and Royce to that same level. It, it's such a uh, a naive miscalculation. Like, Pasobic, Loomer, uh, Cernovich, and all of them, right? Milo, I'd even throw in there, and a couple others. Um, this would have been twenty seventeen ish. Right. Right. Yeah. The 20, uh, 2016, 2017, like that's all they're all rising because of the mega shit. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm sure none of them want to start talking about kids getting fucked in Hollywood. <laughs> like it's going to clash with talking about how based Donald Trump is. Oh, by the way, let's talk about kids getting ass fucked. You know, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit off topic for what they're trying to sell. Yeah, exactly. And also. I think they're very careful about like how polished they look, you know, the the Pasovics and all them. And I think oh, yeah, absolutely. I yeah. think when you just get into the weeds of of even discussing all the pedophilia stuff, I think was this post Pizzagate too, by the way? It 2017. It probably would have been. Yeah, I think I think so. Right. So they're 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 all wanting to stay the fuck away from that because that dude yeah. went to the pizza shop with a gun, <laughs> and now you got this guy screaming about pedophiles in Hollywood. And they're like, no, we're not touching this. <laughs> So essentially what happened after this, Gabe Hoffman and, and Mersh, especially those two, they disbanded, they became mortal enemies because Mersh was, was he, essentially Mersh was rallying a lot of his fans to shit on Gabe Hoffman, attack him, this kind of... So a lot of Mersh fans would be uh, <laughs> oy veying to Gabe on Twitter and shabo sky this and oy vey again. Your basic shit posts, yeah. Yeah, yeah just, shit. yeah, essentially that. This is Gabe Hoffman reporting Mersh's account, getting it suspended. <laughs> Which, oh, shit, they're going after each other now. Oh, huh? yeah, I mean, Gabe Hoffman certainly <laughs> went off a little bit. This is this is him clipping up parts of Mersh's show where Mersh is ranting about Jews. Another clip there where he's ranting about Jews. He says there, why do the Jews have to ruin everything? Goddamn Jews run it, ruining <laughs> freedom of speech. And then the next clip is. Uh, oh no! Wait, you... can you can you back up one, just one, yeah. uh, one to the, that one? Uh, okay, is Gabe Hoffman taking the piss out of him? Is it like, because you know how Jews, uh, the, they won't spell God, right? There's always the. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's always the I dash, no and he quotes what... him as, "Goddamn." 
<laughs> I was wondering, I was like, is it is he taking it out because he doesn't want to curse? Or is this like a, hey, fuck you, Marsh. I'm the Jewiest Jew you're ever going to see. I think you're right. I thought maybe that was him poking him. You know what I mean? Like Gabe's like just kind of <laughs> ribbing him a little. This was the one that did it. This is the one that that really got his account completely removed. Hardcore anti-Semites like Mersh who have targeted me in the past are very unhappy people. They feel like they're losing in life and they're right. And this particular video, uh, we'll see in a moment. Um, I think oh, you got I, that queued up? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it's going to cause Mersh a couple of problems going forward, essentially. Uh, this is Gabe Hoffman getting him banned off Alex Jones. The thing is, it's like 2019, right? So they've, mm. been, they've been going to war for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube, YouTube, it's run by the Jews, Mossad and Israel and the CIA. Press one in the chat if, uh, if you are familiar with the fact that I tend to have a bit of a distrust for the Jews. <laughs> Press two if somebody telling you that I might not like Jews would be a complete mind-blowing fact to you. Holy shit, really? Is he... I didn't know he said those things about Jews before. Gabe Hoffman, you insincere motherfucker. You always knew how I felt about city folk. You know that I truly know in my heart that you people are insidious. You are parasitic and disingenuous, rootless, international cabal of people who only serve, there are, you have very terrible tendencies. Oh, can you pause it for a second? <laughs> yeah. Oh, per that was perfect. That was perfect timing. Okay, how can he have such vitriol, right? Uh, like, oh, I, I, hate, I, hate, I hate the Jews, when he was desperate to work with the guy in the first place. Did he suddenly discover he was Jewish after the fight? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's quite funny because... If you if you see him now, what eventually happened is during the whole MAGA thing and, and when he eventually purity spiral into this, he attracted a bunch of uh, a bunch of wignats, a bunch of you know uh, people that obviously like that sort of stuff, and um, that started to affect them as a show because obviously that that gets them a lot of uh, negative attention when it comes to YouTube banning channels and all that kind of stuff. So Mersh had to retreat very swiftly, and he he would go on these banning rampages especially on DLive where they would all the wignats would usually just be creating end towers and you know talking <laughs> about the shoes in there and stuff and there's there's so much footage of Mersh just yelling at the wignats telling them to fuck off and telling them to stop <laughs> the Jews stuff. um so so it was it was a, it was a, a problem he created for himself essentially and um this is why I say this is going to be a problem for him for a long, long, long time. Not only, like, the funny thing as well is he's trying to go mainstream now. Apparently, the reason why he's no longer going with the moustache and he's growing back his beard, he said there's a mainstream project with, like, a producer and a director that have hired him for something that he doesn't want to talk about, but he said it's going to be a massive thing and all the trolls are going to, they're going to all be sorry when this happens. And uh, so, apparently... Guys, we just need a, a cash infusion for phase four of this. <laughs> so yeah so apparently it's something mainstream from what he says holy shit how funny would it be if after the fuentes doc drops if louis thoreau uh, interviews mersh and ralph for the next one? <laughs> oh god so the son of each stuff pretty much carries on from there so the well, first fucking listen we sent enough of this shit it got re so uh just set up this first clip the first clip is essentially like i said before the dan schneider stuff Mersh sure. essentially complaining that Cernovich, Luma, and all that, they aren't basically listening to them. Well, fucking listen, we sent enough of this shit, it got retweeted enough, people are talking about it, so fucking, I want to know why, why the fuck Mike Cernovich doesn't give a shit about this? What's the matter? Is the fucking gorilla mindset not apply to protecting children, Mike? Huh? Is it because preteens aren't a target demographic to shill your piece of shit book to? Is that why Cernovich doesn't give a fuck? <laughs> Seems a bit upset. <laughs> <laughs> he really does yeah it seems to be uh, eating at him so this is uh, just a couple of clips of uh, just showing how, how much they talk about Cernovich how many shows are dedicated to him wow so when he gets a grudge like he holds on to it huh oh big time yeah yeah he yeah because that other guy there's like a, a gap of three years Cernovich this is like a couple of years I mean Cernovich has never really replied to anything that he's done I think I think it is just ankle biting greed I know that term gets thrown around a lot but I think with Cernovich and, and this essentially sets up Mersh's first attempt, in my opinion, of of, of trying to deplatform somebody. It's interesting that if that's if that's a tactic he's going to go with, right? Um, 
after having it happen to him from what was it Hoffman, right? Because oh, yeah. Hoffman got a booted. Yeah. So you'd think he'd be more sympathetic, like, oh, shit. And even complain about the GoFundMe, you know, like, so, oh, look, you know, they're banning me off Twitter. They're banning me off GoFundMe. This sucks on Facebook. I'm being put in timeouts. This is shit. Well, he's, and um, you're saying he, he transitions into doing it himself. Well, his pinned tweet for, for the longest time was, um, it's a dangerous time to be a comedian right now. Support our show. Uh, subscribe to our show. We might not be here for very long. We're in the midst of a culture war and all this kind of stuff. So, he, I mean, he's been selling that same point to everybody for, for years now. Since the advent of Revenge of the Sis, they've been, they've been talking that line about censorship. I mean, the whole Matt Christiansen thing that we're going to get to is essentially Mersh purity spiraling over Matt Christiansen, telling him that he's not free speech enough and that he's he's not against censorship enough. So he's really created a problem for himself that he can't reconcile with the fact that he actually can't stop himself from flagging and 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 reporting and and trying to deplatform people with petitions and things. I mean, he's he's essentially just a one man sort of a uh, Double standard, Spurg. essentially. Yeah, Spurg, <laughs> what's called Terrasburg? Yeah. But it's Terrasburg is leader of the Terrasburgs. He calls his uh, he calls his army, or at least he used to call his army Terrasburgs until I think people made fun of it. I think it was honestly. I think it had probably something to do with yourself. I think he was trying to do his own sweetie squad thing because uh, it was at the same time where he was trying to trying to create merchandise, and this is something that their resident artist was talking about quite a while back. Mersh had asked him to come up with a logo for the show that was easy to put on hats. <laughs> and his his point was, I want something that's going to be recognisable and easy to put on hats the way Mr. Medica does it. The the Medica hats, I, they're just stars. I mean, that, I, I think that's the reason they appeal is because, uh, you know, if, if, if you like it for whatever reason and know what mm. it is, fine. But otherwise, if you see it, it's just like a fucking hat with some stars on it, right? But it's become synonymous with you. And it's, it's actually like a, I think he sees that as a very successful marketing venture. Like the Sweetie Squad shit. Uh, mm. That was from one of those um, Badgers or Beavers, the MRA group. Uh, when that <laughs> chick was on like a fucking stream with me, she yeah. kept calling me Sweetie. <laughs> so I mean that was that was to take the piss out of him, you know. That wasn't yeah. like a, oh we sound badass uh, with the name Sweetie Squad. We're putting work into this show. We're getting frozen out by multiple people. We can't even get a fucking retweet from these so-called peers of ours. Okay, Gabe Hoffman from An Open Secret, one of the only guys who has actually followed up, retweeted, make sure yeah. his appearance was seen that he went on our show. The rest of you fucking people, you have no respect. Stop treating us like we're clowns, okay? Because we're only at twenty five hundred subs now. We are going to blow past you, people. Mark my words, and we will not. Be be so fucking kind to you when we do that's that bitterness man that's just hidden under that's you know what i mean it's just kept he barely keeps it in check he wants success so bad so he can just fucking own people yeah, that's it it's it's like people have people have uh aspirations to be successful for a number of reasons a, a lot of it is money a lot of it is uh celebrity and fame and stuff i think for mersh it's simply petty. revenge <laughs> revenge yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's it's just a, a way of him telling everybody that laughed at him living in a car that they're wrong i don't get that feeling the weird thing is i don't get that from royce i mean maybe he is like that but like he just seems more i don't know he just seems more relaxed merch seems like the one that's just fucking angry yeah Royce. i mean to be fair to royce he's he he takes himself out of a lot of this stuff the other day because i was the one that like compiled the cernovich dossier last year because i was obsessed with ruining him because i was obsessed oh. with ruining him can you pause? So, what was the Cernovich dossier? I think this dossier was was about the rape. I think it was about the rape and the, the subsequent battery charge. So, it probably would have been that. Oh, okay. Just like an info dump. Like, when I hear yeah. dossier, I think, like, oh, is he... Is he putting together like addresses and phone numbers and shit? Like, what, what do you what do you mean dossier here? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. It, yeah, I'm sure he's just being fancy pants with his wording, and I'm, uh, he's probably just a folder on his computer with a couple of screenshots. Okay. All right. So even yes, like the other day we were talking about Cernovich and I was somebody that was here asked like, why do you always make that joke about him pulling his dick out on Indian girls and cabs? Like it's a very specific joke. And I'm like, oh, Google Mike Cernovich, when in doubt, whip it out. Like I remember the name of the fucking blog because I hate this man. 
Okay, so here we are. We've arrived at the petition to have Mike Cernovich, <coughs> alt right predator Mike Cernovich, banned from Twitter. <laughs> Ban notorious alt right predator Mike Cernovich from Twitter. And you could you could maybe dismiss this as just like oh you know it's just something someone wrote on the internet. But we're looking at one thousand one hundred fifty seven signatures there, nearly one thousand five hundred signatures, where it gets picked up by the local news. By the way. So the opening statement here, Mike Cernovich is a woman abusing former men's rights activist and creepy supplement shill who is constantly posting Pizzagate conspiracies and pro-Trump vitriol on Twitter. Recently, so I mean, that's a great opening. That's basically loading your bases right there. That's front loading the whole thing with... with it's, uh, it's a lot of hits, yeah. So recently, Mike Cernovich used uh, an internet lyn uh, lynch mob to get James Gunn fired from his job as uh, director of Marvel's Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. So... Suddenly, Mersh, the uh, protector of children in Hollywood, now is sticking up for James Gunn. So do you, do you think that it's um, Mike had a lot of dirt on him, but Mersh just wasn't big enough to do anything about it? Or do you think that it's um, it just wasn't enough shit to begin with for anybody to really give a fuck? Do you think like when he was taking his this seems like his best shot, right? Like I'm going to put together mm -hmm. a dossier. I'm going to go um, a, a petition. Mm -hmm. I'm going to you know get attention for this. We're going to take this guy down. Uh, do you think it was just that nobody knew who fucking Mersh was, so nobody paid attention? Right, right. Or do um, you think it was that Cernovich just wasn't dirty enough at the time to really just hit? I think it was a mixture of both. I think that um, ultimately all that Cernovich did to, to warrant this particular petition was he, he wrote a couple of tweets that I guess was kind of encouraging people that follow him to kind of you know, make a scene about James Gunn um, and James Gunn's tweets. If you remember his tweets, it was stuff about kids. Uh, it, it was a number of jokes, essentially. He was making a lot of jokes about, like, you know, sex with kids and all that kind of stuff. I think Cernovich at the time was trying to make a point about Ben Chip. It goes, it, it's so tangential that almost doesn't even matter anymore. But uh, essentially, Mersh used that as a as a vehicle to, to say, look, how, how do you like it? We're going to get you banned now because you're trying to get James Gunn banned. And it's essentially a front because he's only doing this as a... Wait, uh, so in a weird way, Mersh is defending the person being accused of being yeah. a pedophile. <laughs> yeah, but... He's defending James Gunn. Out of pure convenience because they both share the same... Uh, <laughs> a so wait, if, 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 Mike, or if Mike Cernovich was fighting with Dan Schneider, would Mersh suddenly be defending Dan Schneider? I would imagine probably so, yeah. Yeah. Mersh likes to he likes to talk about how ideologically consistent he is. He also likes to lump that in with anti uh, sensorial stuff. So he he really sort of created a standard for himself that he constantly falls short of. And I think here is, I mean, he might be right in the sense that James Gunn probably shouldn't be cancelled for what he wrote on Twitter. But at the same time, you you're dragging he's he's dragging himself down to the same depths just to prove a point. Again, you're looking at things like this: abusive and predatory towards women. Suddenly, Mersh is uh, <laughs> suddenly he's a he's a Me Too guy now. Suddenly, uh, I don't know. He just well, yeah, like I said, I, the most I know about him again is the supplements and the the the, the uh, uh, <laughs> how to have sex with Tranny's thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll move on from Cernovich because I think we've sure. milked, milked that as much as we're going to be able to. Here we go. Ah, uh, here we go. Sticks. sticks. Now, uh, yeah. Oh, you got the clips. Yes. Because Tonka erased all of his stuff. I think one mm -hmm. guy, though, does have the full archive of all Morning Kumites. Oh, wow. Um, I, I will try to dig it up. One guy was talking about having it. Uh, they might be able to give you the whole episode. You might be able to get more. I wish it was Mersh, but it's it's unfortunate it's Royce that's sort of suggesting that Styx is a pedophile. Well, so. Right, and then it felt like uh, Royce was the one that kind of walked it back a little bit first. Because it feels, again, like he's the more responsible one. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, Certainly, oh, yeah. shit. Well, this is... This is our business. We better treat it seriously. Where Mersh just kind of is like, "I'm going to get famous and fuck all of you," kind of <laughs> attitude. There's there's a there's a really good clip actually out there of of Mersh having he goes on this really long rant about you guys from from back in the Tonkasaur days, and uh, he goes on this rant about how you guys are all gatekeepers and that you all just you just suck each other's dicks and that um, you'll never let us on because you know that we're funnier than you and all this kind of stuff. It's absolutely psychotic. He's, he keeps talking about how it's photocopies of photocopies of photocopies and he really goes off. So again, it's just it's just so so petty. And well, and now now he's doing bowling tournaments with one of the IBS people, like with Ralph. Right? It's weird. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's finally got his wish. He finally got uh, invited to the big boys' table, um, except now it's just a bunch of big boys. 
One thing we could all agree on is we all fucking hate pedophiles. Can we at least we could all unite? Oh yeah, yeah. No, they deserve a bullet. Oh you know? man, that, we've got a twelve-hour stream on that from like this day three weeks ago. <laughs> I would have loved it. Like, <laughs> oh, it was some shit. It was some shit. Uh, we caught it. There was a guy who was in here who was saying all kinds of shit and then lied about sharing pictures of a fifteen-year-old that he was planning to hook up with, and then we busted him out on it. That was so annoying. You God, guys are I, talking about sticks? Is that uh, what you're that talking was about? A Destiny. Fucking oh, Steve Bonnell. That's a different YouTube pedophile. Destiny. I, I apologize for, you know, whatever. Maybe taking things out of context and, you know. what I. And also, can I, I'll, I'll apologize to Tonka. I, I did, dude, I did. Dude, seriously I, wasn't, yeah, seriously. I wasn't even mouthing off to you earlier. No. I was mouthing off to, to, to Andy, and I apologize to both I of you. First, right. for, to talk at your stream, by the way, it was never meant for you to come on and us to turn this into a freak show. That was honestly swear that was not our fucking intention. So we yeah. will. We will put the video out, and the sticks won't watch it, but we yeah. will. And I look, <laughs> look, at the end of the day, we. I apologize. Again, I didn't. Uh, I don't oh, think. Uh, I'm usually the more intense. You know, a little backstory, you probably wouldn't need it for your documentary, but um, I, I vividly remember Sticks uh, did make a bit of an ass of himself on this. I don't know if you've seen the clips of it, um, but when he first came in and was talking about this, like he was he uh, he was going on and on about what a big deal he was. It was it was quite cringe inducing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, I, I just I remember this being a shit show because I've never heard, I've never seen anybody being. It was like a my god moment when they make him bake cakes. Like I've never seen. <laughs> somebody being forced to sing happy birthday it was so <laughs> it's just great really it's just amazing i mean would you ever sing happy birthday on command to get out of a jam <laughs> no no why no i either are why don't they just bail like it's it's you, not, just it's you, not you, you, better you, for them yeah you leave or you talk shit or you just you uh you actually apologize you're like yeah i fucked up i'm, a, I'm an ass just sorry down. <laughs> just 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 keep going with you, it. I mean. You pick something, right? But you don't, you don't, you don't get told fucking sing me happy birthday, and he does. <laughs> and I know it bothers him, by the way. Oh, like I you. saw when I, I when I brought this back up, and other people started doing it. He seemed to get really fucking annoyed with it. Yeah, it's it's stuck around as well. It's been like there's a lot of things with him that that really does just fall by the wayside, and even I forget. And then, but this is something that's and it's. It's so silly as well because it's such a, a stupid thing to, to to laugh at, but it's just stuck around and and he hates it because it's it is it was there's nothing worse than when you jump the gun and you get all excited and you think that this is going to get you a ticket on the big the big IBS streams and then for it all to just go the worst way possible. It, it feels like a common theme, right? Like it feels like everything he thinks is going to be the big jumping off moment uh, blows up, like. He's going to partner up with, uh, was it Hoffman? And then it goes to shit. He's going to show up on uh, a Taka show to get, you know, publicity for the Schneider videos. And then he's singing happy birthday. He's going to get a brand new car from donations. And then he drives it into a wall. He got a job as a manager and then he's fired. <laughs> he's in a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. I, I apologize for however, uh, well, this turned out. Yeah. Um, hopefully we can just, you know, support yeah. you. Yeah, I, I mean, it's already on 4chan, so sporadically I'll probably... I should sing him happy birthday. Oh, that's not necessary. <laughs> you know what? You, know what? you said you would punch him in the face, now the best way to apologize would be to sing him happy birthday. I hate singing happy birthday, so I feel like this is part towards the penance. This is probably really the worst like penance. No, it's, it's, you can do that in a video or something. Wow. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy cringe. Happy birthday, sticks, hex, and hammer, sticks, hex. Happy birthday to you. Hey. That, that was spirited. Oh, terrible. I, I just don't know why you would do that. I'd rather just shut everything down. I'd rather just d disable every social media account that I've got than to sit there singing happy birthday to people that I know are getting off on it. And then not not only that, I can only imagine what the chat <laughs> was saying at the time. I mean, right? Yeah, because at the time Tonka was, you know, in the morning Kumite, because uh, him and Andy, right, were kind of doing like Andy yeah. in the evening and then uh, Tonka in the morning, right, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Um. So he was bringing in, I think, like five thousand viewers every morning. 
Yeah. So, I mean, it was a sizable audience to have uh, watch you humiliate yourself in front of a guy you just accused of being a pedophile and getting it completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, again, just, just absolutely wild. Um, speaking of... Now, you got to you gotta give me a little bit of a primer here on Owen. Yeah, Okay, because I, I know there's a little bit of history with you and him, and I know that uh, from what I've seen of Owen, right, mm. um, he seems insane. Am I wrong on that? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he's... he's uh, like, he's verifiably like... crazy. A hundred percent. Yeah, okay. absolutely. There's, there's no, there's no doubt. He's, he's off the rails, and he's, he's. Um... Didn't, didn't he like? He burned his fucking kids' uh, dinosaur books. <laughs> yes. um, he drinks turpentine. Yeah. Um, he talks about squirting, which I still don't fucking know what the fuck that's about. Uh, there's like some shit with apertures, like mind's eye shit. It's like every once in a while I'll see something and it's some new crazy shit and I'm like, what is this? What is this guy? And now he's like living in the woods or something. I don't know what the fuck this guy does. Yeah, he's called Bertaria. Um... <laughs> of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? And um, it was a whole thing. They they he essentially was basically trying to sell timeshares on a plot of land that he bought for all of his bears so that they could they could like buy into it, but they would be able to like stay on his property in in a tent, I suppose. For like short periods of the year, I, I guess he was trying to like create a, like a com- like a commune. He was going to have like a school there. He was going to have like build like a bunch of stuff, like a church and stuff like that. And it was yeah, it was it was the 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 final stages of any particular cult. Cult, yeah, it really was. I mean, you know, we we say cult and a, a lot, and we overuse it for a lot of these communities. Oh no, this is dead on. But like from was... the small stuff I've seen of him, it, it, like Jim Jones kind of shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. wasn't he? Um... See, this is the thing. Like, I know a bit about the back history, and and he went after you a bit too. Yeah, he did. He um, obviously the first documentary came out. I don't yeah. think he was best pleased with that. And then I was I was about to make a second documentary, and that, and um, that's when he was. I feel like that's when he was at his height, right? Like he oh, he yeah. wasn't. People weren't addressing how fucking crazy he was. Unfortunately, it was also a time where. I had just got a new job in a career that I've been working for the last eight years to get towards, mm-hmm. and um, I had to move down to London, and I had a lot of other things going on. So I was kind of um and ahhing whether or not to even carry on doing YouTube for a while. And then it it got a bit much when Owen found the doc uh, the documentary trailer, and then he started uh, <laughs> getting a lot of his bears to try and dig up any personal information they had on me. So that was getting yeah, he was trying to fuck around. with you. Yeah, yeah. A, li- a little bit. I mean, it, it comes with the territory, so I wasn't necessarily, you know, I wasn't. I, I didn't. I knew that was going to happen at some point, but then he just started like one of his tactics. He just when he doesn't have anything, he just starts calling you a pedophile. <laughs> so he just came on his show and he and he was. Um, he said, "Oh yeah, I've been talking to one of my bear guys, and he's been doing background checks on porcelain, and uh, apparently he's a convicted rapist." <laughs> And so I was like, okay, yeah, I don't, I, I'm just starting a new job, and I really yeah, it's the last need... thing you need. Yeah, so I kind of like dipped out, and then obviously the the running theme there was uh, Owen ran you off the internet, and that you are a pedophile. Yeah, see, I, I never saw it like that. I I figured, um, because uh, like again, I, I don't have a ton of information, but when I watch this kind of transpire, mm. uh, based on what I'm remembering, is it just felt like he got really mad that people liked the fucking video. And yeah. he wanted to make the video go away, so he was going to throw anything he could at you, right? And try to tie, you know, like that's that's not like there are levels to shit on the internet. Like there's doxing and stuff like that. But what he's attempting to do is like the old fashioned life ruination shit, <laughs> yeah. where we're gonna we're gonna tag you with something so horrendous to your fucking identity that you're gonna regret it. It, it feels like he's like every time he gets brought up, it's like something fucking crazier. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. It, and you know. um, it's just yeah. did he say like his dad was it was a gay prostitute or fuck yes. gay prostitutes or something yeah, yeah his dad i think they had like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or something uh, and that was like a joint fund that his dad and his mom shared or something and his sure. dad just spends it all on male prostitutes <laughs> apparently I, I mean this is, this is what he said so i'm not i'm not like you know throwing that out there as a as a thing but um yeah, he he just went on tirades about his dad like literally in tears crying while streaming uh, talking about his dad and it was almost heartbreaking hearing it and and hearing about abuses and child ab- abuse and all this kind of stuff it was really that's when i really didn't want anything to do with it anymore because i realized very quickly that this guy uh there's there's levels to this to this level of like mania <laughs> that yeah, I, you I don't, don't know. even want to go down 
you don't know what kind of insanity you're dealing with. Is it somebody that yeah. really had trauma and then that made them crazy? Or are they a crazy person that's making up trauma? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, which, which direction are you going? Because it's hard to fucking tell with a dude drinking turpentine. <laughs> yeah, and a man who's who's open to drinking turpentine, I've got to wonder what else he's capable of or what else. And uh, the way, like, you'd, you'd have to be insane to, to open yourself up to dealing with someone that has seemingly nothing <laughs> to lose. Um, I think it was the, the him burning his kids' books that oh really God, made me yeah. go, "Holy shit, this dude's nuts!" Yeah, I remember clips of him beating his dog as well. That was that was a bit wild. Jesus. But essentially, the the merch stuff with Owen Benjamin. So back when I was back when I was doing the documentary, and and sure. I was kind of involved in Mersh's community a little bit. Me and Mersh were fairly uh, close at the time. Good terms. And uh, yeah, we, yeah, good terms. I'd say I'd be on his show a, a, a couple of times here and there. I mean, one of the big reasons why I ended up leaving the Mersh Circle was after the Owen Benjamin documentary, I had forgotten to put Mersh's name in the credits, in the opening credits. And I'm not kidding you, he went berserk in in his Discord server and he was telling anyone why? that listened just like, fuck Porcelain, fuck, I'm done with him, fuck, fuck Porcelain. Yeah, uh, but why? Or... You're, you're, the, you're the guy that did the documentary and you're the one taking the risk. I think because, uh, to be fair, his community did help in a sense of getting me clips and all that kind of stuff. And also, well, like, yeah, I used... but I mean, sure, there's there's being reasonable too. Then you just say, oh yeah, hey, you know, oh, oh he was I'm sorry totally for reasonable. Yeah, he was absolutely. Being uh, oh no, I would have been like, oh, you know, I'd have been like, oh yeah, you know what? Shit, I'm sorry, guys. You know, it's a edited project. I fucked up. Uh, I'll put it in the description or something. Yeah, but but is... he lost his shit, huh? <laughs> this is where I I kind of fucked up a little bit as well. Is I felt so bad about it, and he got me. He got in my head like so bad that. I ended up making a video just to thank him, <laughs> and it was like you gotta be the, kidding it me! Was the Did most, you really? Yeah, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> that's and, uh, your happy birthday, isn't it? <laughs> that's my happy birthday. And then after after I put it out, and I, I kind of like watched it back, and I was like, "Why the fuck did I do that?" And then that was the first stepping stone to realizing that this whole environment was a, a not very healthy one, indeed. But so you've um, got kind of like you've got like the merch effect. The love bombing thing sounds almost kind of like a cultish too. So like oh, you, 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 here's poor porcelain, porcelain stuck between two cult leaders, Owen <laughs> Benjamin and Marsh, and yeah, being tearing dragged, them apart, being pulled at both arms by two yeah. cult leaders. As far as Marsh is concerned, he uh, at, at that particular time during the documentary and a little bit before and after, he was essentially just covering him day and night on Revenge of the Sis on Nightwave. He was just end-to-end -end coverage of Owen Benjamin and that had a, a quite a positive impact on his subs he ended up just pulling a load of Owen Benjamin fans to his channel which caused him a massive amount of problems because Owen Benjamin fans are just as deranged and crazy as Owen Benjamin so uh, suddenly his community was just filled with the most just crazy people you could find on the internet yeah that's the second example you've given me of that so with the wignat thing right where he, yes, he went after yes. hoffman for the jew thing and then with owen where he gets the where they call themselves bears <laughs> yeah they do yeah 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 which i guess in Mersh's gay circles probably means something slightly different but um, <laughs> this kind of feeds into Mersh's relentless attacking of his own audience and you see this a, a ton where he uh, he just goes off on his chat constantly. Every show, you can just pause it halfway through, and I guarantee he's yelling at someone's super chat. And it's usually a bear, or it's usually a wignat, or it's usually just one of us, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's I think I've got a bit of the context to this Owen Benjamin stuff sure. already in yeah. it, so we'll play a little bit. Now, we do not want anybody going after anybody. Uh, and you can listen back to Daywave this morning. Oh, actually, I do need to give context, to be honest. At this point... Owen Benjamin has flagged Mersh's channel because Owen Benjamin's Owen Benjamin and he does what he wants. So this is Mersh and Royce talking about how they do not want anyone in their community retaliating. This morning, as soon as I found out, I said at the end, listen, everybody, no fucking gay ops. Yeah, we I don't do that. people in our Discord. Uh, yeah. I, I, we and the fan page on I Facebook. Tweeted, yeah. I wrote on Facebook. Yeah, everybody is instructed not to do it. And not, not wink, wink instructed either. Legit. Because Owen now... He now issued a bad faith copyright claim. The content creating community and their fans are not going to take kindly to this. And I have a feeling that uh, these sort of things are going to sort themselves out. Uh, I'd rather it just look, we don't have to involve ourselves in gay ops because the entire Internet is going to hate this asshole. Cheers to Mersh and Revenge of the Sis, who, who call uh, Vox Day Teddy Spaghetti. And they and they just mock oh, wait, me wait. endlessly, that, and they're like, 
Uh, is that where that came from? <laughs> yeah. Was Marsh the one that came up with the Teddy Spaghetti thing? No, it was, it was a guy called Johnny Arcade who uh, was a former Owen Benjamin listener, and he ended up being kind of one of the one of Owen Benjamin's like biggest a logs. And then he got involved into Marsh's community a little bit. Um, he now hates Marsh, um, but yeah, he came up with the Teddy Spaghetti thing. Oh yeah, because I always found that nickname funny as shit. Yeah, it's uh, a great nickname. I, yeah, and, and it really is. I... The stuff they did with it was was good as well. Some of the memes that came out of it were, were pretty funny. Okay, sorry, I didn't know if he came up with it or not. That's what I was asking. Like, oh my god, oh my god, these. Are... Bye. No more, no more quick money for you guys. And you know, we would offer you a uh, safe haven at unauthorized, but we wouldn't want to put you in that position where you have to associate with Teddy Spaghetti and <laughs> Big Bad Owen Benjamin. I hope you live a thousand years, Mersh. What kind of a name is that? Was your mom that much of a whore and your dad that much of a fag that they name you Mersh? <laughs> Jesus. What a fucking pussy. Mersh. <laughs> so all of those quicks, and you probably saw your quicks going up and up as you were uh, developing a, a sea of trolls and haters. They couldn't wait to see what you said about old Teddy Spaghetti and Big Bad Big Bear. Well, guess what? Now we'll see if you keep making videos for no money. I remember that was one of the big things that old Mersh was saying about me, was that as soon as I got demonetized, Big Bad Big Bear would start not doing videos because he only does it for money. That's called projection. Owen. So uh, this... What, what, was he right, though, by the way? The once uh, it started affecting money, did he kind of back off the Owen stuff or no? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, the... Interestingly, the, fa the the false flagging from Owen's perspective, it was actually, it was actually more of a. I, I don't think Owen Benjamin really realised the extent of what flagging means. I think it was a bit of a boomer moment on his part, because he was then he was then uh, told by his chat that yeah, if you f if you actually flag someone, they can't stream. They their channel gets a strike. This that and the other. And then Owen reverses the strike and he does a stream where he's like, okay, I didn't want that to happen. I didn't know that that's what happens when you uh when you flag someone, so yeah, I'll take away the strike. Uh, but Mersh, uh, as you're going to see now, the reason why Mersh goes on this tirade that you're about to hear is not necessarily because of the flagging. It's because Mer uh, sorry, Owen called Mersh's dead mother a whore. So you're going <laughs> to doing... You're going to hear a bit of a tirade here. Videos, because he only does it for money. That's called projection. Owen, up until this point, We were goofing on you. We were memeing you. We were joking about you. We were milking you for content and lulls. Take it from me now. Mark my words. You have never, ever, ever actually been attacked by us. As a matter of fact, our community has been under the strictest instructions not to engage in gay ops, not to flag people, not to attack people, not to get them to platformed, and not to go after anybody in your peripheral. As of today, I'm lifting those restrictions. I'm saying this, I do not condone gay ops. I don't want any gay ops from this community, but I will no longer be uh, banning people from our community simply for fucking with your channel, fucking with unauthorized, doing whatever they have to do. I will ban you from this community if you do anything illegal. But I will not, I will not any longer, uh, chastise can you, can or you discipline pause people yeah. who do uh, did you see that did you see the chat somebody threw up in there anthony it's, a, it's already went up a little bit it's like Mersh's mother's a dead whore <laughs> so <laughs> no, those... i to see that i've got to see that <laughs> go back just uh, a few seconds there it is. yeah <laughs> 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 just fucking with them <laughs> that's amazing yeah he he does not enjoy that one bit unethical sorry bud so there's Mersh, you know, uh, 
leader of his Terrorsbergs and um, instructing his fans essentially to to engage in whatever they need to do to, to get someone kicked off. And so, so, so that's him saying, um, uh, "I'm not encouraging you, but if you do it, I'm not going to get mad about it." Yeah, it's a wink, wink the, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly and, and the this, thing that he said he wouldn't do. By the way, on Revenge of the Sith. Right, and then this post is a former mod saying that there's more to it. So this post is about uh, specifically. It's got something to do with myself, actually. It's um, at this point, I was still kind of you know okay with that community, and and Mersh invited me to a channel on his Discord where there was a couple of of his moderators. I think Ghost House was one of them, executing a couple of uh, of others. And the general idea in this Discord channel was we are going to do everything we can to get Owen's money taken from him, get his channel taken away, deplatformed everything. And I started seeing, I started scrolling up and seeing what they were doing. And yeah, it was it was literally they were just doing anything they could to uh, to get Owen taken off. So I, I went into I, I DM Mersh and I, I said to him like, "What are you doing? This is like stupid. You've got to sort of stop doing this." And uh, his replies, I mean, this was years back, so I can't remember exactly, but it was something along the lines of, like, uh, what am I supposed to do, Porcelain? He's calling my uh, dead mama whore. He's, he's uh, fucking with me and all this kind of stuff. And um, so, uh, yeah, so essentially this this here is... Um, I think I know who it is, which one of the mods it is, but he's basically just confirming that, yeah, that did happen. So uh, was was Mersh aware of what was going on in the Discord, or was yeah, this he just set like it up? A... Yeah, he was orchestrating it. He was puppeteering the whole thing. He was, he was oh, okay, the one okay. instructing Ghost House, especially Ghost House was he was the main mod who was doing a lot. Of, he like he didn't give a shit. Like he was just he was ready so, to do whatever needed to be done. And Mersh was was like I said, he was he denies this to this day. By the way, he he vehemently has gone on his show time and time again to talk about how this didn't ex- uh, didn't exist. This didn't happen. I have since got about two of the mods that were in there to confirm to me that it did happen. But well, I, what I'm interested in is like it, 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 like this is what you saw. But I mean, yeah. is this shit that he was doing before this? Like, were there other, you know, like oh, oh fuck this guy, fuck this guy, fuck this guy. You guys go do this. Yeah, I mean, I I have no doubt. I mean, he's he's done things since. I mean, we're going to go on to um, a guy next, a guy called Pretty Dick Sixty Nine, <laughs> which is a great name. Uh, he ran a clip channel for uh, Mer- just funny Mersh clips and, and just, you know, clips of being critical about him. And there were clips sure. in general about sort of five minutes each, you know, very small snippets. Now, I don't know what you think about clip channels as, and, and fair use. I don't know whether or not you're... Uh... Uh, no, I, I don't care. I actually have a, um, a statement up on my um, YouTube. It's oh. like two or three years old now that says, uh, you can take anything you want from me. Uh, you can use it however you want. Mm. Clips, full videos, streams, I don't care. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same. Um, and especially when it comes to clip channels, I think that if it's if it's a clip that's sort of five minutes long that's specifically taken out of a stream uh, that's that's not, not that's got nothing to do with the overall stream's theme or any of that, it's just a clip that's taken out of context from that and you title it something to do with the criticism regarding what you're seeing... I think that, I mean, the Sargon case proves that that is transformative, first of all. And second of all, I think if you're flagging stuff like that, like a, you're not flagging it because they're taking your property away, because it's five minutes from a two-hour stream. It's it's a poor excuse when, you know, I've seen Ralph do it with, with T-Clips. And I guess on one point, it, you're entitled to, to do it, I suppose, and then let the law sort of land where it lands. But... I just I find that sort of behavior to be really uh I don't know it's it's something that uh I'm not a big well, I was always a fan of like early YouTube right um hmm. and early YouTube was everybody using everybody's shit so I mean that's the mentality I've always carried hmm. forward uh so I never cared you know and then uh YouTube started uh banning people uh, remember they started that whole new um Oh, what the fuck is it? Uh, it was like very specifically worded to say you're just putting other people's stuff up, so we're banning your channel. Um, and so when they put that statement out, that's when I put the thing up on, on my discussion, saying, oh, "No, okay. it's fine. You can you can use anything you want, anytime <laughs> you want, at any length you want." And I'm a hundred percent. I'm not going to fuck with you. Hmm. And uh, fuck YouTube if they give you shit for it. Yeah, I've encouraged people to rip my documentaries and host it anywhere. Like, I, I, there's there's people, there's channels out there with just all my stuff on it, and I I genuinely couldn't care. Like. Uh, well, and the truth too is, I mean, if you want your stuff to spread, yeah. people are going to realize, oh, this isn't Porcelain's channel or this isn't Jim's channel or whatever. It's just a re-upload. But now they're interested in your shit. I right. never saw it as a detriment. I've never seen it as a detriment. 
And and I, I guess uh, there is an argument to be made, uh, you know, what would I do if, for instance, a click channel existed that essentially tr just tried to ruin me uh, in the same way that this channel does with merch? And I guess, you know, I'll cross that path when I come to it. But I find that, yeah, if, if you're resorting to the, if you're resorting to lashing out at criticism by, you know, trying to erase it, um, I just think it pretty much says a lot about you. Um, so this is merch talking about it. The book report bear has been posting clips of my show nonstop for months. It's just dozens and dozens and dozens of clips of my show, right? Building a whole channel, getting this whole like, yeah, look at all my, oh shit, I'm getting some fucking, yeah, I'm getting some views, almost monetized. I took that away today. <laughs> I uh, submitted a copyright request. And for the record, I want it on record right now because I do have the email. Um, I did not submit a... Because it's like 27 videos. So to be fair, I could have nuked his channel. Well, he did nuke his channel. He did. <laughs> no, he doesn't right? That's anymore. all you need is three, right? Yeah, yeah. Um... Well, this to be fair to him, this is the uh, takedown requests, and essentially what what it means. Uh, I think it's a new thing. And uh, if you get, uh, you've, you, I think you've got nine days to either take down the the stuff that's been uh, flagged, or your channel disappears. And I think in this case, Pretty Dick refused to take anything down just out of principle. And so, well, yeah, I mean, but how does so... a guy go from talking about how desperate he is to make it, and how he wants to make money, and how he wants to make the internet a thing, and how you know, fuck these people that are fucking with me. Fuck Hoffman. You know, fuck Benjamin. Uh, to like, oh, look how happy it was. Pure glee on his face when he's talking about fucking with this guy's channel. Yeah, it, I'm just, I'm gonna take it all away, right? He even pantomimes it. Yeah, it was a sadistic kind of like evil villain. <laughs> it, it, it's that bitterness. I'm telling you, man. That that's the core of what this dude is. He really is just an embittered like 40 year old man at this point. I'll try and get through this a bit quicker. So uh, I'm very much aware that <laughs> you've been here a while already. Uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm sorry if I'm rambling on. No, no, I no, put no, in a takedown request fine. today, yeah. but YouTube has this system now where you don't have to hit them with a strike. You can give them seven days. <laughs> so that's my thing. I gave him the, the, the gentle, the, I merch the merciful. So I was merciful because there's two options. You can do the immediate takedown, which will result in strikes unless they can revert them and is find that, them in court um, and blah, blah. Is that actually, I've never actually taken the shit down. So is that actually true? Like you can give them a set amount of time? I thought it was like you file the thing and then YouTube tells them you've got like, what, is it a week or two weeks? And that's it. I've no idea. Same as you, I, I'm, I'm taking his word for it at this point. But uh, yeah, from what he says, apparently you you uh, you have, you, you give them like, like I said, nine days for them to sort of respond to it and that usually means that they've got to sort of take it down or lose their channel i think actually it's, it's take it down or you get a strike and so if he does it enough times and uh pretty dick doesn't take them down then obviously the strikes are going to mount up and he's going to lose his channel anyway which is what happened but again it's like you said it's it's the glee it's the uh self-satisfaction that he's got <laughs> from from doing this and i'm sure pretty dick doesn't give a shit he's created a new channel he, he he's completely fine he's just going to do the same thing again but well yeah. it's that role reversal it's that you know i see myself as the underdog but now i've got that modicum that moderate amount of power that kids in the hall skit you know i've got drunk with a moderate amount of power and now i'm going to teach you a lesson it is that role reversal like you said it's it's the idea that you know back in the old days of revenge of the sis like they were the small guys fucking with their, the big ones and now that they've got their own trolls the like you said it's a complete 180 a complete role reversal and it's very interesting to see what you do when you're actually at that in in that position and for mersh i mean it's just bringing out all of his worst traits then there's the other one where you actually it... i'll fast forward for this because it's just more of him Sort of... That's cigarette shit. So Does I'm... he do that in every show, by the yeah, way? He constantly, he just chain smokes through every show, and it's always the most effeminate, like it, just the way he holds it, and the I don't know what it is. There's something really I can't even describe it, but it really grates. It's it's so effeminate the way he does it, and then like I don't know, <laughs> I can't. Ex I, I really can't explain how disgusted it makes me feel. Being it's merciful. Like, yeah, look at it. It's like a nice 
five to ten seconds, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the Matt Christian, you, you, you know Matt Christiansen, the... Uh... He's kind of like a Tim Pool type, a uh, bit centrist. Um, uh, maybe a bit. I'm not uh, like yes. the stuff. You'd be surprised. The stuff I watch on YouTube, aside from mm. like documentary stuff, is mostly just like video game and anime shit. I stay away from yeah. a lot of the politics and a lot of the other shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm not tremendously clued into it. I only know Matt Christensen from this particular uh, encounter that he had with Mersh. So essentially, uh, Matt Christensen is a kind of like, like I said, like a, a Tim Paul type. He's uh, very sort of centrist, probably with some right leanings, and he's very much in the vein of like anti censorship and anti big tech and all that kind of stuff. And uh, pro, very pro free speech, from what I can tell. Sure. So okay. Mersh, um, this is this is during Mersh's purity spiral uh, period, where he's essentially, you know, oh, if you're not defending Andrew Anglin and. Uh, Chris Cantwell, then you're not really pro free speech. Like he's essentially like, oh, you have to platform, uh, you know, the, the the most extreme people in order to to tick my box of uh, of being a real free speech defender. And well, so, isn't that ironic? Considering you told me that he's banning wignats for doing end towers in his chat now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's amazing just how much uh, of Mersh's history is projection and double standards it, it's um definitely a theme but so matt so mersh they, they talk about matt christiansen on revenge of the cis mersh and royce do and in the clip that you'll see mersh starts just railing off about how matt christiansen is a big phony just just provoking him for no reason there's no history between the two mersh is just railing off about matt christiansen calling him you know saying he's not pro free speech in fact i'll just play the clip and let you see for yourself sure. You and your little beanie-wearing, skateboarding, Hapa friend, Tim Pool, and all your other little gatekeeper, faggot-ass friends like Ford Fisher. I know, right, that you're not used to uh, them enforcing the rules for you guys. I know. You guys just coast to the front of the line. And usually, right, you, it's fine because you're like, oh, no, they're just getting Nazis, dude. They're just getting the really fringe, really dangerous people off this platform. Well, now, dickheads, uh, they're using all these precedents they set to come after you. It sucks. I know. Trust me. I know it sucks. But this is why you should have fucking stood up for everybody. And you should have been defending everyone's right to free speech. Not every, not the Matt Christiansons and the Tim Pools and the Ford Fishers of the world, but the fucking Anglins and the Cantwells and the Spencers and all those other people who, by the way, I can't stand either. I just named three people who are human garbage. But when they were getting kicked off the internet, I was uncomfortable with it. While you and your fucking skateboarding pals were all like, but not me, though. I'm a journalist. There's literally no difference, right, between people like this and people like Keemstar. It's all the same bullshit. Well, people are saying Matt has consistently defended everyone's free speech. Matt has defended those people's. No, he hasn't. No, he I'm hasn't. No, he 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 hasn't. Look no, at he the, hasn't. Go he right now. It. Since you the, since you. <laughs> Look at the look at the look Royce is giving him. He just he just stares at him. <laughs> People are saying you're completely wrong, and he just stares at him. <laughs> <laughs> that, just the petulant fingers in the ears. No, he hasn't. No, he I just no 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 no. Right? Yeah, I can't it's hear like you. An old marriage, isn't it? It's just like they're they're just at the end of their tether with each other and. <laughs> Oh, this a look is priceless. For the one counter signaling, you go find me the clip of Matt Christensen defending Christopher Cantwell or Andrew Anglin. You go get it then. Since you're the one asserting that this exists, you go find it. Because it never fucking happened. Stop. Stop it. Just because he says, I defend free speech. I want a clip of him defending one of the three people I named specifically. Go get it. Or shut the fuck up, because I'm sick of people going, well, he, I seem to recall a time when he did it. Go get a clip, or it didn't happen. This man has never defended free speech, unless it's for his gatekeeping pals. Okay, so this, as you can see, Matt Christiansen's response to the video, and he says, ridiculous, ridiculous to argue against me for what I haven't said. Good point. You have to presume I would not defend the rights of Anglin or Cantwell, which, of course, I would. 
if you're an honest person, invite me on your show to discuss, and gives him the uh, the thing. And uh, Royce runs the Revenge of the Sis account, so obviously he's, you know... The That's why he's not screaming one. at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he sets up an interview, um, and they uh, they get on uh, to talking about Mersh's disagreements in uh, a couple of seconds. Actually sub to your channel. So you've um, watched my stuff, but you've never seen me defend free speech. No, 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 no I never said you Nobody said that. that. that is no, 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 no. From Monday, but I've never... Not, this no, man my, has never defended free speech. That was the claim. In, 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 it, in the context that you've never done it in, a, in, in any context where there's any penalties or any You've been uh, linked to dozens of clips on Twitter and in the comments of your own stream. What? What are you talking about? I, I just this last week. No, no, no. I've well, defended Red be, Ice. To, I've defended to, Nick Fuentes and the Groypers. Well, the Groypers thing is because that's that's a fashionable thing. Everyone's defending it's the Groypers. Defend There's seventy year old ladies yeah, of defending. Course it is. There's so, seventy year old ladies defending the Groypers right now. So that's not. Who do I? Okay, so it's only the people. First of all, I'm a gatekeeper, but I have to check all your boxes before I. No, count. no, you don't so have to like do game. anything. Whoa, whoa, you don't you, have to do anything. But I also. What does it matter? What does it matter? What does it matter? What does it matter? The that was a fucking kill shot. That yeah, I knew you'd get on that. Yeah, exactly. That was a fucking kill shot right at. Look at his face too. Look at Mercia's face. He knows it. He fucking knows it. Yeah, it's 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 exactly right. You're you're calling me a gatekeeper at the, at the same time. You're listing people that I have to provide evidence that I've defended in order for me to be pro free, free speech. Who's gatekeeping who? It's, again, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I, I keep saying projection. It's going to come up a number of times throughout this, but. Once again, it's Mersh. Uh... And Rice looks animated just because Mersh has now dragged him into this. Oh, yeah. I, I almost feel bad for Royce in this because I think deep down he knows that it's a losing position, but he's probably got to... He probably knows because he's living with Mersh at this particular point as well. So if Royce doesn't go to bat for him as well, that's going to be a, a huge thing after the show. I, I just like how it's paused. Matt's got a smile because it's a gotcha. Royce looks pissed because he got dragged into it, and Mersh has got that look like I fucked up. <laughs> it's perfect trifecta. To do anything, I, but I what also is, what does it matter? What does it matter? What does it matter? What does it matter? The box. What does it matter? What we think? I'm just out of curiosity because, because you're worried you're about our boxes of being, being checked, unprincipled. But... Meanwhile, you totally lack principle. Okay, how do I? How do we lack principle? Well, first of all, you say that I don't stand up for free speech. No, no, I never Based said on... you don't. I said you don't stand up for free speech when it's uncomfortable, when Which it's you not get to fashionable. Define, I can never it's fulfill. easy. Of course, everybody's like, no, I like free speech. Way, Everyone I says that. Andrew England. I have Sorry, defended Cantwell. I have defended Richard Spencer. I check all your boxes. I, but you I, want I, me to go through that... the thousands of hours I have posted of Internet content and find you one exact clip to satisfy your weird. No, no yeah, because I, I'm not. We do, we do 30 hours of content a week. We do 30 hours of content a week okay. if somebody said mersh has never done uh, can you thing a do you know if uh, what i don't know a bunch about matt christensen but is that true did he has he talked about those three people before yeah um because that that's fucking that's fucking devastating then in fact right like um he he mentioned this just a few seconds ago that um he said you've been given links in your in your twitter on your twitter feed all week and you've been given links on your facebook all week and that was essentially matt christensen fans they just bombarded the Revenge of the Sis social media feeds with clips of Matt defending the exact people Mersh and Royce were talking about, but neither of them seemed to pay attention to it. So he defended all three, and then and then sub. So, then he's talking about Red Ice and Fuentes and everybody else. Yeah, he's, uh, but again, it's it's Mersh. Like the, the the thing is, Mersh could get out of this right now. He could just say to Matt, "Look, I made a mistake. If you defended those people." I fucked up. Yeah, I fucked up, and and it's over. But it just keeps digging because he doesn't. He's too proud. Is that why? Is that why Christensen looks so relaxed in this? Oh, like yeah. he looks very relaxed and happy. Like yeah. he knows that he's not going to get touched on any of this. Well, I think, um, I think he realizes very quickly in that he's dealing with stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> I think he prepared himself for something a little bit more substantial. I think. The minute that you said there that you got the kill shot in, I think right then he realized, I've done my job. I, I'm, I'm here. I've arrived. Like, the rest of this stream is meaningless. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think he's, he's certainly just perched and, and made himself comfortable. 
A or thing B. I'd go to my Discord, reach out to some people. I'd say, it was around this time. Well, find me a clip. Feet. Bam, bang, boom. <laughs> you waited until today, right? Until it we was were going. Two days ago. No, no, no. But I didn't start getting tagged in tweets until today, right? We had an hour until wait the show minute, time. Wait a minute. Stop, stop. He, they just pretended they didn't know what he was talking about, but now he can specifically cite when he started getting tagged. So he did see those clips before the show. He just admitted this. Yeah. <laughs> but his excuse is that he was too busy preparing for the show to check whether or not what the show was going to be about is actually worth anything. I mean, it seems to me that my show prep, the most important part of my show prep is... Seeing these tweets that tell me that I'm wrong, I should probably check those first. Right, but I like how he tried to do it very subtly. Like, what, what do you mean? What are you talking about? You, We got tweeted about this. Well, no, I only got tagged today. Oh, so you did see them. What a fucking piece of shit, man. Like I said there, if he just admitted it, this would all be over. But he keeps wriggling and trying to bury himself further. You'll see something incredible in a moment. They're essentially, just look at them both, they're, they're waiting for an opening, they're waiting for a win, they're waiting for something in this conversation that they can hang their hat on and just, just focus in on that, and it's going to happen, so we'll keep going. Oh. And oh, I start okay. getting I'm entire two-hour episodes sent to me with no, no timestamps going, your... oh, I did this we, one we, time. We can go through every definitive statement you made that is 100% unsubstantiated and false, not the least of which is that I failed to defend free speech when I do it on a weekly basis. It takes two seconds of clicking through my channel. Last I've time, when was the last the time you had a, a, a risky oh, guest 50 on? people I've defended from deplatforming or attempted deplatforming and if you guys can't check every box of everyone i've defended you're not a free speech warrior like me you're not sufficiently fair you want to do this i mean that, i mean hold on I mean, that, that's really? that, but that's fair matt but also <laughs> uh, but that that's a fair comment i will say no I'll, I'll admit that's a fair comment the difference is i'm not going to spurg out about it on twitter all morning when i said we'll talk oh, to you I at five spurg out. so you get to call me a slow fag yes, yes you get you get to spend a half hour talking unsubstantiated yes. shit about me and if i respond on twitter oh spurg no 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 okay, no dude. no but we, we but but we, we're allowed no you're allowed to spurg out on twitter but my point is we talked and i was like hey we'll have you on the show we'll deal with it on the show you know what you did you went online and then, so and then to get your read fans my, riled read my up tweet that's spurging out read and then one tweet that's spurging out and then i even i I even saw the, the tweet fest going on and I interjected today and I was like, all right, look, everybody cool out. We're going to have them all. No, We're going to have a conversation. You and then you start yelling at all you want, but if anyone yeah. Yeah, says, on my show, yeah, I can. You, I can say whatever I want. Out. They're way off base. This is but, a joke. You guys don't we, live up to your own standards. And that's why you got ripped by your own audience. Yeah, that's the point. And if You're, you said, hey, the find me an instance where you did it, I could actually come up with the Why clips. Why don't you ask me about what I do stand for instead of putting words in my mouth? How about because that? Because what you stand for doesn't matter if you're not actually making any waves with it. If you're I just having a milquetoast conversation. Are you, are you kidding me? I've there watched your show. No, 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 no. no. I've watched your show. Thing? Your show is like watching in and and watching two bank tellers on a lunch break having a polite conversation. it's more successful than yours. And by the way, that's not true. There it is. There it is. But there's we got the under dick, your skin. There's the dick measuring content. But we got under your skin. Here it comes. I'm I'm we got under your skin, Hold on. Though. The Montana Set BBC the is going to whip it Look, out for us. You're the one who had to wait an hour while you were shadow boxing off of Skype <laughs> yeah. getting ready to come on here. I, come on, man. You guys are not Look how big, <laughs> look how big we are. Look, Did you shadow look box? how big we are. Did you shadow box, man? Yeah. <laughs> I, need to, I need to picture so, that in my mind. This is... It's clear that you guys don't stand on principle. That's fine. You don't have to. Yeah, you're right. I left... Oh, yeah, sorry. So yeah. um, that that was the moment they're jumping on, but I, I don't even feel like that's a win for them. Like, he's saying, oh, your show isn't making enough waves, and his response is, it's way more successful. It is making waves. So what are they getting upset about? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I wasn't saying that as a kind of like, as if uh, they were right. I, they were completely wrong about that. Oh, because... no, I was expecting like they had something like, oh, they're going to pounce. He's going to misspeak or something and they're going to nail his ass. Yeah, it's, it's that just was they're it, so dumb that they pin their heart on something that was retarded from the outset. Because the whole reason Matt said that in retaliation is because Mersh, <laughs> before that, Mersh said, he, he, as, a, as a kind of like as a diss, he said that you, you, you're not making any waves. You're not making waves. Like, it only matters if you're defending speech, if you're making waves about it. And Matt Christensen, he's got 300,000 subscribers. I'm sure he's making a lot more waves than Merchant <laughs> Royce. So he's got every right to respond with that. But as you saw there, you had two bearded clowns above him go completely nuts over it.
Yeah, I just don't get it. I don't understand why Mersh picked this fight, I guess. It's, this is, seems really fucking weird to me. He was wrong on everything on it. On principle, after talking to their leadership and not being satisfied that they were sufficiently pro-free speech. You guys are still on there. Should I call you insufficiently principled for sticking with a platform <laughs> that doesn't value free speech? Out of, out of curiosity, and I really don't know, and I don't, and I don't know this, so this isn't me trying to get to gotcha, but are you still monetized on YouTube? Uh, technically, yes. Although they do you run ads? Do you run ads on your YouTube? It's, it's just, I'm just yeah. curious. If okay, so allowed, so you so allowed. so but okay. But here's my point, though. You got off of Patreon. We're not monetized on YouTube. You are. See what you I mean? Like this back if you're accepting that corporate globalist money that's, from Google yeah, that, that, you, while they're this oppressing the these that's speech. That's not the standard I'm holding. You're accepting you. their I think blood you can money, pro free speech, and still be on Patreon. But My standard is the, you brought up. I'm saying you brought up Patreon is insane. Yeah. But you brought it up Nobody though. can beat it as an as an mm. exercise, as a demonstration about why your standard doesn't work. No, you why brought it up, and then he called you out for the Google thing, and then you backed off the original point. Yeah, I mean, how can, how, can, how can you be? How can you be? Is, no, I know your point. Your point is whatever was whatever pseudo intellectual stuff you want to say. If I, I get were to it. try to hold you mm. to the weird purity standards that you're holding me, you fail. You're in the same boat as yeah. me, as someone who's not enough of a defender. You didn't make all the right moves that I say you should have made, so you don't count. But, but also, everyone else is a gatekeeper. No, no, but that's that's me. not that's not the point I made. I here's the thing too, because you're you're acting like again, like we've been spurging out on Matt Christensen. We did you one did. segment on you, and I shared hour. my opinion of you. My opinion of you is that yeah, you are pro free speech. Oh, that's a weird cut there, but yeah, the the great point that. I, I, that Matt made again, obviously the Patreon point. That's um, you know, I yeah, because this was, this would have been uh, around the time that they were starting to deplatform people, right, on Patreon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was a big, yeah. big thing. Yeah. Yeah, because Sargon got booted. Did yeah, Sargon got booted? I think. Uh, yes, I mean, that, I've, that I've been booted. Star. Everybody's been yeah. fucking booted. Yeah. I mean, he's got a he, yeah. And this was just this was a terrible showing for them. Oh, it's awful. And um, so he make he makes the Patreon point. It's a good point to make. Then their rebuttal is: Are you still on? Go you still go? You know, uh, do you still get ad revenue on Google? Obviously, he said he does. But Matt's point was: Matt's point was that yeah, you can be pro free speech and be on Patreon, but you're, you know, you're essentially by by still being on Patreon, you're at the same level as me. So you stand, you don't meet your, you don't meet your own standards. So yeah, that, if you have an outfit kill, you just want to see these people just completely not really lose their mind over Matt Christians, and it's one of one of the best streams that uh, that's out there for them. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. Like, really, I, I really do not know uh, shit about Matt Christensen, but that was a really terrible showing for fucking Royce and Mersh. <laughs> so here's some, uh, here's some comments from their own listeners. It's sad when the grown man can't admit it's wrong. Uh, fantastic illustration of ROTC speaking flippantly about a topic, then constantly moving the goalpost. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. Cringe, guys. You're arguing the point to argue the point. Uh, Mersh trash Matt for no reason, like some cranky East Coast boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, guys, you really embarrass yourself. Pure N-word cringe. <laughs> There's one person spurging here. It's Mersh. All of a sudden, Mersh is obsessed with subscriber counts. The sudden growth of ROTC is giving him a big head. Oh, are uh, they picking up on that early? Oh, yeah, big, <laughs> yeah. big time. Again, with the projection, he's now, uh, because he's kind of made it in his own mind, uh, he likes to dunk on someone. People like Jesse, pot awful. He likes to call himself big dick daddy <laughs> that's not a joke that's not a joke that's a name he gives to himself whenever he talks about pod awful because you know in his mind he's a lot bigger than him he has a bigger imprint i thought i thought i thought jesse didn't he get fucking banned off youtube yeah constantly he's been banned a bunch of times yeah i think he's got like a he's got an account on there as a kind of like dumping ground but well yeah but i mean how is he gonna get a hundred thousand subs or some shit if he gets banned you know what i mean like yeah. that's so weird <laughs> i don't think that matters for much to be honest yeah. Okay, this is a good section. I think you're going to like this one. E-begging. Jesus, I feel like that's been the whole last 30 minutes, to be honest with you. <laughs> All right, so Mersh retweeting his own tweet, talking about... Always um, a good start. <laughs> so this has been an issue for a while. His dodgy hard drive or his mixing desk. He, for years, I'm not joking, for years, he, he has posted about this over and over and over again with the same PayPal link talking about how he's saving money to get a mixing desk or he's saving money to get a new hard drive or whatever. So here it is again, just essentially begging people to buy him equipment. Now, he at the time, he's staying at Royce's, right? Is he even paying rent? I can't imagine he is. They've, they've both got a pool of money that you know for the show, for the business, essentially, that they, they both contribute towards. So I'm pretty sure 
that's uh so he's got a large chunk of change then is what i'm saying yeah to, to buy his mixing desk and whatever the fuck he needs 100 percent. yeah it's, it's yeah. just that he spends the major- overwhelming majority on it um, on alcohol on uber eats on uh, <laughs> cigarettes and yeah he, he's just uh really bad with his money and obviously <laughs> a lot of it is going now into the bmw so um yeah i just think he's really bad with his with his money to be honest with his financing yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so there's uh, more sort of uh, if you enjoy Nightwave and like to keep the machine growing as I continue to terrorize internet bad guys <laughs> please consider holy shit here. this guy <laughs> and I, again I don't mind people making money off the internet at all if it's associated with your product if it's associated with content if it's a, no no know, it's not it's not the I mean the, the crafting is funny uh, especially the suicide baiting shit right like that's yeah. just unreal and the i drove my car into a wall by me another um but no it's just the way he phrases shit it, it just makes me it's just very cringy <laughs> the machine growing as i terrorize them this is um i don't know what that i don't know why i've put that in there um this was a t no 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 back up to that one that one is that's that one is a fucking one that should be focused on that's him right yeah yeah and they Daylight fading, yet here you are watching me rise. <laughs> God, yeah, that is actually <laughs> rolling. Look at the up. hubris! Holy cow! Rolling you fucking in. plebs working your menial jobs. Look at me, I'm a success. Go wash a toilet. You're beneath me. Holy shit, dude! <laughs> I don't know why I was about to skip past that. That's amazing. That, that one's fucking amazing. Yeah, that, that's a highlight there if I've ever seen one. That's the, well. That, that is the disdain he has for his audience. I'm rolling in donations. All you suckers are working menial jobs to, to afford me this lifestyle. Keep doing it. Keep giving me money. Yeah, he's got a. He really has an ego, doesn't he? Oh yeah. I, I mean, poo poo pee pee. Isn't that? I thought that was like a Nick, Nick Fuentes thing. It is. It's like a, gro- a groper thing. Yeah. Yeah. So he's just stealing a groper bit and then putting it on a t-shirt, and then this is him boasting about the t-shirt sales he's making ah, that comment I, I can't get that comment out of my head especially after uh he got all up on uh matt christensen's ass about oh you think you're a big shot now <laughs> and then he's talking to his audience like pay me money you fucking toilet scrubber <laughs> wow <laughs> it's like you said just pure hubris all right you're gonna get a couple of clips here of shameless really shameless just like panhandling that's the only way i can describe it <laughs> So if you guys want to, I don't know, help me make a couple few bucks. So why don't we uh, kick in a couple tree bucks for your boy before you go over to Virgie. And then we can give that fucking hyena the scraps. What do you say, kids? Please, just don't make me go back to the clubs. And don't ever make me be in a position where I got to go stay at an ex-girlfriend's house or something. And hear her like fucking her new boyfriend through the walls and shit. You know what I mean? Like, please, please don't... pause this. Please, did he just take out a giant glass bottle of high end liquor as he tells yeah. the people working menial jobs to pay him on his fucking live stream? <laughs> Why doesn't he dress up as a Monopoly man and just flip them off with a PayPal link on his screen? <laughs> like it's it's cartoonish. <laughs> I don't want to go back to work like you fucking people. Click, click. Here's my giant fucking crystal goblet. <laughs> what a cunt. <laughs> like a kick of the balls, right? Like, <laughs> that's amazing. I didn't notice that goblet. <laughs> a giant crystal fucking uh, <laughs> giant crystal container. I gotta go. Make me go back to the clubs. And don't ever make me be in a position where I got to go stay at an ex-girlfriend's house or something. And hear her, like, fucking her new boyfriend through the walls and shit, you know? It's like a decanter. It's so... I love it. It's great. But I mean, like, please don't, God, please don't let me get in that position ever again. And as always, if you'd like to support the program directly, if you got some money burning a hole in your pocket, and judging from how wonderful the economy is right now, uh, I know inflation's going on, but that means you're going to have less things on Thanksgiving, which means you're saving money, which means you should give me that money. It's been a slow week. 
for me. So if you if you've been like, yeah, I don't know if I feel like donating, maybe I will. Tonight's the night, kids. If you want to donate, because uh, I made fuck. Well, I did. I took Monday off because it was Memorial Day. I made fuck all on Tuesday. I made fuck all on Wednesday, and then last night I took off because <laughs> I just. It's actually working out great. Uh, I'm remonetized on YouTube. Uh, I'm I make thousands of dollars a month. Um, uh, I, I have an entire two bedroom apartment all to myself. I drive a BMW. Uh, it's a little older, but it's <laughs> a nice a car. car. Very nice car. Very great drive. Um, I have clout now. I go places. People buy t shirts with my face on them. Did you hear Can, that? Is, he be, is he being sarcastic? Or is this no, like. No, I promise you. I would is tell this, you this he is. is <laughs> older, but it's a nice car. Very nice car. Very great drive. Um. <laughs> I have clout now. Oh, I, I go that. places. I, People buy T-shirts with my face on them. Uh, we meet fans. Fans enjoy meeting me. They buy me drinks. They show up. They buy tickets to shows. They donate via Super Chat. Honestly, Chattington, it's working out fucking great. For, like, What is this? Oh, so this is his Amazon wish list that he gives to his fans to buy him shit. And as you can see, there's a lot of BMW-related <laughs> items in it. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, Let me you... read through this. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're not kidding. Well, look at the the the. the uh, it says Nightwave, Nightwave at the top. A list of desired items for upgrading Nightwave, but it's all B and W shit. Uh, this is break disc so, rotors. Uh, I, I guess I don't get this right. Like, uh, and, uh, I'm a whore like any other. I get super chats yeah. and sell <laughs> merchandise, but um. He's claiming, like, I, I know his claim is bullshit. Everybody does. But he claimed he made 20000 a month. And then, you know, um, his merchandise probably brings in money, right? And then PayPal and coffee and all that shit. And he's got an Amazon wish list. But that comment, man, that comment, I can't get over that. <laughs> that go back to your working your menial job while I drink out of my crystal goblet. <laughs> Do you know who I am? I'm Mersh. I've got people wear on. shirts with my fucking face on them. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's a parody of a of like what you imagine, like an exaggerated character of a fucking. It is. It's cartoonish. It's so cartoonish. <laughs> it's like a really badly written villain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> it's pretty much. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Stuff. Yeah. So I've decided. I know everybody keeps telling me not to. I don't care. I don't listen to people very well. I'm going to look at the BMW tomorrow. I'm going full. I'm going full. Can you, can, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to keep making you <laughs> no, pause yeah. it. Please do. But look at the fucking despair on Rice's face. He's like, he knows. <laughs> he fucking knows this man can't manage his money. And look at that. He's never going to leave my house. That's that one. That's that fucking look on his face. Uh, he said he's getting an apartment. Now he's buying a BMW. <laughs> I'm it, so fucked. He's he's thinking in his head like Mersh, isn't that money going towards you moving out? Yeah, Mersh, Mersh, you were telling me you're getting the fuck out of here. It's been ten years, Mersh. <laughs> well, maybe I he... haven't fucked my wife in ten years. Get off my couch. <laughs> well, maybe he's more excited thinking that the BMW was him moving out. Oh, it's his new Mercury. That's <laughs> <laughs> like somebody gets up there contemplating killing someone. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. He's letting, it he's letting it out. I'm going full yuppie, Royce. What are you doing? The only mm. problem I see with those cars is is how how expensive German cars are to repair. Absolutely. Like, um, I had an Audi, for example, and that thing was a fucking bitch. Like every time a part broke, it was like a thousand dollars just to repair it. I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. but hear me out on this. Mm -hmm. What if you just don't break the car? <laughs> and uh, as we see, great timing. Last week, I brought my car to tire choice for an alignment, rotation, oil change, and to check a slow tire leak. My tire's still leaking, and now I have to check my engine light still on. I've never had to check the engine light. Yada, yada, yada. This is insane. So that, that <laughs> what, was immediately what, after buying the car. What year was the BMW? Does he ever specifically say? Um, I think it was a 2008. I think I think Red Bar actually found out the exact thing that he bought, and it was um, four thousand dollars and uh, oh, oh, that's hundred and thirty thousand oh, yeah. miles on the clock. Oh, 
oh really <laughs> yeah all the tires were fucked the minute that he got he had to replace all four tires immediately and as you can see engine misfire here you had to take i it mean in don't again. don't you think like a a person with common sense like unless you're like like a big car guy and you're, you're taking this on as like a fucking project because it's fun for you mm. but like don't you think a person would think okay uh, what do i know about a bmw really expensive car well what do i know about this bmw they're going to sell it to me for four thousand dollars something there's something maybe wrong here <laughs> it's like if somebody said hey do you want to buy this bugatti for uh, a thousand hey you interested in my fucking uh a ferrari it's only 200 bucks <laughs> in his head though it was um he's always wanted a bmw and i think for him the idea of a bmw is it's him forcing himself to realize that like i've arrived now i'm no longer oh. the homeless uh, it's so server. ghetto it, it's so ghetto rich though it's like it, when you make it you buy the bmw right you're driving that 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 bitcoin lambo but you're not buying the used one that's going to explode on you dude <laughs> like yo what the fuck are you doing it's, it's the equivalent of like let's say you're fat all all your life and then you finally summon the willpower to get into shape and you look good and you feel good about it and then the first thing you do is you, you marry a 45 year old hooker who's had the best days a while past it, but she looked good back in the day. Like, that's it's the equivalent of that. Oh, no, I'd say it's the equivalent of um, you're morbidly obese, like 500 pounds, and you just started your diet, and you've lost two pounds, and you decide that's when you're going to buy a new wardrobe. <laughs> that's what he did. <laughs> yeah, that's like right. better. Yeah, that's what he's got and done. <laughs> just going to decline getting uh, the free tow back. Uh, so, yeah, just more... Problems. It's just nothing but fucking never ended car trouble. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, the tire pressure monitoring system reset. Oh, this is great. I forgot about this. So, Zen Rhino, he is one of Mersh's sort of biggest pay pigs. He donates constantly. Every second Super Chat is Zen Rhino. And the guy, from what I can tell, he doesn't have a job. And he seems... <laughs> He seems kind of mentally challenged at the same time, so <laughs> it's a real like. And he's about forty-eight years old or something. Like, not he, he seems like he should probably not be involved in any of this sort of environment. So this post here isn't Zen Rhino. This post is one of Jesse's fans <laughs> pretending to be him. Yeah, he, and so he's reviewing. He's basically reviewing one of the Google reviews of the mechanics that Mersh took his car to. <laughs> Oh, I bet I bet it's the same fucking garage he keeps taking the car back to and they're like, dude, what do you mean the night wave fam is after us? <laughs> so uh, and this is actually things that were wrong with the car as well. So essentially <laughs> Mersh just lashes out at Zen Rhino thinking that it was really him. <laughs> he's, like, hey, Zen... he's gotta go back to the garage. Yeah, he's like, Hey Zen Rhino, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you stupid little impulsive thing you did. <laughs> You fucked me, you asshole! <laughs> <laughs> and um, he doesn't apologize. He's still, t he's still going on about Zen Rhino here. <laughs> oh, that's great! That is fucking amazing. Zen Rhino, dude, he's been a fucking moron and a liability for years, and I've put up with it because I feel bad for the guy. <laughs> but he never fucking listens. And in Zen Rhino has no idea about any of this at the time. <laughs> I'm done with this fucking guy. And then. Uh, Do you there's more of it, but I just thought that was a nice little side. That was kind of a funny thing. That that was actually a really well done troll. I thought it was going to be um, one of like Jesse's, like they, you know, he's getting all his car repairs done, so they start making fake reviews to piss off the mechanics, so they give they give Mersh shit when he shows up. <laughs> I didn't expect Mersh to then blow his top and think that was really the guy, <laughs> chase away one of his donators. Yeah, that would be that would be funny as well. And they just start overcharging him, and or they just refuse his business. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, your shit's not fixed, asshole. Do you know why I enjoy my drive there? Because I'm rocking a fucking Beamer, dude. I look good driving it. Stereo's great. Sunroof. Leather. My buddy Eric, who was helping us, uh, mostly Royce's friend, but he's my friend too, Eric, uh, was helping me out with the bulbs. And he goes, I got some bad news, bro. Uh, whoever had this car decided to uh, jerry-rig these headlights so that they are LED instead of the regular halogen. But rather than 
just buy LED headlights like a not poor person. This person decided to splice wires and put a conversion kit in, and it was a whole thing. So we had to jerry-rig it back to being a regular halogen bulb. <laughs> Pop the sunroof closed. Wait, how do you not notice that when you're buying it? <laughs> no, yeah. Right? Like, you're going to, my buddy had to look into it because you didn't notice it. Well, he, he bought it blind. He he didn't bring. Oh, wait, he didn't even, he didn't even go to, I thought he went to a lot or something. I meant like he went in blind as in like, he didn't have anyone there with him. Who oh, no, no. I, but yes, you should inspect, you should inspect the fucking car. You know what I mean? Like you should physically inspect the thing. Look around a little bit. Make sure it's not yeah. you know, going to explode on you. <laughs> go to roll up the windows. Windows don't roll up. <laughs> well, that's strange. <laughs> uh, I'm like, well, that sucks. Whatever. So I, I run into the liquor store, run out, I get home. I've spent the entire night since dinner sitting in there, sitting in the driveway, trying to fix this window. Um, I got all the other windows to go up <laughs> using their corresponding window buttons, uh, but my driver's side uh, control module it seems, is taking a shit. It's not a fuse, because this is why I bought the fuse box. This is why I bought an amp, oh, you know, okay. a voltage this is, tester. This is much better. You know, I brought up the BMW as, like, just a passing joke when I was making fun of him about the you're on a list thing. Mm. And his response was, oh, uh, he said something like, the trolls are just exaggerating. That's not a big deal. But I've watched now, what is this, 10 clips of him talking about every piece of this fucking car falling apart and him needing to replace it? Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's like everything. It's the fucking tire pressure, uh, computer system, the fucking uh, halogen light, halogen lights. The windows don't work. The spark plugs are fucked. The belt's not doing what it needs to do. But it was so predictable. Everybody was telling him this, and and we weren't telling him as a kind of like a, a wishful thinking troll or anything. It was this is the reality that you're going to be facing, and he just slept walked into it like as if as if he's special and that it's not going to it's not going to happen to me <laughs> but it, well, even happened. royce looked at him was like what are you doing right like he gave him that look and he's like it's a mistake it's just really dumb and especially for somebody who makes the living in in this particular fashion in a sense where this could be taken away from him at any any point and oh yeah this shit this shit fades so quick i mean yeah when you're when you're doing the stuff online to make money you got like five years tops if you're really good, right. and that's pretty much done. So if you save up and you get what you need, great. Uh, if you're stupid, you're fucked. Yeah, so, I mean, to, to be spaffing it all on, on the wall for a BMW that is only depreciating in value by the second, and and that, like, okay, you may think it looks cool now, but it's right now it's, what, 14 years old or something? And it's only going to get older, it's only going to look shitter. And you... Yeah, didn't he say? Didn't he say he wanted a house? Like he was going to save up and get a house? Like that's that's four grand could have gone to a down payment, right? Yeah, absolutely. But again, it's like I'm pretty sure that's probably why Royce had that frown. Is is that he knew? He probably knew. He was like, well, I mean, is that your priority right now? That that's that's wild, man. I didn't know uh, the BMW was that much of a shit show. I knew it was like an old clunker that had issues. Well, we're only halfway through the clips. There's more. Oh, I know. I, I, yeah, if you got the time, I got the time. This is fucking fascinating to me. <laughs> I really didn't expect it to be this. I, I thought, oh, you know, you show up and we'll we'll hit a few highlights. Like, I didn't know the suicide baiting shit, that one comment about being better than you. <laughs> oh, my God. it's It really is good. This is, this is good. This is going to be fun to watch when you do this. Because this is why I bought the fuse box. This is why I bought an amp, te you know, a voltage tester, because that's a quick fix, you know? Pop in, uh, doom. Uh, switched out the fuse, even though it didn't seem to be a f at fault. Still switched out the fuse. Nada. T it, like, we're already beyond the point where even if, even if my Beamer exploded tomorrow, like, people would make fun of me and be like, I told you not to get a shitty car. <laughs> the last year has been the the most pleasant driving trips I've ever had in my life. It has been a fucking breeze. He, just, he in that can't thing. admit it, can he? I know. It... No, he's just too deep in. He can't. He's clinging on to like the the simple. I mean, you can have a nice ride in any. Like, you don't need a four grand money pit <laughs> to have a nice drive. No, you can just go. Like, yeah, it, it's just it's, it reminds me of the Christensen thing, right? Like, he just can't. Or the sticks thing. Like he just once the hits that point, he just can't admit he fucked up. 
well he knows that the animus is at this point with him and uh the trolls who are mostly or at least not mostly but large in part jesse fans he knows that he, he cannot cede any ground he cannot give up anything to these people even if it's it's very similar to the ethan ralph thing right now with the um with the portugal thing i mean oh god that is a shit show <laughs> yeah i mean ethan ethan could own that tomorrow and he could just be he could laugh it off and say look yeah kind of dumb of me to <laughs> to go to portugal and think that that was uh it, but... it still amazes me that he flew out to another country to own own a guy who made fun of him on a live stream and then gets beaten into the hospital <laughs> in the streets like what the fuck <laughs> Maybe at that point you say, maybe I, maybe I'm the one that fucked up here. <laughs> maybe this is on. Maybe <laughs> this is me. Yeah, I mean, I, just, I I can't get over it. It's the funniest, the funniest thing, and especially coming so soon after the the whole that Kino Casino stream and everybody getting together. And this was going to be Ralph's big clapback. It was going to be, and on the face of it. It's relatively funny, you know, Andy Worski's been talking about moving to Portugal and living there and everything, and Ralph's, you know, beating him to it. So on the face of it, there's something there, but it's just the way it, that it turned out. Well, I, I mean, everything about, like, I, I've watched this transpire, right? Um, everything from that Kino Casino episode that Andy did mm -hmm. um, has been just comedy gold, because it was going to be him and Dick first, and then Dick gives a bullshit excuse to get out of it. So now he's going overseas by himself. And then if, if you noticed, uh, one of the weird things I noticed, um, he's always eating outdoors or a, in a fast food place. And I was like, well, I wonder why that is. You know, and I, I saw other people saying, oh, you have to be vaxxed in Portugal. And then others saying, no, that's not true. But apparently it's like one of the most vaxxed nations. Oh, yeah. So like he went to the worst place to go vacation, <laughs> given a stance, he, the, like the most year, the most vaxxed place in Europe outside of like fucking Gibraltar. And then and then he gets his ass beat into the fucking coma, basically. And then they steal his bag and sell it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I was desperately trying to look for that listing because I, I I was actually gonna put in a sneaky bid, but um Oh, I th I think everybody wanted a bit. It's yeah. like that f it's like Christian medallion. Yeah. Like yeah. that's what he's created. Been, I don't I've think he understands. Immediately, obviously, but I just wanted to be part of the bidding chain. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Just to have my name there, but uh, yeah, it was just. I always feel with Ralph though, it's it's too much. I, I like I said, I, I get asked to do it a lot, and I just I, it. I wouldn't know where to start, and then it would never have an ending. It's yeah, just and, I, and I've seen a, a lot of shit with him too that uh, makes me laugh, and you know I'll be like, oh fuck, I want to, uh, you know, maybe I should say something or make a joke about it, but <laughs> yeah. like some people are way too fucking. It, it, so there are a couple that are a little too try hard about it that just okay. annoy me, and then I'm like, well, no, I can't fucking enjoy it. The nice thing about Mersh is I don't, you know, this is I have no connection to any of this shit, so I can enjoy mm -hmm. every fucking second of it. it. It's almost happened a bit with Mersh. There's some pockets that take it really seriously, where it's where it's kind of like they treat it as if it is genuinely warfare. One of the weird things, um, uh, Lotex, he's dead now, obviously after everything went to shit for him. <laughs> uh, but I remember talking to him privately because uh, we talked a couple of times. Uh, but he said the thing that always pissed him off and annoyed him the most about like uh, something awful and all that shit was mm -hmm. um, he missed how the internet was where you could just take shots at fucking anybody and it was more relaxed. And I, you know, I agree. Like I miss that. No, me, me too. I mean, I, I've always been someone that's that's sort of tried to keep an eye on on stuff, but I, th I think I involve myself too late because now, especially doing the stuff I'm doing, it's every every new documentary is just like. And look, I, I obviously the the stuff I do is fairly mean spirited but that's where it ends i'm not i'm not trying to you know destroy them destroy yeah. people but then it becomes that and i mean example i did uh, on the kino casino i did two and a half minutes of a trailer just making fat jokes about Ralph. <laughs> and um i checked my dms and he's he's in there and he's he, he just writes mersh was right about you the funny thing is i didn't think he was and then he blocks me <laughs> I was like, what? what? Like, when Andy brought me on, I, I was I was basically telling him, like, I don't know any of this stuff, really, and also, I'm not at war with him, but, yeah, also, he should probably stop doing the things he's doing. <laughs> You're and, right, um, yeah. <clears throat> and that was, that was enough. That was, that was deemed, deemed to be enough. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just, yeah, there are certainly people taking it a, a little too seriously. And Mersh as well. I mean, I mean, I've got no problem against him, and I've never... I've never done anything that you you could you could even 
describe as slightly damaging. Oh, he's him. he's gonna hate you after this because you know what's gonna happen. <clears throat> it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be uh, like the people that are deeply invested. Like they already know this. They'll they'll find it funny as shit. Yeah. But, but like a whole new fucking group of people are gonna be like, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> he's gonna have a whole. He's not gonna know which direction it's coming from. You know, it's he's gonna start thinking it's uh, I, Jesse's organized an army or something, or porcelain's leading an attack, and it's just gonna be random people like, "Wow, this guy's a fucking idiot." There's the the suicide baiting shit and that one comment about being better than people and just the BMW clips. Like, it's too good. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's it's a lot of it's really goofy shit that is funny to laugh yeah. at, which is good. Yeah, I, I, Mersh has actually said quite. Uh, he said that this will end up becoming the least viewed of my videos and that I've jumped the shark. <laughs> oh, because you've attacked, what does he call himself? Big Dick Daddy? What the Big fuck was Dick this? Daddy, yeah. yeah, you've attacked Big Dick Daddy. You don't know what you're doing. I don't know. It's a bit petty. Come on. I mean, he probably knows that it might He's going to know okay. the fucking second this thing goes live. You know that, right? He's going to watch the whole fucking thing. I try to be like, how do I counter it? What do I say? It's all, dude. It's all beat up. Beat. Fuck that shit. If it blew up tomorrow, I'd just get a, another used car, and I'd be like, you know what? That baby was fun. <laughs> that was a fun car, dude. So we did some investigating. It turns out it is a 2008 528i with 130,000 miles on it. This is no joke. We looked this up. These things are going for four to five thousand dollars. Anyone could buy these. Uh, it's a little bit more than the nicest MacBook Pro. Think about that. Um, anyone could buy these. Oh, oh, oh can he you pause it? Yeah. Uh, he has a bit of history with this guy, right? Red Bar? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, but do you think he looks up to him? Because after seeing his uh, crystal goblet thing, I'm noticing Red Bar's got a nice glass bottle there. Do you think he's trying to emulate success? <laughs> you see that? <laughs> well, it's funny you say that. There's um, there's certainly been long running accusations of Mersh trying to adopt Red Bar stuff. And Mersh is a diehard Red Bar fan. He has been for a decade, at least, if not longer. He's actually been in. Red Bar's Bring Back group, which is kind of like is, a Facebook is, group. Is Mersh Red Bar's Bobo? <laughs> <laughs> right? It, it kind of fits, doesn't it? Yeah, it kind of does. God, now I want a shirt that says, I want Red Bar to sell a shirt that says Red Bar's Bobo with just a picture of Mersh. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, you can see in the background there, there's some quite... All his pictures? pictures? Yeah, I know. I know. But... The, that's a police report picture, isn't it? In the yeah, upper right, yeah. the, the yeah. center one is the. Uh, you, you, I mean, you need you need to see it a bit wider, but that's the gay one with his tongue next to the guy's crotch at the oh, gay fantastic. bar. Fantastic. Gust wanting to buy this for about a year, he made the move and he's been flexing on people. You know, nothing about this guy has bothered me, but then when they tell me he's flexing with this old ass BMW, flexing. doesn't even it, it won't even uh, if you want to Uber with this car, it won't let. You guys know I, I, I got a car. My car, uh, I had to go to the mechanic. There were some things I knew were wrong with my car. There were some things I didn't know were wrong with my car. <laughs> uh, bottom line. So uh, here I am Does doing extra shit. Do he's absolutely hammered, yeah. <laughs> right? Like you could just in his flow, you could tell he's just shit faced. He's just swaying, leaning in and out of the microphone. <laughs> I'd be getting drunk too if that were my car. Well, I think you'll see why he's drunk. I think he's building his confidence for something. Oh, yes. Uh, bottom line. So uh, here I am doing extra show, doing my Wednesdays, Wednesday shows. Mersh is doing Wednesday shows uh, because of that. Guy. So, you know, whatever. We're hanging out. But um, I know there are some people out there that it, it just, um, fuck, it bothers them. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not going to be one of these guys that tries to pretend like, oh, he's 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 going to pretend like he's doing more shows, but he really is just money. Like, no, I'll be the first one to say it. Like, yeah, uh, my car's being repaired. I need extra money. Everyone needs extra money right now. I'm I'm doing the uh, I'm doing my show, doing a Wednesday show. I know that's crazy. I know some of the haters will go wild with that. That being said. Um, I still drive a cooler car than you. 
and I will continue to do so. Wow. <laughs> Fucking wow. I am better than you. I drive a nicer car. Go back to your menial job, toilet scrubber. <laughs> Where's my crystal goblet? <laughs> oh. I drive a better car. The thing is, I'm sure he probably doesn't. <laughs> Has he ever shown a full picture of the car? Have we ever seen like a full on video of the car? Not just like in inside shots of like the interior, but like the whole fucking thing. Just like the bumper hang off. I've I've not, but um what I've seen a lot of is pictures of his car keys. Anytime he goes out to dinner, he, he does the white woman thing of taking pictures of every meal he, he takes, which is usually like a ribeye or whatever. And he makes sure <laughs> in every picture that he puts his BMW car keys there to show everyone, like, you know, I might be eating here, but I own a BMW. <laughs> like, it's every picture. I could probably show you a 10, 20 pictures of, of Mersh eating, flashing his uh, his BMW keys. This is, it really is a big part of his ego, isn't it? Like, this is like a pillar he's built himself up on. When that car finally shits the bed and he has to get a Kia or something, he's going to really be depressed. The, the BMW is like a signal of him arriving. It's it's uh, like you know it means more because it's it's the line that he's set in his in his brain of I'm no longer poor. I'm no longer a loser. I've now made it because he can't use his house for that because he's, he lives in Section Eight housing. <laughs> like I mean we've all seen wait really that. yeah. He lives oh, in... the story gets I'm telling you, man. Like the depth to this. <laughs> yeah, it's a shithole neighborhood. Horrible neighborhood. Jesse sends. Seafood and uh... <laughs> shut up. He's <laughs> um, in fact, Mersh has just gone to Las Vegas. So Jesse and all his crew, they're now sending loads of coleslaw and seafood to his house. <laughs> and when Mersh was trying to lose weight, Jesse, <laughs> Jesse just kept sending him pizzas and McDonald's. Just he can't not eat it. Uh, you'll see that in this weight gain section. I oh, think. God. Yeah, the weight thing, too. Yeah, wasn't he going to become uh, super svelte and fucking toned and ripped and shit? Yep, yep. He's, he, the worst thing is he set himself a date, which has come and gone, and so he set himself another date. So we'll see Oh, of course. Yeah, fuck it. We'll set another one, yeah. So this is just a couple of pictures of... This is pre-op, is it? <laughs> There's the gun. Wait, no, back up to the last one. I thought that was fucking baked Alaska for a second. <laughs> it looks like baked Alaska a little bit. It's the same same physique, but that's yeah. I mean, believe it or not, that's thin Mersh. Oh man. It's just like a Everybody. he's got like a pear shape. <laughs> I love that one. Oh, that one? Where the neck and the fucking chin just <laughs> gush together. Yeah. Oh, this is a great one. So he uh this is when he went to uh Vegas one of the times and he he wanted to flex and take a picture of his hotel room and show how good living he's going but <laughs> people spotted his reflection in the bathroom mirror and sort of highlighted how fat he'd become <laughs> is that so, why you got the elephant sized shower in the bathroom <laughs> yes yeah, so there's the there's the picture no really he's a he's pear shaped i've never really noticed it before <laughs> but it's a very pear like little bubble on the top little t-rex arms <laughs> It's a pair with little T-Rex arms. That's what he looks like. <laughs> They're tiny, aren't they? <laughs> oh. Look at that. I mean, you know, if you're a big guy and you want to lose there. weight, you know, that's that's fine. But you can't you can't tell the internet you're going to become super svelte and fucking Mr. Buff, and then it just devolves into this. <laughs> Look at the arm. It's midget-sized. He really does. He's got little bitty bitch T-Rex arms that he holds his crystal goblets with as his pear-shaped body <laughs> fucking sways back and forth in his gamer chair. <laughs> I don't know if it's that his arms are small or his body is growing and, and swallowing parts of his arm. Maybe they're eating them for sustenance. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> the music good, really. So That don't come near my car. Don't come near my car. Now this guy wants to come near my car. Don't come near my car. I'm busy right now. Go on, beat it. Go on, get out of here. <laughs> what is that from? <laughs> Someone just found Mersh in the wild. 
Yeah, they're fucked. What the? <laughs> That's some of uh, my hair's looking. There. Hair's looking a, a little bad there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he's like a fat Steve Jobs in that picture. Bear in mind, this was a comment in 2020. <laughs> it's been like this since high school. God, really. Every time I go life. through like a phase in my life where I get fat and then I go, I gotta fucking get in shape. It's happened like three or four times in my lifetime. Every time I come back, the game changes, right? So I'm like trying to get in shape, whatever. And then you're like, all right, now I'm weight training. I went to the gym today. I will actually fucking. Today is the hardest I've gone since I started doing this. Um, I jogged to my gym, no shit, with a backpack on. Backpack with my water bottle and my notebook and my phone and a bunch of other shit. My gloves, right? Um, His fingerless gloves? Did he back- bring those? <laughs> <laughs> are they making a reappearance at the gym, are they? Yeah, it's weight training in his fingerless gloves, a marine hat. Oh, my God. Could you imagine this fat fuck at your gym? Oh. <laughs> fingerless gloves, writing in his notebook about his weight loss? <laughs> I'm having to use the equipment after him. Oh. He's got his BMW keys set on top of the weights, <laughs> so you know he's a big deal. <laughs> getting lots of clout from the other uh... he, he's got his shirt on that says his name with his face on it so you understand he's famous <laughs> pack full of shit and running um with with the weight and shit right like all that shit so i've um, been doing that you see, you see Murph, i don't know what that name is but <laughs> grift wave it's just just being spammed in the chat Oh, God. Is there any video of him, like, using barbells with his little T-Rex arms? Oh, he would... I mean, his self-awareness isn't great, but he's got just about enough to realize that that would be a terrible idea. So. <laughs> that was a mistake, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I think even even he's not that bad. And uh, I do that today. It's my first time. Jesus, mods, come on, man. Thank you. These guys are so fucking... These guys are so lame. Anyway, um looking in the mirror i'm tracking how like honestly i'm i feel i can tell you this right now i'm already like harder um <laughs> like my shoulders my chest my arms and all that are like way more solid now it, it's oh, actually they, motivated me there's been legit- more solid now after your two days at the gym <laughs> you really really have shaped it and uh sculpted the new uh fucking statuesque uh body you wanted after the whole two days you've been doing it <laughs> i think he's mistaking arthritis for for fucking tone yeah god it's really it's really tight all over my chest you know it's almost it's almost hurts when i walk well of course that's a heart attack it's not you getting in shape buddy <laughs> i know what gym he goes to the one with the lunk alarm where they feed you cupcakes what's the name of that fucking place <laughs> Planet Fitness. That's where he goes, isn't it? He went to Planet Fitness for the cupcakes. That's why he started working out. <laughs> they, they actually do that? Yes, there's an advertisement. There's a commercial. If you, if you can find it for your documentary, where Planet Fitness basically is like, hey, fat fucks, we'll give you cupcakes. Come to Planet Fitness. Oh, my God. And they have Pizza Tuesdays. Yeah, all they do is feed you. <laughs> what the fuck are they doing? Repeat business. If you're fat, you're going to keep coming days where I'm like I don't feel like going to the gym today and I'm like you gotta go you gotta go the faster you get in shape the closer the people that have been trolling you for a year and a half are getting to killing themselves oh is that why he wanted to get in shape not to be healthier and you know feel better about himself but to show the trolls he's gonna teach the A-locks I, he let that one slip didn't he just everything is born from pettiness and vitriol and just and bitterness yeah right like every single this guy yeah all you got to do is make him mad and he will literally do anything you want <laughs> he gets bullied into going to the gym just so we can because we, we know that he's not going to stick to this we know he's still going to be fat in a year's time so he's just he's just like trapped himself in a game he can't win and do you think way... if you started calling him stupid you could get him to sign up for community college <laughs> Yeah. You're too dumb for community college, Marsh. You'll never make it. He's <laughs> taking lit classes at night. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. you D plus papers to the internet. 
I'm not focusing on the weight. I'm, I don't give a fuck about the weight. Well, you should. <laughs> <laughs> it might be something to pay a little attention to. Yeah, that seems to be the, the main problem then. <laughs> I'm not focusing on the weight. I'm, I don't give a fuck about the weight. I care about what I look like. Not what I, you know, what I look like and what I feel like mean more to me than, you know, a number. Dude, that fatso is, he gets booted off all the things that he tries to, like, grift and get money for. Every show they do. So this is a Gavin McGuinness uh, clip, as you can see. And uh, Ryan Katsu Rivera, who's off screen, is Gavin's little, like, monkey guy. Um, and he's talking about Mersh. <laughs> so um, apparently Mersh must have done a video where he talked shit about Gavin. So uh, he's... <laughs> He's just raiding off on him, calling him fat. So I'll play that again. Mean more to me than, you know, a number. Dude, that fatso is, he gets booted off all the things that he tries to, like, grift and get money for. Every show they do. What are you talking about? I was a guest on Dick's show. And you're right, I am fat. But guess what? Fucking week four at the gym, baby. Let's, let's call me, call me fat in, like, August. Call me fat in September. I this, like this it. Was I like the people year, are right? doing the... Yeah, top right, May 2021. Oh, okay. So August and September have fucking come and gone by oh, a ways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You'll see the next clip. August. I'll Call me fat time. September. I like it. I like that people are doing the fat thing still because it's pathetic. It's, it's actually really going to be fun. It, it makes going to the gym fun. It makes it fun knowing that these guys are going to have one less thing to whine about. When they're fucking seething and when they're all angry about, he's fat. Yeah, not much longer, buddy. <laughs> this will be... Oh, that's a great way to start it. Oh, just fat ass under August. <sighs> yeah, we know, Mersh. The funny thing about this as well, and we're going to see it in a second, he denies that he ever promised the August thing. Yeah, you'll see him just completely deny it. He's fat. Yeah, not much longer, buddy. This will be, I'm st I just a week ago started my fourth month, I guess. It's the end of May all the way to the end of uh, August. So, yeah, May, June, July, August. Um, well, no, May, you wouldn't count May. Actually, can you pause end. it? Has he visibly gotten fatter? Yes. Right? It feels like the opposite of what he was going for. He hasn't even maintained the same. It looks like his face looks puffier. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Look at him now with the well, or at least in the mustache period, he was fatter than ever. There, I mean, you... well, there's one picture where he turns his neck, and I don't know, maybe somebody photoshopped it, but it looks like he's got you know, like a goiter, like something you'd get if you had gout, you know, yeah. or you're not having enough vitamins. Like, and it's just enormous, like, it's so big, he's gotten so big. That's not a photoshop, by the way, 100%. I've got the same picture. It's it's him leaning and the double neck doing its own thing. To him, <laughs> it's like moved to the just, side, yeah. Yeah, it's just like he's just made of mashed potato and it's just like the potato, they're just clumping in places. <laughs> in July, August. Um, well, no, May, you wouldn't count May because it was the end. So June, July, August. So about three months in. And... Now uh, the the weight will start cut. The weight has been met. Like now, it's been coming off. There are people on the internet that are saying Mersh in back when he started working out the last week of May said, "Watch me by uh, dude." I literally was saying, "By August, I'm gonna look like Dwayne the Rock Johnson." <laughs> no, you weren't. He said it in rea retaliation to. Uh... Gavin McGinnis. Gavin McGinnis, yeah. And he said yeah, but you could clearly hear him, yeah. In pure seriousness as well. There was no jovial nature to the tone that he it was him challenging us to look at him in August and September and saying that we're all going to be seething. They literally are taking these things and going, hey, what happened to being in bitch in shape by August? I'm like, I never said that. I literally did say it in the context of... Like to annoy Royce, I'd go, dude. Wait, you wait till August. Here's my predictions. It's gonna be um, next summer. If I am, by the way, I will never have abs. I'm not claiming I'm gonna be ripped, but I'll probably be less, much less fat, and probably more muscular, and I will be noticeably different looking. And people will be going, hey, haters, what happened to Mersh? Fucking being fat forever. And they're gonna. Here's what they're either gonna say. 
Yeah, but he was fat until uh, was it baked Alaska and Jim shamed him, or, or it'll be like the pot awful shamed him into trying harder, or they'll go he started doing steroids, or he started taking more Adderall. There'll be some excuse for he, he didn't do it like. And I'm like, he doesn't have abs. And you're going to go, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's fine. Honestly, my biggest thing is ordering Uber Eats like late at night because I'm just fucking drunk or lazy. And I'm like, ah, it's fucking, I'll just get them to bring me checkers. I need some food. <laughs> oh, oh, it's look so at the late chip. that I can't even. Oh, God. It's, oh, God. Pause it's it. New oh, Year's Day. It's, the, the, it's just, it, it's, I love it. It's not just a double chin, but the weight of it actually sloshes back and forth. Do you notice when he moves his head? It's so late that I can't it's even. It's got its own gravity. Oh, God. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's like a gullet. It's, or it's, it's like a turkey. Yeah, it is a gullet. Yeah, it's like a fucking seagull up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's Marsh the Seagull coming to eat some fucking food. Look at that. You think people throw bread at him because they get confused on the street? Like, where did this fat bird come from? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, give me, give me so, give me a loaf of bread. We gotta get this fucking thing out of here. It's scared the kids. God, that get that beard was doing that was doing a lot of heavy lifting. Really hiding a lot. Of, a lot of problems. Why did he keep the mustache? Why, like, I, that's what I don't get. Like, you know, if oh, you're gonna right. go clean shaven, go clean shaven. Why keep the mustache? It looks well, so much worse. No, the, the, there's a whole thing behind the mustache. It was he got it allegedly. This is what he says because he figured that getting the mustache would would bring him a lot of troll donations. Those are his oh, words. He he I'm said really teaching the airlocks, is he? Yeah, like he was trying to like cultivate his own trolling by getting ahead of them. Like, I think that's what it was. I think he wanted to redirect their insults into something that he was in control of. How did that work out, Marsh? Because well, he, <laughs> I'm have feeling it anymore. If that's you, late at night because I'm just fucking drunk or lazy, and I'm like, ah, it's fucking. I'll just get them to bring me checkers. I need some food. It's so late that I can't even. Oh God! It's oh God! It's New Year's Day. Oh no! <laughs> He's gonna go squawk at the neighbors for bread now. I'm going to be battling with <clears throat> Uber Eats because they're going to have a whole bunch of restaurants that are that show that they're open, but they're not. And I'm going to be, oh, oh God damn it. God damn it. Can, can you pause? So does he use Uber Eats because he's A, too lazy to get off his ass to get the food or B, too drunk to drive his broken BMW to get the food? <laughs> you know, little column A, little column B. A little, a little of both, yeah. <laughs> Well, I just love that um, this is the current status of his diet. He's wrestling with himself about the perils of ordering <laughs> junk food. You know it's what really it is? Cool. It's 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 a cycle, right? It's like Ouroboros of fatty. <laughs> so he he's he knows that people are making fun of him for being fat, and now he's committed not to being fat. But now the stress of that makes him eat more. I have a prediction that by the end of this year, he will weigh five hundred pounds. <laughs> His 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 fucking set will not be a green screen. It will be fucking checkers pizza boxes from the fucking floor to the ceiling, <laughs> and uh, and loaves of bread that the neighbors have given him. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's some mustache. So I think it just starts with a couple of uh, classic classic mustache picks. <laughs> 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 oh, that one is so good. That one is just, that is a winner. He, I don't know. I, 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 and I have no way of accusing him of being a pedophile. I, I have no reason to, but that is the pedophile luck. Is it not? Like, could you not picture this head popping out of a candy van? <laughs> when children are at play. <laughs> he's the neighbor. Everyone warns you about. He's the, uh, he's the uncle that nobody will let you sleep over at his house. There's a reason people don't have those mustaches with that hairline and that weight. It's it's like the trifecta of pedophilia. I like how he's got the pear body, but now his head is taking on the shape of a watermelon, so it's like a fruit platter. He's a walking fruit platter with his little T-Rex <laughs> banana arms and his pear body and his watermelon head. It's a whole fruit basket. <laughs> yeah, that's what he is, yeah. 
<laughs> so. Oh, this looks like the face. This looks like an interview from Intervention on A and E. Like, where they're like, and now we're going to talk to uh, Daniel Smith, a 28 year old from Colorado, whose family's <laughs> concerned about his meth habit. Like that's that's what we're looking at. I don't know what's going on with his hair, though the the sideburns and. <laughs> It looks like he's kind of like it's almost like um, a clown wig that's uncolored, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. If we could get the pants he wore at that X Fest thing and then color that, he could get a job. He wouldn't have to be a, a fucking uh, a bar manager anymore. <laughs> Pedo the clown, yeah. And there's the, oh, the, the classic, the goya. That is the best picture. <laughs> I like how the rain effect of the background looks like he's slobbering everywhere now. By the way, before anybody asks, what's with the uh, what's with the uh, mustache? Uh, the mustache is to ensure that I make a bunch of money, so people have to pay to make fun of my mustache. Uh, welcome to the program, everybody. Also, the dude fucked up the mustache. This was not the mustache I planned on having. Wait, 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 wait. wait. My pause barber it, is not it. known. He had to go to a barber to have somebody cut his fucking mustache. Is he like a toddler? <laughs> his friend had to fix his car. He has to have other people cut his fucking facial hair. Like, does he do? Does he do anything? Does Royce come over to tuck him in at night at his fucking apartment? He's just like a giant man baby. I mean, he's even got the sort of body lumpiness of a of an actual. He does. <laughs> Uh, I have to pay people. You need to donate. Tonight's Nightwave goal is I need my fucking mustache trimmed. <laughs> My little T-Rex arms can't do it. Maybe that's it. Maybe his small arms can't reach up there. <laughs> his tiny his little chins. baby arms, yeah. He's <laughs> got too much neck fat to push past. You see what I'm talking about with that uh, gravity? Look, you can see it's it literally is going to the lowest center. <laughs> this was not the mustache I planned on having. My barber is not known to do mustache mustaches. So he kind of gave me a creepy, weird, like, transatlantic fucking uh you know like fucking what is this what oh is this you know what else i noticed too yeah. um you know what makes the the lack of the beard even worse mm. is it highlights how much bigger his forehead is getting because now there's more flesh <laughs> right like you don't really notice like his forehead when he's got the full thing going but now it's like wow yeah yeah <laughs> you're right it's just more flesh on show so it, it extenuates the boldness under that hot light in his fucking home studio. <laughs> the yeah. smell of Checkers pizza boxes wafting in the air. Canter? I got an Andy Canter mustache instead of what I wanted, which was to, for it to go all the way up to the... You know what I mean? Like, it's supposed to be thicker. So these are just Reddit posts making fun of his By mustache. the way, I'm bringing the beard back for anybody who's bitching about the beard. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> Not because of you faggots. Wait, does that Reddit have that much power? It took them a couple days of making fun of his fucking mustache for him to be like, I'm growing it back r slash mersh is the greatest torment of his life it's um it doesn't have that many uh users in there but um, just enough to drive him crazy but it's incredibly active it's you know you're talking maybe 15 to 20 posts a day and it's just all of the most petty i almost feel bad because of the amount of <laughs> The amount of spotlight that's that's put on him on an every but isn't day that day. what he wanted? Like even this one, admit uh, is like, uh, uh, what is it? Why do you think he got the mustache on ROTC? He says it's so people will troll him and he'll make money. <laughs> so he should be happy, right? Because that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> By the way, I'm bringing the beard back for anybody who's bitching about the beard. I'm bringing it back, not because of you faggots, but because I really do have a project going on and I. <sighs> I can't get into it because it's a big project, but let's just say that I was talking with some people that are involved in this project, and even the people involved in the project were like, you should probably grow the beard. <laughs> Martina Marcotta? Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lady. She's, um, I don't know if you know Jack Bookby. He was part of the Proud Boy movement. I think he was like in the British charter and he ran he ran the Proud Boys sort of British area. He's married to her. She's kind of like a burlesque I don't know how to describe it, like a burlesque model, I guess. And okay. um, and she's also kind of 
meandered that into the culture war. She was kind of semi-relevant around the Gavin McGuinness sort of scene maybe three years ago, but right now she's nobody. The previous clip there with with Mersh talking about the project. Now, do you believe that this project uh, exists? Uh, do I believe it? No, I don't believe it for one second. I, I don't. I don't believe. I don't believe it at all. Uh, I think he grew the beard back because he was teased, and um, after reading all his suicide bait shit, where he talked about phase four cash and inf- cash infusions, it sounds like he's been working on projects for a decade that never materialized. <laughs> yeah, it's just another another one of his fancy pants big boy words. Oh, you'd rather be. <laughs> uh, so to set up this Martina Marcota stuff, this is the twenty twenty election. I believe. Um, okay. it's, it's a stream that she's doing. She did like a 12-hour stream, as pretty much everybody did at that particular point. And um, she's taking calls from anyone that kind of wants to chime in. So Mersh is hammered drunk, and he decides to call in, and uh, we'll see what he's got to say. When have I ever simped? When have I ever simped, folks? So, I'm going to fill you in on what's been happening. He called in. She didn't really care. She's like, what, are, what is Mersh doing here? We've never, you know, she knows of his show. And she goes, what is Mersh doing? And because she wasn't thrilled to have the mighty Mersh here, he's doing this negging, flirting. Yeah, so, yeah. what's going on? Yeah, How was your day? Like, right, like, yeah, like, she's just pretending like she doesn't know me. Like, yeah, hey, what's How up? Fuck hey, call her, on the air. Like, <laughs> fuck you. What, are you kidding me? <laughs> Listen to this. If you're going to come at me like I'm being weird and shit. No. You know, I, I was like, oh, you know. No. Hey, you know that's I'm not. I'm fucking literally. That's I'm not literally it. like like the most famous I've ever been. And, you know, I did. I, I was on rap. Did you catch that? The most famous I've ever been. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the fact you can you can hear the liquor right just just coming off of him. He's so drunk. So why did he call her of all people? Well, she's a fellow e celebrity in a, in Mersh's eyes, I suppose. And uh, I think I genuinely just think he was horned up a little bit. I think he just he probably saw that she was streaming. He probably saw this as an opportunity to plant his flag in a in another e celebrity's world and and sort of you know, but I think a lot of it is that yeah I think he just wanted to go in there and flirt with her. <laughs> I also like how uh, uh, the red bar guy. It's Mike, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how he's the one going over it. It, it, it this helps that whole idea of red bar is Bobo. <laughs> like every merch fuck up is going to show up on this thing now. <laughs> yeah, I mean. That's the cool thing about Happy Accident. Is I, I can't find the original footage for this, and the only the only thing I've got is is Red Bar. Oh, I think... This works. I, I like it. The Crystal Goblet. He's trying to emulate with the fucking uh, the glass bottle. Everything's perfect. That's I'm not fucking literally. That's I'm not literally it. like like the most famous I've ever been. And you know, I did. I I was on Ralph's stream, and then he got drunk and crashed and burned. Sorry, sorry. I mean, I was just going to come say hi and talk about the election, but, you know, if you're going to be all fucking stand no, up. No, shit, no, no, no. Like, if you're going to come at me like I'm being weird and shit. No. You know, I, I was like, oh, you know. No. Hey. So this is all flirtation. What it is, it's like, all right. So, like, me and her, we chat, whatever. We're like, we know each other from other we communities. Know each other. You're like, hey, what's up, dude? Like, I know you. But then, like, it's like running into somebody you know like when they're around their cool friends and then you go like oh hey what up and they go yeah hi like listen if this snacking he's still on this we're three minutes into the call See, the and thing you know, is- sound like we ain't cool in the summertime at summer camp and then we go back to school and you're gonna act like you're too fucking cool like come on bro okay i see how it is well it's actually kind of like <laughs> i think it's actually the opposite because it's more so that like you get in on a regular night, like, you know, a thousand live viewers or whatever, you know, 700 See, or whatever. She's starting to go. This doesn't even make sense. I get 30 live viewers. And, you know, Mersh, when he goes live, gets a thousand live viewers into these low levels. They go, ooh, 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 I better 
treat Mersh like a king. I had like a thousand live viewers. That would change my life, they think. By the way, guys, if you listen in okay. live, like this is, by the way, this is what attractive white women do. They, oh they neck God. themselves. Like this is the thing because they've you gotten adjusted. Win. They've you gotten adjusted win. to be. Oh, okay. it's just like, can you pause? It's just like Matt Christensen said, right? Like he's not gonna, he's not gonna admit shit. He's yeah. going in there, like blaming her and shit. What? <laughs> it's the um, it's it's just the shameless, as Mike said there, the 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 flirty negging, and and I think a lot of it is is that Mersh is like also trying to like show the chat and show everyone that like look, I know how to I know how to talk to the ladies, or you know this is how you do it that that kind of stuff. But it's it's especially with the the most famous I've ever been, all that kind of stuff. It's he... It comes off as super desperate, especially if you're opener. It like uh, you know, Mike was saying, what was it? It was just the first three minutes. If in the first three minutes you're saying I'm famous, you've already lost. It's super desperate and really exudes a lot of sort of simpy energy. If you're this kind of, if you're this focused, and he might be doing it as a bit, obviously, but no, still... he's way too drunk. Yeah, way too drunk. I was going to say that. Yeah, I was going to say it. he's he's way too far gone to. For, for to even understand what this bit even is, I think it's just a case that um, he was genuinely offended by the fact that she uh, didn't react. Didn't in prostrate her. She he wanted her to prostrate herself, get on her knees, and be like, "Oh my God, it's the mighty Mersh, big dick daddy Mersh, with his thousand life years, has graced me with his presence, and he's famous. He has shirts with his face on them, and uh, I I should you know uh, bow down to that and be uh, instantly wet is the feeling I'm getting." What was the, what was the, this is what white women do shit. Is he, uh, is he one of those, uh, or he's oh, very yeah. bitter against white women? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. He's, um, I mean, I could, I could do a whole segment on the white women thing. I've got, I've got loads of stuff on it, but yeah, he's, uh, he's on a war path with white women, essentially. It's just weird that he'd show up on, like, she's just, uh, and he was saying he, she had like 30 viewers. So like, he just shows up and just starts shit with her. Because he feels, I guess, entitled to it. I don't know. It's really weird. It's really fucking weird. Well, again, it's it's because yeah, it's because like you said, she didn't, she wasn't, you know, she didn't receive his advances in the way that he he wanted, and in his mind, she treated him like any other caller, and he thought that like I'm elevated above this. Surely I'm the mighty merge. This feels like the internet live stream version of drunk dialing. You know, where a dude gets way too shit faced and wants to talk to a girl he finds attractive and then regrets it in the morning when he realized what he said, except it's all live streamed. So now they neg themselves like they preemptively, like they try to take, it's like, it's like when, like, like the N word with the A at the end got invented. Like they were like, we're going to take the word back. Like you're trying to do this thing where you're like, oh, who am I? And I like how Mersh is like lowest of the low fans are really. Oh my God, he's so good at talking to girls. <laughs> we're pals, like you know we're pals. You know I'm we're pals. Stream. Yeah, cool. I ain't no fucking. Listen right now because I came pal. here and then you started getting all big leaguey and I called you out on that shit. Now you're gonna try to fucking flip that shit on me. You're trying to. Play and it's like okay, um, the nagging bit, like it's run its course. Let's, let's wrap it up, Mersh. He continues to do this for four or five hours here. Obviously, I don't think you need any introduction. Oh, no, I've, oh, I've seen this clip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So actually, uh, I've set it up with a couple of clips that um, that I think kind of inform some of his attitudes towards Baked Alaska. And I think you'll see here, he's had a long-standing, I don't know what, what to call it, a friendship or something with Ashton Witty, Ashton Birdie. And... Um, You'll see in this clip here, he's he's madly in love with this woman, by the way. Uh, and obviously Bates had his relationship with her. And I don't know, I just always got the feeling that there's something... Do you think of... Do you think if Baked Alaska went up to Mersh and said... Uh, went up to Mersh and handed him, uh, like, you know, Ashton uh, Birdie's, like, phone number, private phone number, and said, here, take my sloppy fucking seconds, that it would make Mersh lose his shit? Well, unfortunately, Mersh has her number. Apparently, they speak all the time on the phone. So. Oh, do they really? Yeah, Mersh is he, he's the sap at the other end of her like fucking moans and problems. So yeah, Mersh is the guy that picks up whenever she's got an issue with her boyfriend or whatever. Oh, he's the nice guy, is he? Yeah, he's playing the nice guy. I, I'm sure he's got a long term plan that one day this is all going to pay off for him. 
Now, let me explain why the internet is so important to the American, or the world. Our founding fathers, when they founded this country, they believed in the idea that the people were the American. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, she's so pretty. Oh my god, I love her. I just want to, I want to go up there and just cuddle her. Oh, she's so cute and pretty. He sounds like a fucking fourth grader. He sounds like a fourth grader with a crush. Apparently, he's Look at him, he's like giggling and oh! red and shit. Oh, I love you now. Oh, Let me she's touch my you. favorite. I, that's all I needed to hear. Can we, can we, can we, can we make up though? I gave you a juice box. We're cool, right? We're gonna get a little half hug here. Ash and Birdie, Don't join us. Don't touch sexual. <laughs> Any excuse to touch, yeah. Really, right? Like yeah. he, oh, I, got, I bet he went home and sniffed his hand for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you know who still talks to me all the time? Uh, you know who considers me a friend to this day? Ashton Birdie. You know why? Because I always talk to her like the way I talk to you guys. I'm a fucking asshole to that chick. So she calls me all the time for perspective. I don't pick up 90% of the time because I don't want to hear this. What are you doing? Look who it is, Mark. This is terrible. Wow. Oh, oh that stomach. Yeah. Oh, Damn, you're fat as fuck. Holy shit. The stomach tap is so irritating. So he, Merch tried to own that. When he reviewed the footage of all this whole thing, he was watching it through. And then as soon as he tapped his stomach, Mersh watching him started bursting out laughing and, and started to, like trying to say that, Oh, I didn't. E I didn't even realize I did that. I I think that was a subconscious thing. I think uh, that's like I, I I don't know. That's when somebody brings out an imperfection you have, and you subconsciously focus on it, not meaning to. Um, like there's this uh, weird thing uh, if you've ever gone shooting or something like that, uh, where they're like, uh, you you got to be careful when you're on the range aiming and stuff because the one thing you're trying not to hit is the thing you're going to focus on and hit. So I think when he went to stomach tap, that was Bank Alaska broke his mind. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right, because he also, um, when Bait bumps into him, his immediate response is a weird kind of like, he just he just blurts out, it's Tampa, as if, and it's just like this weird nervous reaction. I'll see if I can play it again. 90% of the time, because I don't want to hear this. What are you doing? Look who it is, Mark. This is Tampa. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look who it is. This is Tampa. Well, no shit, fat ass. I think I know the city I'm in. <laughs> it's just like a total like nervous Nelly reaction. Just he is so out of his element right now. Now he tried to claim because I did address this on one of my streams. He tried to claim um, that he never had any beef with Bake Alaska. Uh, he never was going to get tough with him. But from what I understand, is like he was like, I'll, I'll I'll teach that fucker a lesson, kind of shit. Oh yeah, yeah. So the event happened the the day after. He, he one of the first tweets was that if I see him in Tampa again. I'm not going to turn it down a second time. Yeah, so it's all big talk after he, he literally waddles away. Yeah, and I've I've been speaking to I spoke to Jesse and Andy about this this weird dichotomy that Mersh has that the only options were to fight Baked Alaska or to walk away, and he chose to walk away. And I'm I just refuse that premise. I mean, what's stopping Mersh right now from getting his phone out, streaming Baked Alaska? What's stopping Mersh from using his comedic wit and and you know. <laughs> Making fun of Baked Alaska, standing there and laughing at him. I mean, to most he, he people... could have done yeah anything, but he ran. He literally ran. It's yeah. super obvious too when you watch it. Like it, you could tell how uncomfortable he is. Let I me mean, just look at him. You could tell he's nervous. To most people, if you know, if, if you bump into like somebody who you cover and that you make fun of. If you see them in real life, to most people, that's like your dreams come true. It, it, well, and the thing too is, like, he had shit he could fire back on. I mean, he could have he could have made all sorts of fucking jokes about content spray in January six. He could have bakes pudgy too. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, he just he ran. He ran for the hills. <laughs> let's have a look. Let's see him waddle away. Yeah. Whoa. Damn, you're fat as fuck. Holy shit. I made my fucking fair. Yeah. Camera. No, I'm I'm great. Show, you ain't showing that. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Why don't you fight me, bitch? Talk some more shit. I love the poop walk. It's the same thing he did on stage at X-Fest. It's that I got a dump <laughs> walk that he has. <laughs> You're like a duck. I'm, I'm great. Show, you ain't showing that. Oh, yeah. Why, not, why don't you fight me, bitch? Talk some more shit. Yeah. <laughs> you want to fuck with this thunder? Look at his calves. Oh if you God. could see below the, yeah. the, the line of the shorts, above the fucking shoes, like... That's the size of a thigh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look at how big. 
<laughs> oh yeah, why not? Why don't you fight me, bitch? Talk some more shit. Yeah. I mean, are you trying to do that right now? Yeah. <laughs> why don't we? The funny thing is about that though is he does his little twirl where he's arching his back and his gut is just really protruding, and then he says, "Are you trying to do that right now?" As as and that's like a threatening phrase. That's kind of that's that's him. It's almost like Mersh saying. All right, let's go. If you want to go, let's go. Bates immediate reaction is, yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah, let's do it. I like too the back picture. Like you can see the fat is condensed around his uh his abdomen and it's like bulging out as like hills from his sides. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a tie around his torso. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's a spare for his BMW when it breaks down. That's where it keeps it. Oh, he Man, runs like a coward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like a coward. This is Baked Alaska's greatest moment in my books. Well, yeah, because he got everything he wanted. Like, Mersh, if Mersh had had any reaction other than this, you know, he could have tried to switch it around, but he just, he, he took off, like, uh, as fast as he could. Yeah, there's, there's just, I mean, he's done so many cope streams on, on this. Oh, and holy thing. shit, you're so right about him being pale. I can see the, look at the lighting on his legs. Like, you can make out his fucking flabby little fucking... <laughs> His flabby little legs for their pale white. It's, they're white. They're pearl white. Yeah, it's it's ghostly. Fucking coward, fat fuck, merch like a coward. He won't fight me, dude. I couldn't believe he's so fucking fat. <laughs> Man, this guy's been talking. <laughs> the joy in his. Uh, I just. I don't know what it is. I just really. It's really infectious. His joy at how fat merch is. Well, he's super excited because, like, you know, they, they've had this little tiff going on, and Mersh just made an ass of himself after getting shit talked and just walks away. Just how brazen Baked was with it, as, as just like off the bat, just let's fight, <laughs> just like once and for all, no, no foreplay, no sugarcoating it. Let's just fucking end this. And Mersh is left with just the worst decision to make, and he makes a fucking idiotic one. Yeah, and also I, I discount that. Like, I've heard the response being too, oh, well, Bakes a fed, so if you fight him, you're going to end up, what, in federal prison? No. Like, if Mersh had gotten into a fight with him, maybe they, he would have got slapped with a drunk disorderly or something. But, uh, you know, trying to make it sound like you're going to go to fucking uh, Leavenworth because you threw a punch at Baked Alaska is a little bit much. What Mersh will say, though, in a short while, he will talk about how the angle we're looking at here he said that 20 feet from where they were standing, and we can see 20 feet away, sure. he said 20 feet from where we're standing, from this angle, there were like three or four cops, and that's why he didn't do anything. I can't see a cop in sight. I, I don't see a single cop. And also, with how loud Baked is being right now about let's fight and what a fat fuck and you know how he's kind of being uh, 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 verbose about it and loud and boisterous... Um, if there were cops there, they'd be like, well, we got to make sure these drunks aren't going to fight each other. I, I don't see them anywhere. Yeah, I don't see a single cop. Yeah. Talking shit to me on the internet for like the past five years. Holy shit. I just challenged him to a fight. Pussy ass bitch. Pussy ass bitch. If he, he said something. If he challenged her to a fight, you yeah. know who he was. Why did you even I say huh? shit? Why didn't you what? just clean this car and then say motherfucker? Okay, so off to, off to the left of me. Oh, wait, let me see. This is the only time he fil films the other side of the street. All the way on the left to your left, like our left, if you go off on the other side of the street, about 25 feet, there's three police officers posted up on foot patrol. Here's the deal, because... I do find it interesting that everybody that's criticized me for not harming my own life, fucking my life up, going full wigger, and hitting a guy unprovoked, which honestly, I don't even have a history of, I don't think I've ever hit a guy unprovoked. So, see, Karen's saying, sorry, Mersh, but you should have fought him. Maybe you should have. Maybe you don't have weapons permits and a fucking you're looking at buying a house next year maybe you don't have anything to lose and hey that's oh, oh, cool can you, can, can you pause for a second yeah um can you can you give me a little bit of the backstory unless you've got it as like the last clip on the gun thing because oh, i i heard he bought a gun and then wasn't he making statements about defending mcdonald's or something 
from what I understand, he was in a altercation at a McDonald's drive-through, and um, he, I think he pulled his gun out. See, that's that's why I, I think it's interesting because look at what he just said with baked Alaska. You think I'm going to get in a fight with a guy when I've got weapons permits? Meaning I don't want to risk losing my license to carry my gun. But then he's going to pull a gun out or uh, allude to having a gun or being willing to use a gun at a fucking McDonald's publicly on a live stream or on Twitter. Yeah, well, I mean, he's got the advantage at that point, so... No, 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 what I mean is the risk is the same. No, yeah, I understand, like, but, like, yeah. I'm, I'm talking from Mercy's perspective, in his head, like, he'll he'll okay, he'll, he'll be okay to entertain the idea of uh, a violent altercation if he feels like he has the upper hand, and obviously if he's armed, he knows that it's going to go his way. Oh, no, no, I meant it in a totally different way. Um, Mersh is trying to justify getting out of fighting baked Alaska because he thinks um, if he does that, the state that he's living in will say, oh, you're a danger, right? So you can't own a gun. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. But if he's making statements other outside of that at McDonald's talking about how he's going (laughs) to shoot motherfuckers... (laughs) see what i'm saying like yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. jive at all does it exactly yeah he clearly he doesn't see he doesn't actually care about the gun permit thing if he's if he's running around mcdonald's <laughs> <laughs> defending whoppers and shit yeah. <laughs> to be fair you know with his weight i suppose that's something that's close to home for him but um, you gotta protect that meal yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is the tweet in question about uh y'all get i mean I don't know. What, I don't even know the phonetic of this of this tweet, but it's, it's y'all get bail money ready because I swear to God, if I see Baked Alaska in Tampa tomorrow night, I am not turn it down a second chance. I like how it, 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 this goes back to his fucking just nonstop donation banking. Um, it's not I'll get do- uh, bail money ready. It's you all get it ready. <laughs> you pay for my bail. I'm gonna go fight him. <laughs> Yeah, he's just so it's just so second nature to him now. It's just yeah, he, like expenses don't work in his brain the way it does for everybody else. He's got like a like a split in his brain of like do I buy it or do they buy it? <laughs> and no one else has that. It's really weird, yeah. Some of the tweets uh I think you might have seen them, but yeah, just sort of Coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got all these comebacks now, right? Yeah. When he's not on the street. Now he's got all them. Now he's got all that wet. Yeah. Monday night uh, quarterbacking or whatever the phrase is. Yeah. It was fucking crazy. It, it, like, this dude is the fattest motherfucker I've ever seen. Like, like his fat is just, like, protruding out of his body. Like, like his body type is not supposed to be fat, but this motherfucker eats so much. It, it's crazy and like I, I was yeah he's like pregnant fat. Like, I was <laughs> that's, that's I was just shocked I was like holy shit cuz like on the show you just see his fucking face he couldn't even say anything to my face he wouldn't fight me he wouldn't you know stand up so I gave a formal fight invitation to Mersh I, I'm giving him 60 days 60 days October 1st let's do the fight it'll be a boxing match we'll stream it and all that Tampa, Florida. Let's make it happen. So, you guys got to press him. I'm, I'm part of the Revenge of the Sis crew. Oh, what's up? Like, well, why'd you try to start a beef uh, with my fight, uh, Mersh in uh, Ebor, uh, Ebor Street? I told him he should box me. We should set up a boxing match. What do you got, like, you got, what do you want to say to Mersh right now? Nothing. You know, box me. Box me. And what are you doing in Who Curl? are you? I'm with Revenge of the Sis. Occupy my life. Gay! Gay! What are you doing? Gay! See, dude? Huh? No, well, it's gay. You, it? what? you know what I like? You know what I like the most about this? Yeah. Is that the fan is braver than Mersh. <laughs> yeah. He's engaging baked. He's got his phone out. <laughs> He's getting shit talked. He doesn't care. Mersh waddles away, and it's the guy who watches Mersh is right up there. Yeah, it's like Mersh has to send. I mean, I I don't want to say Mersh literally sent him. He probably acted alone, but it's sure. the idea, it's the, the the optics, the visuals of of seeing that Mersh is sending his minions to do what he can't. I mean, it's so emasculating. You're being cooked by your own fan, who's shorter and probably just as fat as you. Yeah, and he's 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 like, hey, hey, what what's the fucking deal, Bakes? Yeah, he doesn't care. He's just Mersh could have done this, but he didn't. I like the uh, chat there. Revenge of the Faggots, Mercy. <laughs> Are you a fed? Hell no. What? You work for a fat. Why didn't you get idiot. arrested for 1 6? I did get arrested, you fucking retard. 
<laughs> when you got out? He doesn't know I got arrested? Yeah, he got arrested. Oh my gosh. What you didn't do? Another you fat revenge of the Holy shit! This is this is this is what merch sends a guy slightly less fatter than him. Oh, let's see. Alan Powell, defeater of Torbo. Way to spell it right, you fucking crack tooth loser. Why did you radicalize your fans to stalk and harass baked Alaska? Yeah. Go ahead. Get on out there, kiddo. Sell that narrative. Right, oh, see. tink, 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 tink. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta I gotta bonk you, man. I don't know what you're doing. You send a letter. By the way, stop speaking like you're fucking from a third world shithole. You send a letter to police about the Jesse. What? Yes, I'm writing letters. I'm I'm popping on my fucking typewriter. Ding 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 ding. Ding 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 ding. I'm sending. I'm you firing know, off you, letters you, to yeah. fucking G. You, you know what? What I love the most about that. Is that while he's doing the imaginary typewriter getting reset, you know, the yeah. thing, only one of his eyes is following that imaginary typewriter. <laughs> the other's looking dead ahead and his fucking cross eye is following. <laughs> That's the best shit. <laughs> he, does, he gets caught out by his own eyes all the time. There's a brilliant <laughs> clip where he's, uh, I guess he's like lecturing his trolls and, and he, he goes right up to the camera and... Um, and he, and he he does that thing you know where you say like, look at me and you do the two fingers at, at your eyes and, <laughs> and he does it he goes look at me and just as he points at his eyes his right eye just shoots to the <laughs> well, what I love most about this clip in particular right at least this is my understanding is his, it was his outright denial right and he tried to outright deny it by saying by doing this ridiculous shit like oh am I typing it tink 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 hmm. Um, but didn't they find out that yes, this is in fact the shit he was doing through a Freedom of Information Act? Yeah, yeah. There's um, yeah. There's a there's a file request and and a whole, <laughs> the whole the whole email chain got released, and then that's when he had to address it properly, and that's when, uh, yeah. That's, I mean, we'll we'll see exactly what he what he said. Oh, you do have that in there. Okay, sure. Gordon Liddy. You fucking... Hello, you write letter to police about the Jesse? Yeah, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. You could see that eye. I'm writing letters following. to the uh, uh, Bureau of <laughs> Federal <laughs> Investigations. <laughs> oh, it's the Bureau of Federal <laughs> Investigations. Pause. All right, so... Yeah, so this is uh, some of the four. Oh, did he wait? Is that the start? Did he start with Christchurch? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That oh, was that was his that. opening. Yeah. Even before saying "pot awful," it's Christchurch <laughs> massacre. Yeah, um, Josh, uh, Josh Moon um, did uh, mad, at, uh, mad at the Internet episode where he he discussed it, and uh, yeah, just laughed the whole thing off. It was so audacious, so so brazen just the idea that you can get their attention by just throwing in kiwi farms and new zealand because merch clearly was also one of the, one of the goals that, that he had here was was trying to do something about his own kiwi farms threads so yeah you know it's it's <laughs> what better way than to email the police about uh <laughs> the kiwi farms new zealand crisis uh, i mean massacre. you can you can you can say a ton of shit about josh and kiwi farms but i i don't think he he doesn't really give into that like he gets fucking requests. If if they're gonna host the Christchurch massacre video, do you think he's gonna give a shit about uh, what was the detective's name? Oh, Tiffany Dobbins. Do you think he's gonna give a shit about Tiffany Dobbins being upset about the fucking revenge of the cis thread? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like put some perspective on it, man. <laughs> so there yeah, we go. It's a show called Pod Awful, hosted by Jesse uh, and an English YouTuber by the name of me in the thread. I even, I mean. What have I got to do with any of it? <laughs> I mean, I understand. I, I like how he's like he wants everybody's name in it too. You know what I mean? Yeah, like not yeah, just yeah. not just saying who you are on the internet, but this is their name. This yeah. is who I want you to go after. It's it's Christchurch massacre, and here are two names for you. What a cunt! <laughs> so he's going to attach us to, uh, I guess, the crimes being doxing, uh, swatting, uh, other things like that. Like he doxed himself, by the way, be, uh, to own Jesse uh, from Pod Awful. Like he was. So... Oh, did he teach? Him, did he teach him a lesson with that one? Did he? <laughs> I think he did. He was so paranoid about the uh, about his new place being doxed. 
that yeah, he just uh, he just started his show and just gave his address out to his old his old audience. See, this is what I don't get either. Like I think Tim Pool really highlights this because he got swatted twice now, right, on mm. uh, his podcast. Um, but most people, like if they're doing like a show, like a live stream, or if they're I guess a big YouTuber like Keemstar or something like that, you just you call the local police department and say, hey. Um, I do a lot of shit on the internet. You might get a call saying that I've bought uh, 38 tons of uh, Tannerite, but that's not true. Please don't, please don't blow my, the door off my hinges and just double check before you kick it in. <laughs> so, like, I don't know, like, what is what 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 prevented him from doing that? Uh. You know, instead of instead of calling the police and saying, "I'm sorry," tink 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 tink, instead of you know writing them yeah. and telling them that you and the rest of the Christchurch massacre crew uh, were coming. Why not just say, hey, you know, if you get any crazy calls, uh, I'm not planning on detonating TNT anytime soon. I think it's because uh, he, I don't think he's necessarily as interested in preventing this thing from happening as he is trying to use it as a weapon against people he doesn't like or people that... Uh, uh, you you know. really think it's pure malice, yeah? Of course, yeah. I think yeah. that I think that he, he realizes that the only real way to, to gather any sort of momentum against myself or pod awful or any of the other handful of people that only crime is making fun of him he knows that the only chance he's got is to attach us to things that are objectively oh this is super cunty i didn't notice this and rumor has it that they actually had a female in their fan mentally uh trick a mentally challenged girl into giving provocative pictures so now it's just rumors right we went from a fucking massacre nobody in this entire email is involved in to now just just random rumors you know what I mean? Like, oh, mm -hmm. and by the way, I also heard that they like to kill puppies. <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck? And also the uh, the goal of that, considering what Mersh is doing right now, he's literally... Oh, it's ironic, isn't it? Yeah, he's he's literally showing a picture of some girl that was... That her only crime, really, was the fact that she was tangentially related to the to the former artist they had who called him gay in a, <laughs> in a Facebook <laughs> post because Mersh talked about how he wanted a new stylist. Like, that's how retarded it is. This is bullshit, too. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, the, the second paragraph, like, I, the one thing I think everybody on the internet agrees with when it comes to fucking Reddit, of all places, is like this whole, oh, they plan doxing and general harassment of myself. No, they don't. Reddit would never allow it. They'd fucking shut it down. You know how many subreddits get killed because people go over the line? There's no way uh, our merch would exist on Reddit if they did anything he's even alluding to. Yeah, because... What would happen is is that po like Mersh and his fans especially, they're waiting for any opportunity for R slash Mersh to to do something that crosses the line so that they can report it and get rid of the the worst thing that's that's driving Mersh insane right now. And the fact that it still exists is proof that clearly they've not yet strayed the line. Uh, yeah, they'd have the way back machine archive. You know what I mean? They'd back it up on 42 different sites, then make their complaint, you know, and be like, look, look, see, we have proof. So there's a little bit more here. It's just going into the sort of similar stuff. Um, the third one's quite interesting, uh, where he talks about Alan Powell, and he says, here's a screenshot of him stating that my sister and ex-girlfriends should be raped to death, should be raped to teach me a lesson. <laughs> so he's, he's telling a he's telling a detective up in Kitsap County about a crime where someone said that your sister should be raped. <laughs> like, come on. It kind of reminds me, it's a little bit like um, Kurt Eichenwald. Oh, I remember uh, him. You, you know, like, it reminds me of the, this is Kurt's wife, he's having a seizure right now, this is all your fault. Have you ever seen that on Twitter? Oh, God, it's going back. Somebody, again. okay, so Kurt has epilepsy, right? Hmm. And people would troll him by sending him uh, gifts of flashing images. Yeah. <laughs> and so so suddenly one day he had enough of it. And all of a sudden, somebody types on his Twitter account, this is Kurt's wife. He's having a seizure. This is all your fault. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh. Yeah, I immediately gave the cop a link to the Reddit. I gave the cop a link to the Kiwi Farms thread. I gave a cop a list of like three or four names of people that I knew were actively trying to do gay ops. And I said, if I had to bet, I'll put in a list of who I think it is, starting with the one I think it is the most. As long as I can prove that there's a group of fucking degenerate, unemployed, low IQ sociopaths obsessed with destroying my life, Hey, pretty much any oh, negative thing pause. that happens to me, I can blame it on that. Uh, can, can you pause for a sec? Yeah. You know what would be perfect right after he says that? Mm. If you went back to the clip where he's talking about Owen Benjamin and wanting to destroy him. 
Oh god, yeah, that would be perfect. Right? Because he's like, oh yeah, I, I, we're gonna fucking destroy him, and they just show that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. basically what he did. <laughs> I might actually do that. Of people that take this shit with me to this level is such a short list of people that when certain things start happening and they're happening to me and they fit the pattern of your behavior i should probably make it perfectly clear i will absolutely throw you under the bus for law enforcement i'm telling you that right now i will 110 percent i will never not throw you under the bus with law enforcement all right, that's all of that video. Um, sure. any, anything to add on the... Um... For, like, final thought kind of thing? Oh, just on the, the most recent <clears throat> thing. Um, the, oh, uh, on... Uh, the snitchy uh, stuff. The snitchy stuff, yeah. Um, I find it funny, right? Uh, a couple of things. One, he blatantly got caught out on lying, and it never would have happened without a, a Freedom of Information Act. But he did get caught, and then he had to address it, and he tried to downplay it. The fact he's trying to link in Christchurch... Like, Josh hosted the video, but Josh didn't go out and fucking shoot anybody. You know what I mean? Like, it's really weird to bring that up. And this is a guy that says he's a proponent of free speech. He went after um, uh, that Christensen guy for not being enough of a free speech advocate. And then you're going to cry about the Christchurch video, which was, I, my understanding was Josh's whole point was nobody will host it. Right? It was getting taken down from 8chan and 4chan and everywhere else. So he hosted the video. So people could see what the fuck it was. But now Mersh is going to say that that act of free speech is terrible. It makes no mm. sense. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's lie after lie after lie. I've noticed that a lot, not just with this uh, segment of clips, but with like everything that he does, he'll say one thing, get called out on it and then try to play it off as a bit or try to play it off as, um, you know, it's a misunderstanding and it's just, it, it's just kind of, it's really remarkable. So now he's at the point of contacting the police. He's, he's so fucked up about trolls on the internet, trolls who he says he tries to engage to give him money, that he's reporting them to the police. That makes no sense either. Like, oh, I'm going to do this mustache thing so you guys call me a fag and give me donations. And at the same time, because you're trolling me about my mustache, tink, 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 I'm going to contact the police. <laughs> how does that make sense? Like, how many fucking lies have we caught him in? I don't want to fight baked because I'll lose my gun license, but I'll tell people I'm going to shoot up at McDonald's and I'm not afraid to lose my gun license. Um, uh, you know, I want troll donations, but I'll report trolls to the police. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just fucking lie after lie after lie after lie. Suicide baiting shit for donations. The I'm so drunk I drove into a fucking wall. Give me another car. <laughs> The weight gain thing. Uh, I, I never said oh, that I'll be fit. By I August. never said that. Never said that. Never said August. Literally said August when he's getting pissed because Gavin's uh, monk. What did you call him? <laughs> monkey he's boy a, or uh, yeah, he's like a, he's performing monkey guy. I, I, a performing monkey. There we go. Yeah, because Gavin's guy called him a fat ass that begs for money. That's funny too. Like that's the only thing he uh, used to address who he is. Is he's a fat ass that begs for money? <laughs> that's enough to piss him off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just. I mean. I'm glad you've come to that conclusion because it's um I've I've really had to um cut out a lot of other stuff um that really emphasizes a lot of what you've said there. Um so uh, yeah for you, for you to arrive at that yeah pretty much uh, it it means that uh we're not wrong <laughs> essentially it means that we're not crazy and that actually Mersh is the um exactly what we, what we well thought. yeah it's 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 a pet this dude is a pattern of behavior from his start right i mean don't get me wrong a lot of it's funny goofy shit um but you can tell this is a dude that was desperate to make it is really better than other people made it and it, it, you know it's looking forward to the day when he's the big shot and he can crush anybody that got in his way <laughs> and uh he'll tell everybody that he's pro free speech that he's pro this he's pro that but the second he's got a moderate amount of power, he's going to use it to fuck everybody into the dirt. He's going to get you fucking uh, taken off of platforms. He's going to fucking ruin you, destroy you, like he said with Owen. Um, he's going to contact the police and get your subreddit or your, your forum shut down. Like, it's just he's a very bitter dude. It's really weird. Most people want to be successful because they want money. Or like you said earlier, like fame or whatever the fuck it is that they want. But they want it for their own personal sake, you know? But, like, he wants revenge. Like, he's mad. <laughs> that's true it's revenge of the sis but they that's the that's where the part. name <laughs> yeah it's basically what it is so this um this is the new stuff that's just happened within um i guess within the last three weeks um Mersh's new style this bit's worth it 
even just for Mersh's Facebook post that you'll see in a few seconds. Now, is this, um, I might have vaguely heard a little bit of this. Is this the whole thing about him wanting a stylist? Or is this yes. him, like, okay, because <laughs> after the whole I paid people to groom my mustache shit, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> So this is his post. I'll uh, I'll read it. So I've been hitting the gym and I'm officially down 25 pounds, gaining muscle, etc. I think I want to upgrade my whole aesthetic. Any of my IRL friends out there know a legitimate stylist in the Florida area. Not a person who cuts hair and calls themselves a stylist. I mean a legit head and head to toe stylist. Someone who can help me craft a look that will carry me as I become a co- an old ass dude. Hit me up. I've got money. Uh, you know what's really interesting about this post? Um, he said he's involved in a project, right? Mm. And he said that the people on the project told him to regrow his beard because it looks bad. Meaning that the people on the project, if it was like some big kind of documentary or some kind of television thing or whatever the fuck it is, they'd have stylists associated with it. So right. why would he need to look for an independent stylist when he already has somebody that's going to give him advice to put a look together? Well, it's either that this production isn't quite as fancy as he thinks it is, and they probably don't have any of that, or he's lying. He's lying. The list. Yeah, exactly. So Balisung, he's a guy that I've known personally for a, a short while. He's he's from Poland. He's absolutely batshit insane. He's a real like <laughs> head case, but he's really good at art. He does really good um, art stuff. Sure. So this is a reply to that previous post. Now, Balisong has been... He's been in the ROTC community for years. He's done loads of work for them. He's been commissioned by them a ton. And he's he's always, generally speaking, been very friendly with them. The last six months, I would say, he's basically been not responding to any of their messages. He's kind of dipped out of the communities, let's let's say that. So I guess Balisong re- finally... He lit him up he in finally this finally enough. Yeah, so you're a grown man looking for other grown men to help you get dressed and tell you, tell you you're looking cool because you're too busy hitting that gym to do shit yourself like any <laughs> normal adult. That might be the gayest fucking shit I've ever read. Just pick another movie, video game, cool guy's wardrobe to imitate and be done with it. How many white blazers <laughs> you have and how quickly you're balding. It's just always going to revert to your default leisure, <laughs> leisure suit Larry look anyway. <laughs> That's actually pretty fucking on point. I'll give him that. <laughs> and just on a side note, and I'm talking from experience here, you know how when you're fat as shit and play video games all day, every day, whenever you're not getting fucked up on whatever alcohol or drugs you have access to and calling it work, you have that one or two healthy meals or you lift the dumbbell a couple of times so you feel uh, so you can feel like the grotesque mutant from the reflect uh, from all the reflective surfaces isn't right about how bad shit has gotten sorry this is he's foreign so that's fine uh yeah doing that isn't hitting the gym and if i were you i would consider waiting for people to actually notice my change before i start playing my pretty woman montage <laughs> song to go on my shopping spree to find my perfect whole new me costume doesn't work as well when you're still fat you end up looking a bit silly so <laughs> bravo first of all he let him on fire yeah it's it's pretty fucking dead on um <laughs> Yeah, it's just, I don't, I I love that a grown man, it it is really weird. Why would you need a stylist? Like, unless you're in television, and then the production crew is going to give it to you. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if if it's something you have to look a certain way for TV, they'll fucking do it for you. Well, he does go on about uh, what he needs it for. I think he he says that, like, I'm losing weight, so I need to buy a new wardrobe. And also, uh, I think he starts talking about how, like, he wants headshots and all that kind of stuff, but uh, for for what? All it is, his whole show is a headshot. What does he need fucking headshots for? <laughs> what do you mean? You got a ten thousand hours of headshots, Merch. What do you need fucking more of them for? <laughs> I think he wants one where he doesn't look like a bullfrog or a pelican. <laughs> so Bally Song is a guy who used to do a lot of art for the show. He used to do a lot of art for all the shows. He paid this guy a lot of money over the years. Um. Royce goes, he just keeps like, I reach out, hey man, you alright, whatever, keeps leaving me on red. God, that uh, hair is so fucked other- up. <laughs> it looks so bad. It looks like it's, it looks like it's not even properly attached, it's growing over his headphones. You know, it's just like, it's it's like growing down like ivy on a fence. <laughs> it, it, looks, yeah, it looks like he's, he's like glued like a fake hairpiece <laughs> to his head, to the edge of his headphones and he's wearing that. Like, he, I couldn't attach the wig properly, and it just kind of slipped a little bit while I was getting all uh, worked up on this. <laughs> yeah, it slipped back. <laughs> <laughs> it's falling back. Gravity's <laughs> taking it from me. Yeah, like, the headphones are pulling them, pulling them away. 
<laughs> put in the <laughs> There are people from the community that he used to hang out with, play video games with all the time. A lot of, like, it was a very noticeable, like, he just kind of withdrew from everybody. I made a post where I was like, I've been hitting the gym. I'm officially down 25 pounds. My body shape is changing, and I want to upgrade my whole aesthetic. So if anybody knows of a good stylist, and I don't mean like a hair stylist. I mean a personal stylist. Somebody will help me pick out a good pair of glasses that don't look weird on my dumb face. Somebody will help me out to okay, tell me how to style my hair. You know what I like the most about this is when he takes a deep breath, you know, like when he inhales when he's talking, you're right. When you said bullfrog or pelican, like his gullet fills up. So when he takes a breath and it expands on the bottom of his fucking chin and it kind of sticks out on all the sides. He's like he's got extra like air capacity there <laughs> will that be the next adventure after the cat deep sea diver mersh where he's bringing his own oxygen down in his bullfrog gullet <laughs> <laughs> hear that kind of shit we're trying to go into a new era here I'm trying to fucking trying to reek of success here i want to be more marketable <laughs> i want to i mean i told royce i want to start maybe doing like a photo shoot uh new new art for the show okay you know i'm sorry um, pause it again no man has this conversation with another man. I've, I don't think I've ever known somebody where I was like, I'm going to get a stylist and I'm going to do photo shoots to get headshots. I'd get punched. Like, that's such a weird fucking conversation to have with somebody. I wonder what Royce thinks of this. Has he said anything about this? He's kept out of it completely. He doesn't want anything to do with any of this. Like, people have been harassing him about it, like, trying to get him involved and trying to, like, basically... They look at him as as a, as a kind of like the organ grinder with with a monkey loose on the streets. <laughs> well, so... I thought maybe he maybe he'd give like a comment like he did on the BMW, like, dude, come on, you know, like what what are we talking about? You need a stylist and a, a headshots for. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to those kinds of conversations, I mean, Mersh is he's too far down a, a weird. Dot. I mean, shit. You know... Do you think this is a, a midlife crisis? Is that what we're watching play out? It has to be. Yeah, I mean the. BMW, the, the, the I, I want a new, new look, look. I want a new body. I want a new car. I want a new smash. house. I, it's really, and then the way he acts with women, it's like somebody spiraling in a midlife crisis. You'll see later on just how psychotic <laughs> he starts sounding and looking. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you kind of put it all together, like I mean, Baked Alaska kind of emasculated him. Um, that girl not really caring who he was during the the 2020 um, presidential stream, you know, not putting up with his shit kind of emasculated him. Um, Mike from Red Bar laughing at him and basically treating him like Bobo emasculated him. All the trolls calling him fat and ugly and bald and poor <laughs> have emasculated him. I, it's Yeah, it's like a really weird um, version of a midlife crisis. That might explain the whole BMW psychosis and the I need a new look shit. And uh, I don't know what the fuck's going on with this. Just shave your head, right? Uh, that would be my recommendation. My recommendation, Mersh, if you ever listen to this, if this ever makes us in, shave your head, uh, regrow your beard, keep your mustache, and you'll look fine. <laughs> you'll look, you look normal. Right now, you look like a clown on meth. He <laughs> <laughs> <It> does. <laughs> Obviously, we're going to need some new art for the show now. Uh, <laughs> he just was going off on everything he hates about me. And I'm like, he's like, and I'm just breaking balls. I haven't slept in a few days. I'm like, okay, hey, 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 oh, oh, relax. Relax, pal. So I let it go. I'm like, I'm not going to talk to this guy. And he kept writing me walls of text that, frankly, I haven't read. At that time, we had a listener that used to come around a lot who went by the name of uh, Show Me Kitties. Don't worry, kitties. I won't give out your cam girl name. You know, and I don't like to do this, but, you know, Bally, you, Bally, you sealed the deal when you fucking did this today. So, you know, kitties and I, I'm going to start making out a little bit, whatever. No big deal. We go back to the Airbnb. I go, you want to you pop inside? She goes, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you imagine this fucking obese clown being like, hey, baby, <laughs> how drunk was she? How fucking three sheets of the wind was this chick? God damn. <laughs> and what's with that claw? I've noticed he does weird shit with his hands. Have you noticed that? Everybody's noticed it. 
Yes. It's like that. It's like a weird tick. Like Wings of Redemption will sniff his fingers. If you ever watch his live streams, it's like Merch does a claw. It's bizarre. <laughs> he does. Sorry, I'm laughing because it's <laughs> it's something everyone has noticed about him, and it's it's just like whenever I see someone else notice it. <laughs> It's the That's almost the funniest part. I of... think it's like a, a defensive measure. T Rex is engaged. In. <laughs> They're showing you their weapons. <laughs> he lifts his little arms up and puts Pre them in a claw. Prepping his talons. <laughs> I go, you want to you pop inside? She goes, yeah, let's go inside. We start making out whenever shit's going on. People are doing stuff, let's just say. Um,. She stops in the middle of it, and she's like, I really like you. Like, with crazy eyes. And I can, was like... Can you pause it so we can appreciate the fact that a man who's this cross-eyed would ever say crazy eyes and open his eyes to that size? <laughs> <laughs> this bitch had the craziest eyes as his right eye drifts off to the fucking left. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, we shouldn't do this. And I was like, this chick is going to be a fucking wrench in the gears of my life. I'm shutting this thing down. A couple months back, I get a message. I get a new friend requesting a message very late at night. But I'll give you the gist of the DMs. The DMs were, <clears throat> hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. It's kitties. I'm just reaching out. Uh, we haven't talked in a long time, whatever. And, um, yeah, I hope you're well or whatever. So I even was being nice, and I said, wow, what an unexpected pleasant surprise. Just quickly, so he's he's explaining how this DM exchange is, is going, mm -hmm. but he's making a hot, like, it didn't go in any way like this. First of all, he engaged contact first. I think she sent him a friend request, but he, he started the conversation. Second of all... He... Wait a minute now, I don't believe you. Are you telling me that this gentleman is lying to us? Oh yeah, 100%. Secondly, I mean... <laughs> oh. He he's given himself a very sympathetic uh, assessment of of what kind of messages he was sending, <laughs> and it certainly didn't it didn't play out how he how he just said. So, so just bear th that th in mind. this this chick, right? Um, what is it, Kitty or something? Yeah, Kitties. We just call her. Yeah. K Kitties. Yeah. Like, is she? Is this? A, like, is this the low point of her life where she's like, oh god, I did I did make out with this guy? She uh, <laughs> she was on Jesse's show the other day, and she she said that immediately after it all happened, she went home and had a panic attack. No doubt. <laughs> Oh, she's does she have PTSD of uh, making out of a fucking methed out clown? <laughs> she hears a squeak sound and she ducks for cover. <laughs> I mean, I don't know well, what. I she mean, was I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, alcohol is a hell of a thing, right? <laughs> you, get, you get enough of that in you, suddenly both of the clowns looking like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing as well about this whole saga is that Mersh talks about this as if he got anywhere with her. I, he, I think he basically brushed second base, maybe. I think he might have got a bit of a feel of a tit and kissed her. And that was well, he said he he said he shut it down, which I never believe. What it, you're so you're saying she's she's an attractive chick, and he's got her, and they're making out, and then he's like, no, no, I'm going to shut this down. That I find very hard to believe. And she she obviously has a different take on that. She she doesn't quite agree that he was the one that shut it down, and I'm inclined to probably agree. I mean. I Maybe How long ago was this supposed to be? Was this like uh, recently or years and years and years ago? He was still fat. So this this was maybe like a year. This was Vegas. So this was, um, if you remember that picture he took of his hotel room with him. Oh my God, like really? Thick and fat in the background. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God damn. <laughs> so yeah, she, I mean, she had no idea he was that fat as well, apparently. Um, well, she must have when she tried to put her arms around him. <laughs> The way she describes the encounter as well is is quite hideous. I've put a few clips of it in here, but she talks about his penis size. She talks about the fact that he doesn't know intimacy, that he didn't know what to do with his hands. <laughs> did he try to did he try to get her off by clawing her? <laughs> <laughs> Can you picture his little T Rex claw slapping her tits? <laughs> Starts laughing and just leaves. Just scratching and trying to prod his claw up. I'm imagining a half-naked merch chasing her out of a hotel room with his little claw arms in the air, bullfrogging his neck out to full length. Is it like a mating display? <laughs> and other people are screaming and running down the hallways. Making like an alligator rattle sound. <laughs> Glad to see you're doing well. 
Glad to see you're in a good place. And, uh, yeah, I hope you're well, too. You know, sorry. Sorry about how shit played out. So I go, don't worry. I, you know, it's water under the bridge. I stopped everything anyway. And then she goes, stopped what? And I was like, stopped us from from fucking because we we were we we were gonna fuck. <laughs> oh, okay, so um, this is fun. These are pictures of Mersh that she. Oh, I thought took. you just threw the picture in for like a palate cleanser and his goofy fucking eyes. <laughs> no, these. Uh, so after they had their whatever it was, uh, Mersh took her to uh, I think In and Out. Uh, okay, can you explain to me? This is Vegas, right? How long ago was Vegas? Um, probably a year and a half, maybe two years at max. Okay, how the fuck? He's complaining about wanting a stylist, but like. How do you go from a haircut that looks passable with a groomed beard and a mustache to that both of the clown shit? Like, what the fuck happened to make you like, do you understand? Like, it's so weird that he'd say, I need a stylist. This looks fine, Mersh. Why did you get rid of this and go to that? <laughs> because keeping this requires maybe grooming less pounds of weight. Oh, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> so, like, like, because you look at his face there, and you don't picture a grotesquely fat man. Now, underneath that is a whole load of problems. <laughs> no, no, because his 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 uh his beard right like highlights his chin, so it makes it look more aesthetic, right? Sure. Like it's sculpted. It looks yeah, it's good. It's, I don't know why you changed this. What the fuck are you thinking? Yeah, he's onto a winner here. He, you know, tidy up the sides like he's done there. A little bit sure. on the top. Yeah, he's balding, but you know he. He can probably perfectly presentable like that. Yeah, I don't know what he's. I don't know what he's thinking, doing what he's doing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you just gain that much weight, and then you just you just desperately grabbing for anything. You just <laughs> oh god, just maybe this is what di- maybe this is what did it. Maybe like her running, screaming from the hotel room, and he's like, "It's over. <laughs> I'm just gonna eat as much as I want. I quit." <laughs> yeah, that this was his bottom. This was <laughs> this was the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, again, so he's at in and out, and she's the one taking the pictures. So she's just here, basically mocking him by taking very embarrassing pictures, and you'll see more of them in a minute. <laughs> so this is Mersh's massive tray of fries that he's eating on his own. She's not eating, by the way. Uh, this is oh wait, this is all his. Yeah, this is all his. He's, he's basically organized like a mukbang <laughs> for for her to watch. That's a lot of fries. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it's like 10 pounds. Jesus Christ, it's like 10 pounds of potatoes, Marsh. <laughs> I guess Shillelagh really is his last name, huh, you Irish fuck? Holy fucking shit. And uh, you probably spotted the uh, the get-up he's got there, the, the classic cream blazer over a <laughs> wrestling T-shirt. Very uh, nothing, nothing, nothing gets women hotter than your, your wrestling T-shirt and 40 pounds of potatoes on the table. <laughs> just love that like it's not enough that he's he's got his like hands occupied with a burger with two different foods yeah he can't he can't pick do i want to eat the burger or do i want to eat the fries and i like how the burger to fry ratio is so fucked up in this <laughs> like that burger they're like five times the amount of fries you know than there are burgers like it's the opposite of what you would expect <laughs> Did he not notice her, like, treating him like a zoo animal, taking pictures as he fed in the wild? <laughs> the funny thing is, well, she actually stood up to get more of his bald head. <laughs> How did he... <laughs> How did he miss this? He was far too occupied with his claws wrapped around a burger. Look at it, it's like, yeah, it's like a little T-Rex, he's got his mail, he can't look up, because his body isn't built to do that. It's not like humans. He can't, he can't pivot when he's gulleting down his food. <laughs> We're kind of, you know, fooling around a little bit, and oh. then oh. Mersh has no idea what he's doing. He has no idea what to do. So I thought maybe he was really drunk or something. You have to describe so, what that means. It means that, like, when a guy is trying to touch you, but he doesn't know how, like, it's an awkward. Are you like, saying he doesn't know where your hole is? I'm saying he doesn't know what he doesn't know about intimacy. It can just you, you didn't. I <laughs> uh, can you can I, I just want you to picture this scene, right? They're both drunk in a hotel room, and he somehow got her to show up after she took her zoo pictures of him. And he's he's like whispering in her ear, trying to be like a, a you know a player, like you know a hardcore player. 
and he's fingering her belly button. <laughs> His little claw T-Rex paw. <laughs> it's like, you like that, bitch? <laughs> Boy, you're awfully dry. <laughs> I can't seem to get this wet. <laughs> and he thinks he... <laughs> He thinks he's like not breaking the hymen. He's like, is this your first time? Holy shit, you're so tight. <laughs> Are you a virgin, baby? I can't even get a finger in there. And he's just getting so excited about how tight it's going to be for him. Oh, it's so tight. That's probably what made her leave. She's like, fuck this. Just something was off. Like something was just really, really off. So I thought he was like worried or nervous. So I blew a raspberry. Like one of those, like. <laughs> I went down on his fat tummy and I just blew a raspberry like he would a retarded kid. He just giggled. <laughs> Can you, how mad was he? I bet that really pissed him off. I bet he got so mad when she blew a raspberry on his fat fucking tummy. The funny thing is, I don't think it was on his tummy. I think it was like on his goya. I blew a raspberry on his neck. He oh. wants to talk. Oh, right on the goiter, on his mini gut. On the mini gut that grows out the side of his head. His neck lump. <laughs> I was my... checking for cancer. <laughs> Tasted terrible. Shit, and just for the record, that's the only reason why I'm even discussing this is because he went on three episodes. Of all my body, whatever, so let's, yeah, below average. Change Would you body. say it was a cute one? No. So, <laughs> um, but are we talking two <laughs> inches, three inches, four inches? What are we talking? I, four max. Four max. Uh, oh. I haven't reinvented Is she anything. talking about his dick? Pause. Are yeah. we talking about his dick here? Yeah, we're talking about his dick size, you know. Oh, god damn. So she's blowing... God, how it's like ritualistic humiliation. So she's blowing raspberries on his neck goiters and then uh, checking out his tiny little four-inch dick. <laughs> he's probably so fucking angry. I don't really understand that. I think that he's kind of like yelling at me, but like yelling at all women at the same time. Like, well, that's kind of what this seems like. You're right about that. That's that's how it always works with Merch. That's, that's what he does. Okay, so these are the DMs, and they're uh, some of the greatest. <laughs> so, Oh, this is the CB radio shit, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it starts off, as you see there, Mer, she's the one that instigates it. Kind of surprised to see a friend request from you. Why is that? Are we not friends? And Mer says, I mean, you stopped talking to me, and you didn't seem very pleased with me last time we I talked to you. And to be honest, I was a little fucking hurt, because I bent over backwards to try and be a gentleman around you, <laughs> me lady. Because I didn't want to be a scumbag and hurt your feelings. And I felt like it backfired and you ended up hating me. <laughs> Regardless. It's nice to see you. I hope you are well. And then she replies with a bunch of stuff. Uh, typical woman replies, really. And then he's like, I've been pretty convinced that you hate my fucking guts, frankly. <laughs> so he's just... He's really circling in on, on this whole, like... This feels like a very nice guy approach, right? Oh, like, yeah. why don't you like me? I was a gentleman. I was nice. But you hate my guts. I was so nice to you, baby. I respected you as a person. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, oh, here we go. This, yeah. this is, this is, uh. <laughs> you told me when we gave you all the vodka and shit that you were going to bring it to your dad. Am I wrong? So he's talking about the fact that he gave us some vodka. And I think he's just basically <laughs> reminding her that I did you a, I did you a solid there. I got you some vodka. So yeah, he's doing great, yada yada yada. Single now, surviving, got my own place, car, etc. Show is doing well. I started going to the gym about two months ago. I got a long way to go there, but I'm there like four to five days per week, getting in shape, going the going to the gun range, preparing for the apocalypse, shit like that. And then immediately she turns the icon into a gay flag. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, don't make me gay. Uh, yeah, here's the... Uh... <laughs> oh, I love this, yeah. Shit. So she's asking, like, uh, the pride shit makes me laugh. Shit, several. I'm about to give... I'm about to gift Royce the first pistol I bought. I upgraded. Took my concealed carry class and paid for the license. So that's on the way. Probably getting an AK soon. Jogging, shooting, learning first aid and ham radio shit. <laughs> Being a nerd... <laughs> I love how like he, his his way into this chick is like 
I want you to know how much I'm prepping for the apocalypse <laughs> to get you horny, baby. I'll know how to use a ham radio and an AK. But also still being a drunk degen. F- finding balance. <laughs> Fucking hell. Were your ears ringing or something when you added me? Yeah, I have a friend who's a gun dealer. I could buy a modern AK now uh, if I wanted, but specifically wants an Egyptian or a Serbian one. <laughs> Keep an eye out. Da 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 da. Sounds hella fancy. Oh my god, do you think his quality of guns are like his quality of cars? Like, is the barrel gonna fucking explode in his face when he shoots this thing? <laughs> are we gonna read a news article about a fat man murdered by a fucking malfunctioning gun in like a month or two? <laughs> uh, it sounds hella fancy. It's just weird. I got a friend request. So he's still on that. He's still kind of thinking about why she, he's thinking of her motives of why she's talking to him probably hoping that you know there's some kind of romantic avenue there i haven't felt much of you since i figured you hated me but you legit popped in my head last night and now you added me so it's weird so he's you know thinking about her baby it's kismet come on <laughs> it's meant to be it's destiny <laughs> i didn't leave because of you well i'm just saying from my perspective it got weird after vegas i felt shitty you said some weird shit in the chat. Royce had told me you and him spoke about him helping you with some tech stuff. I just took it as merch, fuck off. Which is just such a woman, like, just all this complaining, all this kind of whining. <laughs> like, I don't think this is gonna, like, the women like he, this. He's, he, no, he's needling her. Right? Like, if you're, if you're gonna go talk to somebody, like, in, in any conversation, would you like this? Like, it's constant needling. Like, you know, that pessimistic shit. Like, oh my god, you don't like me. Oh my god, why don't you like me? Oh my god, why did you act like that? Nobody wants to listen to that shit. Man or a woman. <laughs> uh, which is why I let him keep that stream deck and bought my own with ROTC money, although I still have my cat magnets. So she sent him some cat magnets, apparently. Those are on my fridge, not on Royce's. <laughs> I also have the stuffed cat ball thing. So he's, yeah, he's essentially telling her all of the gifts that she's given him. He still has those. He still treasures those. God, he's just, yeah, he keeps the conversation going, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, she's... Look at it. It's all like one-word replies from her. Yeah, it's fucking paragraphs say. from him. I was going to say, yeah, like she's given him so many outs to just be like, yep, all right, see ya. I did keep it, but whatever. I look at my... Fr- <laughs> Whenever I look at my fridge, I feel like shit. So he's talking about the magnets that she bought him. So every time... He <laughs> I thought he was just talking about in general. Because <laughs> I know I'm going to eat it all. <laughs> Yeah, he just shoulders down, just a, a sigh of, of <laughs> just Here we go again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now look at this, I mean, t- long walls of text. I was dating a girl who was uh, fa- uh, failing, sorry, I was dating a girl who was failing in every uh, conceivable way to the point where she knew, she knew it and allowed me to kind of do whatever I wanted. You and I linked up, <laughs> so that's what he calls, that's what he calls romantic encounters. I only shut it down as to not be bad to you, and it got weird. So I assume. Oh, and he's he's doing that um, capitalized thing that he did in the sales pitch. He's back to the fucking timeshare guy. So I assumed I was the cunt, which in some ways I always am, and still was in that scenario. When you were like, "I really like, I really like you," I felt the same, and I knew anything I did would have been me taking advantage of a moment without giving you the full context. And I legit had to channel every goddamn bit of my moral fiber to do the right thing. It's so whiny. Yeah, right? Really, Do you get really that feeling whiny. too? It really is whiny. It's whiny yeah. needling. <clears throat> it just comes across pathetic. I think, like, I, I, it's just the nature of the, of just why the and can't like you said needling, but it's the continuous needling and just keep revisiting and keep going on and on and on about the same. And women, like, I mean, I don't know what his angle is here. If his angle is that he wants to court her favor in any way then i don't think this is <laughs> think this, uh, this is work. obviously not where you can look at her replies it's all like one word one emoticon you know what i mean a lot well, of lols and shit that emoticon's uh interesting because it's responding to him saying that he shut it off he shut it down so she did the whole thinking uh emoji there well i felt you didn't care much for me as a person and i didn't understand what, exactly what was going on but i knew it was something but yeah, you have your faults like anyone, but if uh, you want anything else, you are fucking true. <laughs> and that's rare. Hey, don't forget that's that's capitalized as well. I can be a prick to people uh, who have PvP enabled. I don't know what that... Player, player versus, versus player. player? What a weird... Why would you put a video game reference in there? Oh, that's really... <laughs> I don't like that. 
uh, but you are a genuine person who's honest, and I uh, I can't go around tearing flowers out of the ground at my age. <laughs> that's a that's a reference I'm sure she'll appreciate and uh, totally understand. <laughs> I can't go around tearing flowers out of the ground at my age. So he's probably he, I, I guess that's a reference to him being an older guy courting a younger. Well, if you look earlier, he mentions his age explicitly, and he says, "After I've been doing this for 38 years." <laughs> I'd be lying if I said it. It's not the one thing I kick myself. Yeah, so he's there again. It's talking. just so much. Yeah, it's so much kneeling and negativity and whining. So she interestingly has a message here. I must say there is uh, that nothing would have happened from my end. So that's a key thing that she's stating that she helped sort of shut it down as well. I, could I love how you can. In, uh, yeah, I love how you can interpret that last sentence. I could feel something was off, as in your four-inch cock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm when I immediately felt that I knew something was off, that I was dating a toddler in a man's body. He wasn't really good. I think she said that he uh, he actually pre came as well. He pre ejaculated. Uh, Are you fucking serious? Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Does he throw his little T Rex arms up and go ooh when he <laughs> when he lets it out? <laughs> Just a giant bullfrog. <laughs> <laughs> Just a deep inhale. It's the largest it gets. It looks like a balloon. <laughs> So yeah, here she's she's basically stating that she's also responsible for shutting it off. And then... God, uh, that's a that's such a fucking kill shot. That last fucking thing. After I was with you, I had a panic attack. You might as well just hang yourself, Mersh. It's over. <laughs> I crawled into my mom's bed actually. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Pretty fucking tragic. Obviously, Mersh wasn't too happy about that. When you try to go cuddle with me, don't say it wouldn't have happened. Ha ha ha. I tried. No, I said, do you want me to stay? You said, if you want to. That's never a good answer. And also, I could have cuddled you all night and done nothing. I'm a woman. I love to cuddle. Then Mersh responds with, you literally were like, we could just cuddle in there. Yeah, sorry. I've never in my life seen that mean actually cuddle. And Mersh is... Oh, I love some... I, that little passive aggressive ha 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 thing. It's like the... Say, um... yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's he's... like that Yoshi story from... Have you ever seen that 4chan uh, copy pasta? No, where it's like, oh, oh, it's this guy who's like has a weird fetish, and he's like, I wonder what Yoshi's eggs smell like. Ha ha! Wouldn't that be weird if you sniffed Yoshi's eggs? Ha 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 ha! Yeah, it's it's just weird. It's um, I think I think it's because right now Mersh is he's preparing himself to be antagonistic because he disagrees with her take of events, but so he's he's kind of needling her back, like a bit more seriously. Yeah, he's but also adding it. the yeah, yeah. He's, he's adding the ha ha has to diminish the. The serious. Oh, so you think he's probably by this point starting to go into cover your ass mode? Maybe he's getting nervous, and he's like, "Oh shit!" Oh yeah, <laughs> I think so. I think you're right. Probably for the best. I would have been like, "Do you actually mean cuddle? Fuck out of here!" For future reference, ain't ain't nobody coming into my room after 11 p.m. to do anything but get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and why why fucking capitalize but? <laughs> yeah, that close to fucked as well. <laughs> Not trying to say cuddling ain't happening, but you coming into my room for cuddling is like trying to get your dessert before you eat your goddamn bro broccoli. <laughs> I like how her response is basically, I'm never going to fuck you, if you look at what he said and how she responded. He's like, nobody's coming to my room after 11 for anything but fucking, and she's like, oh, you wait, I'll cuddle you. So she's basically saying, I'm never going to fuck you. <laughs> yeah. You try to cuddle me without sex, first I'll have the ASPCA come pick your ass up. And this is where he starts turning. This is where the incel inside of him just rages and bursts through his chest. And stop trying to play it off like I wasn't in that goal zone. <laughs> just stop it. I only stopped because I was like, well, damn, Susie is actually kind of a dope person and might actually expect me to be halfway human to her. And she deserves a dude who isn't a self-obsessed megalomaniac. Damn it, lol. I like he. It's so weird hearing him put words like that, and like PVP and dope. Like you're wicked fresh, girl. This is Gucci fire. Like give it a rest, dude. You're fucking forty. <laughs> it's just at some point you really, you you don't look good saying stuff like that. You're you're totally right about the flow of the conversation. It went from him doing the Mister Nice Guy needling shit hmm. until like now he's getting straight up antagonistic and he's getting mad. <laughs> he's getting fucking mad at her. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can try and dust yourself off and pretend like you didn't uh, You didn't have to come back and pick up your bra the next day. Keep being fucking cute. 
<laughs> I did pick up the bra. Uh, bra off is not the goal zone. Goal zone is you at least got a finger in me or or a claw. Oh, I know. I like. I like better that she's like that's like junior high shit. She's having to explain to him how fucking far out of the game, quote unquote, as he would put it, she fucking he is. Yeah, like literally twenty five years after he should have learned this, <laughs> she's she's educating him on how to be with a woman in an intimate scenario. I just I just wish somebody would uh, like edit one of these where she just responds, "Mersh, for God's sake, you figured my belly button. Give it a rest." <laughs> <laughs> Mersh, you were clawing my stomach. <laughs> but let's be real. Only thing I had to do finish. I, I don't know. Only thing I had to do finish that night is that I don't know. It, it, it's he, 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 you could tell like he's yeah he's getting more antagonistic. He's losing focus on typing. He's probably getting mad. He's getting mad as we watch this <laughs> unfold. Was was be an even bigger prick and play the scumbag game. You kind of make me regret being a good dude even more now. <laughs> do you know how well I treated you, slut? <laughs> you should be thanking me. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you. I'm a nice guy, you fucking bitch. <laughs> uh, I mean, I thought we were both being real with each other and actually opening up here, but clearly you're not in a place where you want to seriously talk about shit as it happened, which is whatever. Sorry for bringing it up. Uh, well, I like you being nice. I like seeing the glimpse of a nice person you... But if talk if if taking your shirt off and telling dudes I really like you while making out with them is not a huge deal and just everyday type of shit for you, then I mean own that then, lol. Then she tells him that she's made out with three guys in the last past ten years. Uh, one of them was you, and she, that's, he's the only one that gave her PTSD. Read between the lines, Mersh, and end the conversation. Fuck. Yeah. yeah, she got a panic attack. In one of those occasions. <laughs> right. She needed her mother's fucking emotional support for one of these, Mersh. Figure it out. Uh, Mersh then says, don't get mad at me here. I was being nice. He does that all the time. I was nice to you. I was being nice the whole time, lol. Read that shit back. You had to start with the, well, I mean, it wasn't like that. Okay, right, it wasn't like that. And then, uh, yeah, I'm frustrated because I'm being honest with you. Yeah, I'm being honest too. I'm always honest to a goddamn fault. <laughs> You're the yeah, one rewriting yeah. shit. You want to come up at that halfway. I know what the fuck is up. Are you a sweet girl looking for love for a chick trying to or a chick trying to draw lines in the sand about what kind of sexual activity rates as low enough to still be a good girl? Dude, oh, I like, up. I like, I like the one. Oh, yeah, the dude grow up from him. That's that's the point. It's completely flipped. <laughs> now we're not even addressing her as a woman. It's now he's mad. <laughs> now he's straight up mad. <laughs> you know what women hate about me. Well, this is this is going to be a classic. The fact that I'll tell you why you're retarded and you'll still ask to come into my room and cuddle. All due respect. <laughs> All due respect. You added me. I was actually being nice and genuine, but you can't... Uh, but you can't your ego go. I guess you can't let your ego go. You're everything you project onto the men you hate. Oh my god, that's... Projection in itself, Merch. <laughs> I, I, really, I really do love how this has devolved into him being like, listen... You stupid fucking whore. I'm the best thing that's ever happened to you. I'm a nice guy, and I'm going to smack you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll tell you you're retarded, and you'll still come back to me. <laughs> I'm going to spit in your face, and you're going to marry me. <laughs> and the saddest thing about it, I'll still be nice again when you reinvent yourself for the tenth time, because I'm capable of more introspection and self-improvement, forgiveness, than you'll discover by 70. That is, I mean... He's so mad. He's he really is getting mad. Also, the idea that he can actually write a sentence stating that he's capable of any introspection, any self improvement, is a, it's laughable. I don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> I, I mean, I think most people, if they were in this conversation, would pick up on a couple of things really quick. Mm. Uh, one, she didn't like the experience. Two, she just wants to not talk about it. And three, she obviously saw it as being different than he did, but he can't let that go, right? Like, he can't read between the lines. It's pretty obvious. She's saying, like, just let it go. I don't want to talk about this. Yeah. He has to have her believe that it happened the way he wishes it happened. He he can't... I don't know. It's, 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 it's the same thing, like you said earlier. It's the same thing about the fact he can't let go. He couldn't let go of the Matt Christians and thing. There's so many opportunities in, in his... This is the great one of the great things about him is there's always opportunities for him to recover potentially bad situations or, or situations that could lead to becoming bad situations. 
and he's literally a few words away from clearing everything up and being and everything being fine. Instead, it's just dig, dig, dig. It's just let's let's see how far down I can descend into the, into this. Well, and what's the point of even wasting your time on it? Like, if he's viewing this as she's being deceptive, then be just like, "Fuck off! I don't want to talk to you." Right? Yeah. Um, but obviously, this is not. I don't. What? What are you doing? Like, she's not going to fuck you. It's, she's made it pretty abundantly clear between the lines and explicitly so. So why are we even chasing that rabbit hole? You know. <laughs> uh, he goes. I spoke to a bunch of your friends behind your back as soon as it happened. Lol, lol, lol. lol. Please keep doing this. Ha 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 ha. I ain't doing this de- deceptive voice message shit. Type it out or you're full of shit. Wow, dude, no wonder you disappeared. And she's saying, all I've been saying in the voice messages is that you're way off base, you misunderstood, and you're being an asshole. I tried to hook up with you, then, this is him quoting her, I tried to hook up with you, then immediately ran behind your back to your business partner and friends to rewrite the narrative. That didn't work, so I disappeared. So that's in reference, I guess, to her. As soon as this finished, she went to Royce to sort of clear up, I guess. Well, that just makes him look even worse. Like what? Basically, he's quoting her saying, "I was so ashamed of seeing you naked that I tried to make people forget it ever happened." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, she goes, "You're the one legit fucked up." Wow, <laughs> you're out of your mind. I love if a girl is if a, a girl is telling you that you're out of your mind. You've really hit a point. Yeah. Yeah, it's time to just delete conversation history delete contact <laughs> just just move on this is insane hey quick question did you really talk about our dealings behind my back to Royce and Ballysong because I kept my mouth shut from that day did you really discuss those things with other people even though I didn't I need to know so is he talking about them being together you, you have to remember this is um this message chain is about a year after it happened and um, I don't know if I've even set this part up, but uh, she, Kitty's, this Kitty's girl, was mm-hmm. in an e-relationship. Uh, she was an e-girlfriend to Ballysong, the artist guy, the, the guy that responded to Mersh's original post. Okay. So they started the relationship after the Las Vegas falling around stuff. So I think Mersh is probably just, um, yeah, probably just talking about uh, the, the fact that Bally, specifically Ballysong didn't know about this. Okay, I got you. So, no hard feelings. And so this, I, I'm not going to read all these at all, but it just gives you an idea of, of the Spurg Fest that uh, that happened immediately after. It was so the stream weird. happens, right? The stream happens, all this shit gets dumped, she's talking, mm-hmm. and then he goes into a tailspin on Twitter and on his own streams. Oh yeah, and this is this is the the tip of an iceberg. It's, it's mostly Bally Song and him going sort of toe-to-toe. So Mersh's feed for three weeks solid, not kidding, no exaggeration, for three weeks solid, every tweet of his is just more and more about about this whole event, calling Bally Song a simp, and then just, you can see posts here of him calling her a stripper and talking about how she can't look after her kids and that uh, all his enemies are pedophiles. <laughs> just, Wait, just... didn't he throw a shit fit because um, Owen Benjamin mentioned his mother? Oh yeah, yeah. The... But he's gonna go after a kid. Yeah, I mean, it's it's Mersh. I mean, we're, we're, he's entirely capable of double standards. I guess so. Okay, so this is the uh, as you can see there that this is his game that he invented, where he he cuts out a picture of her in her former can girl days. He covered it originally completely all with those black little squares, and uh, like I said, he's now going to on stream reveal. Reveal her new. Is that so? He put her in a burka and then asked for money to take it off. Yeah, yeah. He called it reverse cam girl burka or something, and uh, five hundred dollars gets one piece off. So every five hundred dollars that gets donated, you get another piece. So, so, I mean, so she's ma- she's making him money. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, in this situation, you've got to ask yourself who's the cam girl and who's the simp. I mean, the the trouble is as well, and this is where Mersh is actually right. Bally song. He's a crazy Polish person. He, he's literally un, like unhinged, like without. So he's a little off-balanced Polish dude that's e-dating her. He was. I don't think they are. Or was. Either. Was. Yeah. But he's in- incredibly protective of her at, at this point. You want to see that bad mom pussy? Huh? You want to see that bad mom's fucking blown out asshole? Every five hundred bucks, we rip off a piece. Reverse cam go burka. He 
looks he was it. He looks so sad. Look at him. It's just he looks depressed. He looks sad and depressed about this. Yeah, that that <laughs> shot there, just the the glazed over look in his eyes of Yeah, just... look at it's just where what has my life taken me to? Yeah, just realizing that this is what I'm reduced to now. This is my life. This is this is the the golden egg that I thought was going to fix every problem in my, and this is what I'm doing with it. How, how much money did he make from this? Did anybody actually pay five hundred dollars to take a piece of this shit off? Oh yeah, yeah. He he he. I mean that that thing was covered head to toe originally. Uh, so he's made a couple of thousand at least from from that and the deal is he's going to be using this money to he use it as sort of vegas money basically for his gambling for his gambling yeah of course <laughs> they were my friends bali's my friend oh so this is him Listen, do you remember in that chat log there was a load of like voice messages this is him uh, yeah. watching his own stream back where he's playing those messages essentially, uh, and the the messages were a total washout. They were just, it was just more of her saying the things she was already saying. So there's no there's no secret message where she's like, "Yeah, baby, I wanted your dick so bad." <laughs> Funnily enough, no. <laughs> oh uh, wow. Yeah, we we were promised it. Mersh did he he really set the stream up as if this is going to be the big reveal, and yeah, it was all very much uh, <laughs> just a waste of time. And we were together, so I told him what happened. <laughs> they were together. I spoke to Royce because I was confused. I'll keep doing this. <laughs> I'm sorry, but drunk me is now laughing at six months ago, drunk me, who's laughing at fucking kitties because that's hilarious. And I'll keep doing this. Just <laughs> Your first thought, like. Uh, genuine laugh? Does that sound like a uh, genuine sort of. Uh, it just, it just sounds like a. It just it sounds like a really. Uh, an embarrassing situation. I, I would want it to be over, wouldn't you? If you were in that situation, I would want it not to address it, to be, to be honest with you. I, I don't have a dog in the fight with this because I don't, I don't know kitties at all. I barely know I, I don't know any of them. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of, I've, I've been able to, this is one merch thing that I've been able to sort of watch from the sidelines without any involvement at all. And, um, but yeah, I just don't understand it. Like, again, it's the same thing of, of Mersh where he could have nicked this in the bud so much earlier and it not be a big thing as, or at least anywhere near as big a thing now she actually got a lawyer involved I haven't put the clip in there but she got a lawyer involved to try and submit a cease and desist which of course was probably not the wisest thing to do Merce right sort of laughed that off but yeah you know he's he's, he's certainly taking it well I mean you'll see in a minute just <laughs> the, the, the how well he's taking it yeah yeah was immediately run in front lash and try to get everybody on your side and send me little voice messages like a duplicitous little bitch. You're a lying whore. Bally is a fucking simp who's destroyed his entire fucking online life now because of you. Sounds like you were sliding into my DMs while right after and you said me and Bally were together. That means that as soon as you and Bally weren't talking you slid right back into Mersh's DMs, didn't you? You little fucking whore. You wow. little fucking whore. The moment Bally laughed out at you the first time and you wanted nothing to do with it, you slid right back into my DMs, reaffirmed everything I've said, and made a fucking asshole of yourself. I'm sorry. This is the greatest content ever for me. I don't, I don't know. It's why. just he's yeah. He's really mad. Like, has this been ongoing for weeks now? Oh yeah. I, again, this is one of those cases where I could have put an hour's worth of him being madder than this. Even it's just first of all, I didn't. I just didn't have the time to fish through hours <laughs> sure. and hours of of Nightwave to try and find it. So I just I grabbed whatever I could. Um, which I mean, it was good enough. But I mean, for him, when he when he does that psychotic leaning into the camera as if he's talking directly to you i don't even know she's watching and just the 
the the poison, the visceral kind of just anger. Just <laughs> even if you took him at his word a hundred percent, right? Like let's say he was a hundred percent correct about everything. Um, you still are left with a story where he didn't get anywhere, she didn't stay to cuddle, um, and then there was no contact after that, which should tell you a lot. Like she didn't call him the next day and say, Let's fuck. She fucking disappeared for a year, didn't she? That should pretty much tell you everything about the about the incident. Now, of course, she could have left because she was embarrassed that Mersh didn't want to take it any further. But um, I don't know. There's just a convin just as convincing a story that she left because she was horrified by the incident and she had herself a panic attack and she uh, <laughs> she didn't she didn't feel good about it. It's just hard for me to accept that because if he's all into the you know the philosophy of I'm a player. I, I just don't believe that, like, somebody who's that deep into, you know, the pickup artist shit that he seems to be, you know, nagging and all that stuff, is going to be the type of guy that's going to be like, yeah, no, I'm going to call it quits here, right? Like, he's got this chick, and he's just going to be like, no, I'm a gentleman. <laughs> After we watch a clip of him screaming, you are, at <laughs> the camera. And he's not getting any anywhere else. <laughs> like, I know that he's a Big E celebrity, and I know that he's, his Discord is rampacked full of... 35 year old single moms that will probably leave their husbands for him of but, course but i mean other than that he's he's he he's not walking up the street and getting eyeballed that's well honest. listen i i know what women like okay you know oh, yeah, and yeah. uh mersh has got all of it um a, a broken 140,000 mile bmw a cat because women love cats uh alcoholism it's always a really good, uh, good approach to getting a woman. Uh, clown hair, they fucking love that. Uh, stained blazers with wrestling t-shirts. Uh, eating 40 pounds of potatoes at one sitting, always really gets them wet. Uh, claw hands, it's a good, another good one. He's just, uh, he's Mr. Charming. I, I don't understand why he's single still. It's so unfortunate. Me and Mally were together. No, you weren't. You were never together. Oh my God! You do you think? <clears throat> do you think he's the type of dude that's his ego so out of control that if a woman shows interest in him, he sends him like one of those Nightwave T-shirts or you know with his face on it <laughs> with a note attached? It's like, aren't you a lucky bitch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think he's exactly that kind of guy. I think he's a kind of guy that if he by chance met a girl. Uh, bar or anything like that the first thing out of his mouth is is i'm on the internet <laughs> oh i think that's the second thing i think the first move he does is he sets down those bmw keys <laughs> <laughs> and he makes it really loud you know like just you know he wants that to resonate throughout the bar and then he says i'm on the internet <laughs> yes it's the classic one-two punch it's bmw <laughs> internet <laughs> it's it's car and clout and then he, he leans back a little bit so his tits are pushing out and they really show off the shirt that says Nightwave with his face on it. <laughs> Literally thousands of miles apart and he was just buying you Steam games. Oh, kitties. How unfortunate. How unfortunate. You could have had this, kitties. How unfortunate. <laughs> But truth be told, you would have given your left hit to have a fucking, to have another baby daddy that could send you child support. You would have given your left hit for that shit. Look how truth fucking is, is sad that he is. Bally Song is a simp, and you're a whore. His eyes look like they're and tearing up. Like you see big... that kind of glazed? Yeah, do you see how big they went when he said whore as well? Bally song is a simp. <laughs> and you're a whore. Just deranged. Like off his meds or something. Like, like it would be one of those true crime Netflix documentaries where this is like, you know, the opening before they go into the murder mystery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the setup. <laughs> yeah, right? It's episode one. Yeah. Like, it's one of those things where it's so crazy you have to watch it because you have to know how it got to this <laughs> like what possible events ended up with this moment of just pure like yeah it, and it the contrast crazy. between him and the cat and the bow tie at the top <laughs> just makes him look sadder 
<laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's because he's going through a proper breakdown. I can see the glazed like, eyes, like you said. He's going through a real breakdown, and he like that cat is a symbol of what he's got left of the only thing that seems to. It's the only pussy he could get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Close that thing as well. And we will, and I will, continue until the goddamn bitter end playing Reverse Cam Go Burka. <laughs> the eyes. Just, just <laughs> despair. Just pure fucking despair. Right, that's. I think that's everything. Um, fucking hell, we finally got through it. I'm, I really apologize for keeping you so long. Uh, no, it's it's fine. Yeah, I probably I, I probably I uh, was really meandered funny. on too long myself too. But I, I, it was fucking fascinating. Like I, yeah. there's so much behind this. Yeah, it's um, and again, I, you know, I could I could go on another few hours about the stuff I've missed out that's just as good as this. But yeah, I figured that I'd I'd pin you on the things that I thought you would kind of grab hold of and, and have something to say on it and you've as i was listening like obviously i try and not laugh over what you say but it's kind of hard to but I was, I was definitely catching like you know isolated clips here and there that i know are going to be perfect and i know pretty much where i'm going to sort of well, I, yeah them. i look forward to all 30 seconds of it being used <laughs> Could you i know i know how it is <laughs> i tend to i tend to be pretty good with with the uh, interviews just because i think that um that first of all people get very bored of my fucking take it's just the amount of depth to this dude it's kind of like i didn't know about any of the suicide baiting shit like the gofundme thing was funny as fuck <laughs> um him constantly getting called out on his bullshit and his lies was really entertaining <laughs> yeah. like it just doesn't end like mm -hmm. and, and you know i thought how long could he have lived on that dude's couch i thought it was like a year i didn't realize he was there for a fucking decade because he used to get the jokes about the couch and all that kind of stuff he didn't sleep on the couch at royce's he had his own bedroom and stuff but he used to talk about it as if Again, as if he had made it, he'd he'd talk about yeah, we've got a pool. I'm living, I'm I'm living a life that you guys dream of. Like those are the sorts of things he was saying at the time of staying at Royce's house. So well, just, if, if you if you think of it as being the height right now, let's say like he's in the height of um making it, quote unquote. Hmm. He's like year two of it, let's say, right? With the Patreon doing well, right, and making right. donations. Um, he's got another three years. Um, but if he's not saved up anything, you know what I mean? Like if he doesn't have a mm -hmm. game plan, if he's just throwing his money at the wall on broken BMWs and dumb shit and trips to Vegas to waste his money gambling, he's going to find himself at like 45 doing what? Eventually, I think the internet just generally does tire of you and, and, uh, and it does it in a much more accelerated way if you give them a lot of reasons to. And when it comes to somebody like Mersh, once you make that kind of once you take that turn where there's more people watching you for the reasons you don't want them watching you than there are you know fans of yours it's really really hard to just retain that that core fan base and it just dwindles and dwindles and dwindles we've seen it with the monday mats of the world and the dsps and well yeah you have to be kissed by the angels like dsp i think has probably got the luck of the devil right because that yeah, guy yeah. with bankruptcies and everything else is still holding on which oh, i think yeah. he's the exception to the rule true, uh, true. but yeah most people yeah unless even like the wildly popular ones um you know it's usually like five years at most you know mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like you're kind of done and it, it doesn't have to be a dramatic blow up but it's just going to diminish and diminish and diminish and then what are you doing dude what's your what's your plan b you know what what are you doing next because you need a next he's got this mentality where i think he thinks this is forever and um and look i mean there are people that have been around for like a decade and that are still you know still relevant and still whatever but again it's it's the idea that if you're behaving in the manner that Mersh is where where it's you know war with your own chat war with other other creators oh yeah that 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 will absolutely kill you more than anything the the mm -hmm. fighting with your own chat shit i didn't know about like the wignet stuff where you brought him in and then shit <laughs> yeah. on him or the bears and brought him in and shit on him like that's gonna build so much resentment no wonder our Mersh is um filled with posts like you know like, where you're saying like 20 a day 30 a day whatever um yeah. If he's if he's bringing them in and then telling them or talking to him like he did in that one uh, comment where he's like your menial fucking job like that is such a snobby shitty thing to say. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let you go anyway. Uh, sure. And uh, absolutely appreciate everything everything you've done tonight. So thanks again, man. 
yeah, yeah, it was good talking to you. Uh, good luck with the documentary, and uh, be sure to uh, you know tell me when it's coming out. I'll I'll be sure to link it out. Oh, definitely <laughs> help them spiral <laughs> a little. <laughs> All right, take it easy, man. Bye. Oh, where do we begin? Well, I thought we would start because this just came out. Porcelain just finished his documentary. So I think it's time we officially talk about Mersh. Our boy Mersh, comedy kingpin, the forever caller. Now, part one of the documentary by Porcelain, Terror Spurg, a Mersh documentary, just went up a day ago. And uh-oh, Mersh, I got bad news for you, buddy. I distinctly remember you saying this will be the least liked and viewed documentary he ever does? You're wrong on that. And that it'll never break twenty to 25,000 views. Did it in a day. Oh, ROTC sisters, I don't feel so good. Not, not like this. Now, for those of you in the chat that might be unfamiliar with Mersh, welcome to the list. Uh, you're all now on it. I'm sorry I couldn't save you earlier, uh, but welcome to the club, I guess. And I want you to know right now, That if I, I will be keeping track and I will be keeping tabs. And if I ever see people over here trying to play, trying to play cool with all of us here at Nightwave, but then if I ever go over to a gym stream and I see you donating to Jim and sucking his fucking fake cancer dick, you're done. Oh, you're done, kiddo. I'm sorry, everybody that gave a super chat. You're officially on the shit list now. You're done. It's over. There's no recovering from it. Mersh gets very mad if anybody donates over here or buys a hat. Speaking of hats, <laughs> I love shilling merch using Mersh. It just works so well. Oh, don't forget to hit that store and buy all the Rage Pig accessories you want. I'm going to holler shirts, masks, and everything else. We've even got little fanny packs based off of uh, fat people. And there might even be a cat-related item or two. I don't want to spoil the fun, but be, buy hats, chat. Buy the fucking hats. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, you're welcome. So, Porcelain releases his documentary on Mersh. And, of course, who's the first to come out of the gate to really give that uh, insightful review of how good the video is? Well, it's Ethan the Rage Pig Ralph himself. Porcelain's Mersh doc is lame. Sour grapes from a man who used to lick Mersh's taint on the daily. I'm also old enough to remember when uh, Porcelain left the internet like a bitch with the tail between his legs. Pussy behavior. Couldn't handle one week under the real spotlight. You know what's interesting about Ralph? And I, I noticed this too, and I think people misattribute this uh, to him being, uh, uh, you know, uh, a braggart. Uh, he has to emulate a daddy. So poor Ethan Ralph doesn't know who is my internet daddy. Now, when I was on stream with Nick, and we'll be talking about that later, I used uh, the phrase sour grapes. A few other phrases, too, that Ralph has now incorporated into his vernacular. And you'll also notice that Ethan has managed to embarrass himself on a really substantial level over the last couple of weeks, trying to brag to Gator about how well off he is. And why would he do that? Because his other daddy, his newer daddy, his cat boy daddy, talked about how wealthy and well off he was. When he's looking at Dalton driving a Tesla, when he's looking at Nick's million-dollar bank account, suddenly he's got to start showing off those nickel-plated rings and that swamp land down in Louisiana because he's rolling. He's a high roller, okay? He gets comped at the casinos. Generally, they comp you to casino because you're a fucking mark. But don't tell him that. It might devastate him a little bit, chat. So Ethan's the first out of the gate. This merch doc is shit. I don't like it. Of course, Mersh and uh, Ethan are friends, and he's going to stick up for his friend. But uh, Mersh decides to jump in, too, at his hot take. What does he think of that porcelain documentary about, you know, him? <laughs> what What's his call on it? What's he thinking? Actually, it was Owen Benjamin said he had credible information that porcelain was a pedophile. Then he canceled a second Owen doc and vanished. I don't know, Chet. I think you might have surpassed coping and, you know, seething when you go straight to pedophile accusations. 
I don't know how severe the assert this documentary is inflicted with just one part, a very gentle part, the foundational part, but to go instantly into, this guy's a fucking pedophile, makes me think that our boy here is a little bit upset. <laughs> Mersh might might be a little, in a little bit of a tizzy. I don't know. Maybe a little, little ass mad. Now, can you blame him? I mean, after all, his fucking car has exploded for the 14th time. It's always a shame when you can't figure out, God, what's the matter with my uh, my shitty used BMW from 1974? Oh, is it uh, every single part on the car? Well, it's a good thing that I bought extra spare parts that I keep on the off chance this shitmobile jalopy might not make it another day. Could it be the numbers? When Porcelain debuted his video with more people watching than ROTC had watching their bullshit show. Or maybe it's a fact that Porcelain's documentary really helped to highlight Mersh and just extract his essence and show it to the internet. If I had to sum up part one without spoiling it, uh, I'd do it, I'd probably do it like uh, this. I am once again asking for your financial support. It's, it about nails it, I think, really. I think about that that probably that probably hits it the nail on the head. Now I know Mersh has been upset. I uh, actually went on a cope fest about this specifically. And I was going to review that. I saw people passing it around looking, you know, talking about how he's not very happy about the uh, the documentary itself. Uh but then I thought it'd be funnier to show you something else. Rather than it's just pure fucking cope. Let's take a look at Mersh. The best example of Mersh that you maybe are ever gonna see. I want you to envision this chat. You're a Twitch streamer. You've got like 10 people watching you. It's 3 in the morning. And you're playing your fucking video game. And here comes this big, dumb, fat fuck. And he starts sending you messages about how you need to treat him well in the game. Because he's being nice to you. So what do you say? You tell him, fuck off, clout chaser. <laughs> and what happens when you tell Mersh? Fuck off, Cloud Chaser. What do you what do you imagine that he his response to that would be? Does he try to best you in the video game? Uh, does he just shit talk you back? No. I'll tell you what he does. He fires up a live stream, drunk off his ass for two and a half hours, trying to trying to destroy you because you don't want to play video games with him at three in the fucking morning. And I put together a little highlight reel, and I thought we'd watch it together. I don't know, chat. Does that sound like something that might interest you? Do you want to watch Mersh Cope because somebody doesn't want to be his super secret gamer friend? I'm thinking, I'm thinking yes. I'm thinking that would be entertaining, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, chat. Sounds like fun. I saw in chat. Well, that's all I need. Just one person. Let's take a look. Hey, guys. Um, so this guy's being mean to me. Just right off the start. Guys, I just started up my live stream, and this guy is being fucking mean to me. And we need to take a cope drag. And this guy said I was... Cl Here's why we're here, folks. He said I was... He said we were clout chasing him. So now... This dude, it's a Twitch stream where like 10 people watching him. This, by the way, I think the reason Mersh and Ralph are such good friends, he did, it, it, Ralph did the same thing to some other dude who had like 10 people watching him. He said like one thing. And then Ralph dedicated an entire evening to crying about it. So here's, here's Mersh playing a video game, browsing fucking uh, Twitch, finds a streamer that doesn't want to have anything to do with him, and will now descend into madness because of that. This fucking guy rejected our love. Rejected our love. We're just trying to be nice. I, we were so nice! <laughs> what is spastic? I just, why won't you be my friend? I am so mad at this guy right now. I need this man ruined. I'm dealing with some tax stuff. I don't even have to report Twitch to the IRS. We were so nice. 
Yeah, it'll be fun. Everybody should just report his channel now because he's like getting everybody to target a fucking a, a poor a poor guy who was nice to him. I tried to be nice. Everybody just just go report him. He won't be nice to me. I just why won't he be nice to me? Oh come on. I was saying it was a Nick Fuentes joke. Relax. Literally, everybody's going, no gay. I'm like literally doing a Nick Fuentes joke, you fucks. Jesus. This entire thing started with a genuine attempt of us being nice. I was mad when you called me Bush, we Bush League and lightweight. And now I'm going to show you how Bush League I am, homie. Yeah, no, you did this. You did it to yourself. You did it to yourself. Yeah, no, you're right. Don't take any personal responsibility. Oh, God, the irony on that one. It's a little hard to digest. Oh, I got a little burning sensation in my chest. Did did Mersh just bring up personal fucking responsibility? <laughs> I was being nice to you. Just be nice to us when we load. That's literally what I said, right, Virgin? I said, hey, can you just be nice to us when we load in? Like, like trying to be nice. We, we got to get this guy. He needs to He needs to know that he's the cloud chaser. Man, you guys are really mean to people. Well, I, you, I'm why nice. You, why are you so, why are you, oh, oh I'm nice. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, in love. yeah somebody, go, somebody go to this guy's stream and be like, you called him a clout tracer when he was trying to be nice to you. Like, what did you expect? Like, right? Like, he was being nice to you. I was being nice to this guy. The only reason this stream is happening right now is because I was being nice to him. We were trying, we were trying to be nice. He was just, he was just trying to be nice, Chad. All he, all he wanted to do was be buddies, but this, this cloud chaser, he wouldn't be nice to him. <laughs> you know, uh, the, uh, some people have speculated Mersh is under a little bit of stress, even though he claims to make $20,000 a month, uh, saying that he owes a ridiculous amount of money in back taxes. And that's why he's asking for prayers on Twitter. I disagree. I think he's asking for your prayers because he is getting enormous. At some point, he's going to break the floor. Look at the size of that dude. Look at that. That's not even a shirt. That's not a Hawaiian shirt. That's a fucking curtain. He went, he took that from the hotel room he was staying at the bowling event, and he wrapped it around himself like a muumuu, -moo, and then he stitched up the front of it. But you need to be nice about this. Okay, because our boy here is trying to be nice. Be nice, Chad. <laughs> His head is almost bigger than the fucking bowling ball. I love it. I love it. Yes, he is enormous, Chad. That is very true. I am being slightly mean. Uh, but, you know, uh, <laughs> who cares? Anyway, that's the uh, that's the official Mersh update. But I'm fucking excited, Chad Butts. I'm excited because we've got a lot of shit to go over. And, you know, we've got the end of a saga and the start of new sagas. It's really, it's kind of all over the place. It's very energizing. Makes me enthused to be on the internet again and watch crazy people do insane shit. And Ethan Ralph has suffered enough brain damage at this point that he is 100% certified bonkers. And Nick Fuentes, because of his heartbreak, is slowly going mentally insane as well. Which is why he's asking people to piss for him on camera i'm sure again no judgments nick this is a safe space we're all very accommodating to your unique interests and needs how's your month been treating you chat has it been going well mine's been going well watching people go just lunatic for no reason at all you know we've got uh, let's wrap this up we've we've got we've got the end of a saga the end of the merch saga for now really i think so as you know porcelain was working on a Mersh documentary. Now, uh, he has finally completed it. If you haven't had a chance to go watch either part one or part two, those are up on Porcelain's channels. If you remember the last time, <laughs> Porcelain uploaded uh, part one of his documentary. Uh, Mersh was not super happy about that. Uh, decided to to basically call him a pedophile. Uh, he got very ass-blasted about it. Now, Mersh had been saying for quite some time that 
This would be the worst documentary Porcelain ever did. Nobody was going to watch. It's going to be shit. Nobody's interested. Porcelain, you washed up. All right. Uh, turns out that's not the case. Videos are on their well on their way to 100,000 views. <clears throat> Sorry. Probably probably higher than that. Probably higher than that. And of course, you know, as part of our Mersh segment, this will probably be the last Mersh segment unless he does something truly insane. But I don't know, Mersh, how you're going to outdo Ethan Ralph and Nick Fuentes at this point. They're just going to kind of fade into the background for a while, really. Unless, like, you fuck your cat on camera or something. I mean, maybe Mersh will fuck his cat to death <laughs> and then run from the police in his broken BMW. That might do it. But, out, you know, outside of that, I don't really see how you're going to how you're going to outdo them. What, what are you going to do? How are you going to compete with that? You're, you're fucking with a whole new level of crazy here, Mersh. And I just don't think you have the oomph to pull it. But, you know, as part of, you know, how we roll here, you know, usually I'll, I'll shill the merch store, you know, put up a picture like this and then spam the link and tell you it's in the description. And then I'll play the, the clip, this clip, the clip you all know so well that I love. I love this fucking clip. I mean, I'll probably use it forever just because it's stupid as fuck. And why wouldn't you? And I want you to know right now. That if I, I will be keeping track and I will be keeping tabs. And if I ever see people over here trying to play, trying to play cool with all of us here at Nightwave. But then if I ever go over to a gym stream and I see you donating to Jim and sucking his fucking fake cancer dick. You're done. Oh, God, I forgot to turn my mic on. I got so excited, I forgot to turn my mic on for a second there. I was going to say, it's a nice little bookend. It's a nice little ending. But I was going to say, if you look in the description, you'll see a, a secret little merch store link. Because uh, I had a lot of people say, boy, we like the Bully of the Week thing, but Teespring wouldn't let you keep it up there because bully is a bad word. And Teespring doesn't like bad words, apparently. So I decided to, uh, to to branch out a little bit, just a tiny bit, into a, nerd, a new merch store. Uh, there you go. You want the Bully of the Week shit? You want the Chud Bud stuff? Different hats? There you are. Look at that. Oh, there's a whole new fucking thing to shill. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. There you go. Look at that. All the, all the Bully of the Week shit. There you go. Oh, what have we not covered? Got over some stuff. Talked about some fun stuff. Oh, should I should talk a little bit of Mersh? What what is there to sh like? What do I say about Mersh? He's fat and he he literally lives in a room that's nothing but a green screen surrounded by cats. I think the toxoplasmosis has made him go insane. Is do I have a Mersh clip lined up to go? There's always that kiddo one, but everybody's seen that so much. We need something a little more fun than the kiddo one. You're on a list now, kiddo. Oh. How about that time Mersh got drunk and um, got very upset people didn't want to play video games with him? He literally went on a fucking three-hour cry spree because somebody didn't want to be his video game friend. Have you ever encountered somebody like that in multiplayer? Like the person that would leave you alone? Or they're just really fucking weird? They didn't give him enough respect, so he starts drinking from the bottle crying about it? Why won't you be my COD teammate? Why won't you fucking love me? I'm a nice guy. Oh. oh, we could go with that clip. Yes, let's let's go with that clip. I think it's a couple minutes long. It's not too bad. Hey, guys. Um, so this guy's being mean to me. <laughs> oh, everything just from the from the jump. I love this clip. This guy's being mean to me. Looks right into the camera like he's expecting you're going to reach out and fix it for him. I'm being bullied. In a video game on the internet. I'm being fucked with. Somebody help. And this guy said I was... Cl Here's why we're here, folks. He said I was... He said we were clout chasing him. 
I think that that might have hurt his feelings. I don't think the guy was wrong. Now, this was a dude on Twitch with like 10 people watching. And normally you'd say, who would clout chase somebody with 10 viewers? But we're talking about Mersh here. So that's like eight more viewers than he's used to. So, I mean, the guy probably was kind of right. So now, this fucking guy rejected our love. Rejected our love. We're just trying to be nice. I, we were so nice! He was such a nice guy. Chat. So nice! I like how he gets that, uh, like, 70-year-old well, woman from Brooklyn voice when the facade breaks. <laughs> He's been rejected. He just turns into an old Jewish woman from the Bronx. Be nice. I, we were so nice! I am so mad at this guy right now. Look, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me get rid of the little dancing pudding. You can't appreciate this if he's in the way. I want you to look just how many... Sh <laughs> Perfect freeze frame. Look how fucking his eyes go into nine different directions. He's turning beet red. I'm the motherfucker having the heart attacks. He looks like he's the one actually having them. Physically, his body is shutting down at the rejection. So mad at this guy right now. I need this man ruined. <laughs> Can you destroy this teenager in this video game on Xbox Live needs to be destroyed. He will not be my teammate. Dealing with some tax stuff. I don't even have to report Twitch to the IRS. We were so nice. You know, it'd be fun. Everybody should just report his channel now because he's like getting everybody to target a fucking a poor a poor guy who was nice to him i tried to be nice chat he was trying to be nice okay he was he was desperately trying to be nice i was saying it was a nick fuentes joke relax literally everybody's going no gay i'm like literally doing a nick fuentes joke you fucks jesus this entire thing started with a genuine attempt of us being nice. I was mad when you called me Bush, we Bush League and lightweight. And now <laughs> I'm going to show you how Bush League I am, homie. Yeah. No, you did this. You did it to yourself. You did it to yourself. Yeah, no, you're right. Don't take any personal responsibility. Just be nice to us when we load. That's literally what I said, right, Virgin? I said, hey, can you just be nice to us when we load in? Like, like trying to be nice. Could you please stop headshotting me every time I come into the multiplayer game? Could you be nice? I'm old, and my reflexes are shit. And uh, my geriatric hands can't work. I've got T-Rex arms. And, uh, you know, I'm being so nice right now. And you just keep shooting me. We we gotta get this guy. He needs to he needs to know that he's the cloud chaser. Man, you guys are really mean to people. Well, I you, I'm why nice. Are you, why are you so, why are you oh, oh I'm nice, yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, he's yeah somebody go somebody go to this guy's stream and be like, You called him a cloud chaser when he was trying to be nice to you. Like what did you expect? Like, right. Like he was being nice to you. I was being nice to this guy. The only reason this stream is happening right now is because I was being nice to him. He, <laughs> he literally starts this stream to cry about not having friends in multiplayer. Amazing. <laughs> I literally started this stream because you wouldn't be my online video game friend. That is some clingy shit, bro. That is some, that is some desperation. I could smell it. It's just waft. He probably was scared. It's like, this guy's probably fucking stalking me or something. I was so nice to you. You owe me. You little slut. <laughs> you little slut with your sniper rifle. I was being so nice. Why can't he be nice to me? Why can't he? Why does he always have to attack me? Dr. Mersh, I showed you my medical records. Where's my happy birthday song? In fact, am I not owed one? I mean, I'm looking at it. Looking real to me. Lots of, lots of documentation there. Where is my birthday song? Three years of being wrong. My little pudding wants a birthday song. Now, don't worry if you don't want to do it. 
I'm sure somebody could train an AI. <laughs> I'm sure somebody could train an AI to make you sing me happy birthday, whether you want to or not. If I'm doing Animaniac covers and Johnny fucking Cash, I think we can get a uh, Fits Everyone happy birthday song from Mersh. He's wrong so much. He was wrong about porcelain. Said he's going to get 25,000 views on his documentary. I think he's at like a quarter of a million at this point. I'm getting me that birthday song. Oh, speaking of cocksuckers, let's talk about Mersh. Oh, good old Mersh. For some reason, there's like a, a weird thing with certain people that just, they seethe uncontrollably. And one of them is Mersh. And every once in a while, he'll just get like a hair up his ass and just go into a tirade. Apparently, you know, after the whole Gamergate thing, I sat down with uh, George Soros and Bill Gates, uh, Anthony Fauci and the others, and we came up with that whole COVID thing for shits and giggles. And Mersh is never going to forgive me for that. But this might be some of the edgiest shit I've ever heard him say. So I, I have to play it. I'd sacrifice a thousand Medicare's to go back to pre-COVID. I would throw Medicare into a goddamn volcano screaming to go back to pre-COVID. Think I give a fuck about your immunocompromised ass? Die already. Fucking stomp on our constitution. Kick the fucking every support beam and whatever fucking thing we had left holding up this country on you. Why won't you die, Medicare? Way out. Just die, you fucking literally. For, and, and everybody goes, oh, no, Jim, what am I? He's a boomer on paper and in his attitude. He's a literal fucking boomer. I don't know if anybody's ever listened to Revenge of the Sith or Sith, Sis and uh, his hot political takes, but it's pretty, it's pretty ironic to be called a boomer by Mersh, but it gets so good. He gets so edgy with it. I, it's, it's, it's fucking, it's almost art. He boomered all of you and you still buy his hats like fucking Mark. Speaking of hats, remember, that's MedicareMyShopify.com. Great, amazing deals on hats. Get put on a list there, kiddo. That was the funniest part. Bro, you could have even, like, trolled me better if you just worded that better. But the fact that you actually did the, are you mad Jim didn't acknowledge you. I have been half of Jim's fucking brain since he's come back to streaming. I dominate his fucking cancer-riddled brain. Doddering old fuck. I hope I'm the last thing he thinks about on his fucking deathbed. <laughs> so edgy. It's so, it's like, it's fucking 13 year old boy. Like just, it, it's, it's like the essence of edge. It's cold steel, the hedgehog, like refined down to the most immutable. I can't even put it into words. It's just fucking perfection. I hope his cynicism won't allow him to just drift off as the morphine hits him and let his last thoughts be of his best moments with Jade. He really wants to be, you know that speech that Rorschach gives in The Watchmen? Where he's like up on a rooftop and he's like, and all you scum in the gutter. You know that speech? I, I, I'm not a comic book dude, so I can't, I, I'm not going to be able to quote this verbatim to you. But that's what this is. That's his attempt at it. He's trying to Rorschach this, and the music, it's just everything, it's so fucking perfect. I want him to hold on to that cynicism. I want him to hold on to that anger. And I want to be the last fucking thing he thinks about, so his last moments on this planet are fucking ruined, if he is really sick, for everything he did to spread the COVID shit. Burn in hell. How about that? Now I'm going to take a super serious drag off my cigarette. Ooh. <laughs> I want the last thought on your mind, Medicare. Is a, it's going to be me dragging this cigarette. Deep, deep sucking. Fucking didn't acknowledge me. Talked about my dick for five and a half hours. I'd sack. <laughs> that's, that's the capstone. I know. That's a, a minute and 40 second buildup. Okay. Of his just his Rorschach impersonation. And then you get to the very end and we find out what really, it's not COVID. This isn't, he's not upset about COVID. He's not upset about COVID. Here's what he's upset about. Dick for five and a half hours. He talked about my dick for five and a half hours. This man has been talking about my cock on the internet. 
and I want him to fucking die in the fires of hell. <laughs> He's been talking about my cock. You might be wondering, what the fuck is he even talking about? He's talking about the porcelain documentary, which, by the way, he said will only get 20,000 views, now combined up to 400,000. More specifically, he's talking about the interview I did with uh, Porcelain, Five and a Half Hours, where I was introduced to all the goofy shit this guy does. Now, we didn't talk about his cock for five and a half hours. We gave it about as much uh, attention as it has inches in length. So about a minute or two, we talked about it. But that was over a year ago, and he still remembers it. It's really funny to listen to somebody talk about seething and anger and ass mad. When they give a Rorschach speech and cap it off saying that this dude talked about my dick years ago on the internet. That's what he's mad about. We're talking about Mr. Liquidity here. I got 20 thousand. This is Porcelain, by the way. He's ready to come after him. I'm less. I'm liquid for no less than 20K right now. Sue me. Let's go. Pull all your info to the court system. 20K liquidity merch. Which is weird, right? Because if you're a dude with all that money, why are you running GoFundMes for cats? Like, I'm trying to put myself in the mind of a guy that's got a very small cock like Mersh, who sees on the internet just just anger, the, the, the corporeal form of anger, because some dude talked about his tiny little cock, and he's out there running around stealing cats from people. Like, this is his life. He gets angry on the internet at a dude that's dying, and then he steals cats from people and asks for money for doing it. It's pretty brazen. I mean, I've heard of Hustle and Griff before, but I've never heard of a dude that steals fucking neighborhood cats and then tries to get people to pay him for it. There's probably like, can you imagine all the crying little kids in this neighborhood as he corrals up their fucking animals and then go fund me uh, raises for them? I, I don't know what he does with them afterwards, what he needs to, what is, how much is this amount? $700 was originally like 1500 but he's liquid for 20 k He's liquid for 20 k folks. This is Mr. Rich over here, Richie Rich. But see, this is this is what's funny to me. So um, he he gets very angry, wants his last, uh, you know, his, his Rorschach thing, very upset about the penis thing. And then I swear to God, it's like the Vine comedy. It's like the hand of God reached down from the heavens above and just thought it would be funny to do this. So there's Marsh talking about wishing me death and how I choke on it and the morphine doesn't help and I'm going to suffer. And then a day or two later, what happens? He has a horse seizure. Oh, Andy just said, says he did, he did it. Fucking work. All right. He needs to be in the That was fucked up. <laughs> was that a little fucked up? I think you just made horse noises, my dude. What the fuck was that? Like, bro, I got cancer and I've had multiple heart attacks. And I've never sounded like a horse once. There's never been one occasion where the cardiologist or the oncologist walked up to me and said, Hey, Jim, why are you sounding like a horse? What the fuck was that? <laughs> what was that? Are you speaking in tongues? Did the Holy Spirit enter you? Was your wrath so remarkable that you're speaking like uh, uh, like the Babylonians? Let's uh, let me let me see if I can let's replay that. Let's uh, let's replay that. We're gonna replay that. We're gonna look for the exact moment the horse seizure kicks in. <laughs> oh, it's coming. His body's about to fail him. He did it. Fucking work. All right. He needs to be. Here he comes. That's the moment right there. Lights out. Glass Joe here has been knocked out by a vape pen. That's why he never went into boxing. No wonder he avoided that fight with Baked Alaska. Apparently inhaling is enough to drop his ass in round one. <laughs> it's either a horse or a Native American. Like He's trying to do like an Indian impression. A very racist one, by the way. Is that a horse noise or a rain dance? Is he, is he praying for rain? Does his crops need water? <laughs> and down he goes. And down he goes. Our little horse, our stallion. Oh, he's never going to win that derby. <laughs> <clears throat> I 
Now, if you look very closely, very closely, you can see his googly eyes. I swear to God, I swear to you, you can see his googly eyes behind his glasses have gone Mr. Potato Head. And they are going in directions and bugging out in an in, in amount that shouldn't even be humanly possible. But this is a look of pure terror. He has lost complete control of his body. His Native American rain dance has failed. The horse noises have escaped him. He's possessed by something. And he is more he's terrified. <laughs> Where am I? What's going on? That was fucked up. Oh, that is funny as shit. So there you are. Your Mersh. Oh, good old fuck up Mersh. Lovably fuckable upable Mersh. And you do a tirade about some dude on the internet who talked about your dick two years ago, wishing him death and suffering. And then a day later, a day later, you're having horse seizures live on the air. I don't know. I'd call that karmic. I call that, it's a little bit karmic, wouldn't you? Chad, am I wrong on this? Did he, did he go Rama Rama? Was that what happened here? Oh, it's a possibility. Maybe he went Rama Rama on us. I don't know. God damn. That's, you know what? I'm not even going to say that's related to me. I'm going to say that's, that's like Gaia. That's Mother Earth punishing him for stealing her children. He's stolen so many cats, the spirit of nature itself reached up and made him make animal noises. And it's going to keep happening, Mersh. It's not going to stop. Every animal you steal, you're going to have more and more horse seizures. Next thing you know, Royce is going to be feeding you carrots. They're going to put a saddle on your fat ass back and ride you around the property. You're not going to know what's going on because your brain's going to be destroyed by the horse seizures. Stop stealing cats. You're making, <laughs> you're making children cry. Oh, just like you're going to be crying. Let's be honest. Royce is a big guy, Marsh. Like, if he gets on your back, if he saddles up, shit's going to get broken. And you don't want that. You already got brain damage from horse seizures. <laughs> oh, I hope he does more. Like, I hope he has more, like, of these villain speeches. We've got Rorschach. Maybe he can do a little bit like a Joker or something. Cobra Commander. Some Destro. I don't know. Fucking Megatron. Just pick something, man. And do it, because I'm curious what's going to happen to you, like, two days later. So we got Rorschach turns into horse seizure. What, does Megatron make you bark like a dog? You're going to start making parrot noises if you act like Starscream? Like, where is this going? This is interesting to me. You've got my attention. For the first time in your shitty internet career of boring streams, you've done something entertaining. Mark that on a calendar. Call it a holiday. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, speaking of cocksuckers, let's talk about Mersh. Oh, good old Mersh. For some reason, there's like a, a weird thing with certain people that just, they seethe uncontrollably. And one of them is Mersh. And every once in a while, he'll just get like a hair up his ass and just go into a tirade. Apparently, you know, after the whole Gamergate thing, I sat down with uh, George Soros and Bill Gates, uh, Anthony Fauci and the others. And we came up with that whole COVID thing for shits and giggles. And Mersh is never going to forgive me for that. But this might be some of the edgiest shit I've ever heard him say. So I, I have to play it. I'd sacrifice a thousand Medicars to go back to pre-COVID. I would throw Medicare into a goddamn volcano screaming to go back to pre-COVID. Think I give a fuck about your immunocompromised ass? Die already fucking stomp on our constitution kick the fucking every support beam and whatever fucking thing we had left holding up this country on you why won't you die medicare way out just die you fucking literally for and, and everybody goes oh no jim what else he's a boomer on paper and in his attitude he's a literal fucking boomer i don't know if anybody's ever listened to revenge of the sith or sith sis and uh his hot political takes but it's pretty it's pretty ironic to be called a boomer by Mersh, but it gets so good. He gets so edgy with it. I, it's, it's, it's fucking, it's almost art. He boomered all of you, and you still buy his hats like fucking Mark. Speaking of hats, remember, that's MedicareMyShopify.com. Great, amazing deals on hats. 
Get put on a list there, kiddo. That was the funniest part. Bro, you could have even, like, trolled me better if you just worded that better. But the fact that you actually did the, are you mad Jim didn't acknowledge you? I have been half of Jim's fucking brain since he's come back to streaming. I dominate his fucking cancer-riddled brain. Doddering old fuck. I hope I'm the last thing he thinks about on his fucking deathbed. Edgy. It's so it's like it's fucking 13 year old boy. Like just it, it's it's like the essence of edge. It's cold steel the hedgehog, like refined down to the most immutable. I can't even put it into words. It's just fucking perfection. I hope his cynicism won't allow him to just drift off as the morphine hits him. And let his last thoughts be of his best moments with Jade. He really wants to be. You know that speech that Rorschach gives in The Watchmen? Where he's like up on a rooftop and he's like, and all you scum in the gutter. You know that speech? I, I, I'm i not a comic book dude, so I can't, I, I'm not going to be able to quote this verbatim to you. But that's what this is. That's his attempt at it. He's trying to Rorschach this. And the music, it's just everything. It's so fucking perfect. I want him to hold on to that cynicism. I want him to hold on to that anger. And I want to be the last fucking thing he thinks about. So his last moments on this planet are fucking ruined. If he is really sick. For everything he did to spread the COVID shit. Burn in hell. How about that? Now I'm going to take a super serious drag off my cigarette. Ooh. <laughs> I want the last thought on your mind, Medicare. Is a is gonna be me dragging this cigarette. Deep, deep sucking. Fucking didn't acknowledge me. Talked about my dick for five and a half hours. I'd sack <laughs> That's that's the capstone. I know. That's a, a minute and forty second buildup, okay? Of his just his Rorschach impersonation. And then you get to the very end and we find out what it really, it's not COVID. This isn't, he's not upset about COVID. He's not upset about COVID. Here's what he's upset about. Dick for five and a half hours. He talked about my dick for five and a half hours. This man has been talking about my cock on the internet and I want him to fucking die in the fires of hell. <laughs> He's been talking about my cock. You might be wondering, what the fuck is he even talking about? He's talking about the porcelain documentary, which, by the way, he said will only get 20,000 views, now combined up to 400,000. More specifically, he's talking about the interview I did with uh, Porcelain, five and a half hours, where I was introduced to all the goofy shit this guy does. Now, we didn't talk about his cock for five and a half hours. We gave it about as much uh, attention as it has inches in length, so about a minute or two. We talked about it, but that was over a year ago, and he still remembers it. It's really funny to listen to somebody talk about seething and anger and ass mad when they give a Rorschach speech and cap it off saying that this dude talked about my dick years ago on the internet. That's what he's mad about. We're talking about Mr. Liquidity here. I got 20 thoughts. This is Porcelain, by the way. He's ready to come after him. I'm less. I'm liquid for no less than 20K right now. Sue me. Let's go. Pull all your info to the court system. 20K liquidity merch. Which is weird, right? Because if you're a dude with all that money, why are you running GoFundMes for cats? Look, I'm trying to put myself in the mind of a guy that's got a very small cock like Mersh, who sees on the internet just, just anger. The, the the corporeal form of anger because some dude talked about his tiny little cock and he's out there running around stealing cats from people. Like, this is his life. He gets angry on the internet at a dude that's dying and then he steals cats from people and asks for money for doing it. It's pretty brazen. I may have heard of Hustle and Griff before, but I've never heard of a dude that steals fucking neighborhood cats and then tries to get people to pay him for it. There's probably like can you imagine all the crying little kids in this neighborhood as he corrals up their fucking animals and then go fund me uh, raises for them? I, I don't know what he does with them afterwards. What he needs to, what is, how much is this amount? $700 was originally like 1500 but he's liquid for 20 k He's liquid for 20 k folks. This is Mr. Rich over here, Richie Rich. But see, this is, this is what's funny to me. So um, he, he gets very angry. 
Watch his last, uh, you know, his, his Rorschach thing. Very upset about the penis thing. And then, I swear to God, it's like divine comedy. It's like the hand of God reached down from the heavens above and just thought it would be funny to do this. So there's Marsh talking about wishing me death and how I choke on it and the morphine doesn't help and I'm going to suffer. And then a day or two later, what happens? He has a horse seizure. Andy just said, says he did, he did it, it fucking work. All right, he needs to be. Mm. That was fucked up. <laughs> was that a little fucked up? I think you just made horse noises, my dude. What the fuck was that? Like, bro. I got cancer and I've had multiple heart attacks and I've never sounded like a horse once. There's never been one occasion where the cardiologist or the oncologist walked up to me and said, Hey, Jim, why are you sounding like a horse? What the fuck was that? <laughs> what was that? Are you speaking in tongues? Did the Holy Spirit enter you? Was your wrath so remarkable that you're speaking like, uh, uh, like the Babylonians? Let's, uh, let me, let me see if I could, let's replay that. Let's uh, let's replay that. We're gonna replay that. We're gonna look for the exact moment the horse seizure kicks in. <laughs> oh, it's coming. His body's about to fail him. He did it. Fucking work. All right, he needs to be. Here he comes. That's the moment right there. Lights out. Glass Joe here has been knocked out by a vape pen. That's why he never went into boxing. No wonder he avoided that fight with Baked Alaska. Apparently inhaling is enough to drop his ass in round one. <laughs> it's either a horse or a Native American. Like, he's trying to do like an Indian impression. A very racist one, by the way. Is that a horse noise or a rain dance? Is he is he praying for rain? Does his crops need water? <laughs> and down he goes. And down he goes, our little horse, our stallion. Oh, he's never going to win that derby. <laughs> now, if you look very closely, very closely, you can see his googly eyes. I swear to God, I swear to you, you can see his googly eyes behind his glasses have gone Mr. Potato Head. And they are going in directions and bugging out in an in, in amount that shouldn't even be humanly possible. But this is a look of pure terror. He has lost complete control of his body. His Native American rain dance has failed. The horse noises have escaped him. He's possessed by something. And he is mortified. He's terrified. <laughs> Where am I? What's going on? That was fucked up. Oh, that is funny as shit. So there you are. Your merch. Oh, good old fuck up Marsh. Lovably fuckable upable Marsh. And you do a tirade about some dude on the internet who talked about your dick two years ago, wishing him death and suffering. And then a day later, a day later, you're having horse seizures live on the air. I don't know. I'd call that karmic. I call it, it's a little bit karmic, wouldn't you? Chad, am I wrong on this? Did he, did he go Rama Rama? Was that what happened here? Oh, it's a possibility. Maybe he went Rama Rama on us. I don't know. God damn. That's, you know what? I'm not even going to say that's related to me. I'm going to say that's, that's like Gaia. That's Mother Earth punishing him for stealing her children. He's stolen so many cats, the spirit of nature itself reached up and made him make animal noises. And it's going to keep happening, Mersh. It's not going to stop. Every animal you steal... You're going to have more and more horse seizures. Next thing you know, Royce is going to be feeding you carrots. They're going to put a saddle on your fat ass back and ride you around the property. You're not going to know what's going on because your brain's going to be destroyed by the horse seizures. Stop stealing cats. You're making, you're making children cry. Oh, 
just like you're going to be crying. Let's be honest. Royce is a big guy, Mersh. Like, if he gets on your back, if he saddles up, shit's going to get broken. And you don't want that. You already got brain damage from horse seizures. <laughs> oh, I hope he does more. Like, I hope he has more, like, of these villain speeches. We've got Rorschach. Maybe he can do a little bit like a Joker or something. Cobra Commander. Some Destro. I don't know. Fucking Megatron. Just pick something, man. And do it, because I'm curious what's going to happen to you, like, two days later. So we got Rorschach turns into horse seizure. What, does Megatron make you bark like a dog? You're going to start making parrot noises if you act like Starscream? Like, where is this going? This is interesting to me. You've got my attention. For the first time in your shitty internet career of boring streams, you've done something entertaining. Mark that on a calendar. Call it a holiday. <laughs> Celebrate it. Oh. <sighs> Let's see. What else do we have here, Chad? We talked a little bit about JF. We talked a little bit about uh, the Hunter Avalon uh, shenanigans. A little bit about uh, Destiny. Wayne Lambright out there in the desert sucking dicks. Mersh, or Mersh making horse noises, of course. I thought we'd just do a little update on our little boy Mersh. Because I did, I did mention him at the end there. Now, if you remember, last on Dragon Ball Z, he was making horse sounds. I don't know why. Why does a man sound like a horse? It's a great question. But he did. <laughs> oh, Andy just said, he says he did, he did it. It fucking work. All right, he needs to be. Yeah, just ride it out, buddy. Just ride out that massive fucking stroke. Uh, so you know, last we left off, Marsh had a little bit of a, a little bit of a horse down moment. I don't know. I'm not sure why it happens, but apparently it happened a second time, and it's even more entertaining the second go around. Let's take a look. Female cop, gun drawn. Female cop, gun drawn. Okay, I don't know if you've caught that yet. I think we might be in what they call the aura of a stroke or a seizure. It's kind of like it's settling in right now. Female cop gun drawn. It's very hard-hitting, impactful news from ROTC. And dog does it. Wait a second here. I think something might be wrong with my brain. Things don't seem to be processing properly. But I can't show weakness on stream, so let me try to tough this one out. Female, female cop. What? What? Why female cop? Be <laughs> oh, oh, that's the good stuff, Mersh. Yeah, let me see that brain damage, fat boy. Female cop. What? What? Why female cop being most competent cop on this scene? Oh God. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, this is not good. My brain is melting. Hang on. Just got to take a little bit. <laughs> take a little breather. Ride this stroke out. That'll do it. Fem female. Female. She shit. She showed. She shit. She shit. Shit. Female. Shitting. Female cops. She, she showed restraint. I... Folks, you know, this is a little PSA from Jimmy to you. Uh, this is what happens when you eat cat shit. All right, when you live in an apartment full of nothing but cat shit, the cat shit has melted his fucking brain. This is why you don't kidnap cats from the neighborhood and then sleep with them on your face. Because the next thing you know, you're doing seashell seashells by the seashore shit and she mail shops. I. Uh... Yeah, let me pour a drink. That ought to help the fucking stroke. How bad is Dayton, Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> if I ever have a fucking stroke, if I ever have a, like, if I'm in that situation, I want to, God, please let me remember that one line. There's something about a man having massive brain trauma, and then out of nowhere, he's, th he's doing fucking limericks. She-mail, she-mail cop. How's Dayton, Ohio, by the way? 
It's, it's like a side phone. What about those airline peanuts? How bad is Dayton, Ohio? I, I, <laughs> I get him, I'll put my headphones back. I, I just... Dog, doggo doesn't die. Female <laughs> cunt. Do, doggo doesn't die. The female cunt. Dayton, Ohio, by the way. Dog, doggo doesn't die. Female cop. Gun drawn already. Got gun. Female, female. Other AT, ATF. Fed, feds would have shot dog. Feds would have shot dog. It's like that's the end of the clip, by the way. There, there, there was a little more where he starts to recover, but that's not as funny. <laughs> it was a minute. The dude, the first one he had. Lasted like 10 seconds and he made horse noises. Now he's talking about doggos dying and female cop. And of course, the lovely town of Dayton, Ohio. We all love Dayton. Every stroke victim in the country. I think that's on like the checklist when you go into the ER and they're like, has he had a stroke or not? I don't know. If you ask him about Dayton, Ohio, they all love talking about Dayton for some reason. I can't figure it out. Not looking good. I think the toxoplasmosis has reached his limbic system. Soon, the cat shit will control him. Like a puppet. Mersh will be controlled and piloted. Like some kind of weird anime. It's a big fat fucking mech suit made of Mersh. Piloted by toxoplasmosis. Cat shit. Living in his brain. He won't even know what's going on. Nobody in this neighborhood's going to know what's going on. Royce ain't going to have a clue. So he keeps talking to me about female cops and doggos dying. I don't know what the fuck is up with him. Sad. If only Coach Red Pill was here, maybe he could give him some life advice. Life coaching advice. You know who could use a little a little life coaching advice, right? Is that all that lined up? But the main focus, the main thrust of the stream was burying a motherfucker today. Welcome to the Yagoogly of Mersh. Mr. Mershtastic, the cat thief. Oh, floppy tits. We were going to talk about floppy tits. He was going to be one of four subjects, three other subjects. Nice little funny Easter celebration. But then I started to notice something. Mersh started to spaz out multiple days, day after day after day after day of seething ass pain. Just unbelievable ass pain. Now, we've watched a little Mersh over the last year and a half. I've shown clips, a five-minute segment there, uh, ten minutes here. It's really, you know, kind of divided up, spread out. But Mersh kept going day after day. He even hedged his bets a little bit today because I think he's a little nervous. Now, if you're unfamiliar, we're going to go... We're, listen, it's going to be a weird vibe doing this Mersh shit and then infusing it with something fun like Tomlinson or, uh, you know, uh, uh, our, our psychotic TikToker or Boogie or anybody else. So I've decided to really dedicate this Easter cat stream to Mr. Mersh, because he wants attention, and I feel like giving him attention, because he did something so monumentally fucking retarded that I can tie him to, that being able to say the sentence that I'm going to say coming up is just so much, it's so worth it to me that I can't, I can't not do it. So we're going all Mersh today, baby. We're going all in on that cat thief motherfucker. <laughs> we're going to talk about Mersh. Now, Mersh has gone on for like two years incessantly that I am faking dying and I'm faking being sick. And he has really spiraled fucking into crazy town over the last like three or four days. So I thought I would just provide irrefutable proof to make him look fucking retarded and then point out something. I don't even think in his, in his arrogance and his, his toxoplasmotic mind that he noticed he did. And it's so funny to me, based on the fights that he's had and the things that he, you know, purportedly his ideologies, what he's done is so monumentally stupid. It's a, such a big fuck up um, that it brings me glee to point this out. So I would get comfortable because we've got a lot. We've got a lot of merch coming up. Now I, I know, I know. How could how could how could our beautiful boy look at him? Look at that physique. Just take a moment to really drink it in. This is Mersh. This is Mersh. This is like, this is a typical day for Mersh, by the way. This isn't me fucking around. This guy lives in an apartment and he wears a green screen suit all day long. 
and he does little cat theater. This is what, he's a grown man. This grown man lives in an apartment, and he does cat theater. Now, you may be asking, what is cat theater? What the fuck does cat theater mean, Jim? What does a grown man do when he engages in cat theatrics? Well, Marsh likes to green screen himself <laughs> with his fucking cats all day long and put on little plays. See, Marsh doesn't have family or friends. Rice threw him out of the house because he wanted to fuck his wife after eight years. So Mersh lives alone. So little Mersh runs around stealing cats. And then he puts on little cat theater shows. He's got little Bojangles. Now, he's, he calls them different names on streams, but I happen to know what their actual names are. Mr. Bojangles. Twisted Carl Links. I don't know why it's Twisted Carl Links, but that's the name of the cat. Mr. Bojangles, uh, Twisted Carl Links. And he puts on little shows in his little green screen suit all day long. The problem is, Mersh is so obese, you can tell from his physique, that the folds of fat create shadow zones. You can see his triangular pubic mound in the middle of the picture right there. His little T-Rex arms can't really reach it. But it creates a shadow. So when he tries to do these green screen effects in his cat theatrics as he recreates Disney movies by himself at midnight, and his little floating head is going all around, you just see little obscure bits and bobbles of his body his triangular pubic bone, his four tits, the fat he somehow accumulated in the creases on the insides of his elbows, which is an accomplishment for a fat person. Really building up the adipose tissue there takes a lot of work. It's not muscle. It's Twinkies. So our boy here, and he's wearing sunglasses inside like all the cool kids do. Him, Ethan, Ralph. I don't know why that is. Not 100% sure what it is with grown men wearing sunglasses at midnight in their house as they play with cats. Imagine walking in on this shit. Imagine you're a whore. You're like a hooker. And some lonely guy, some fat incel who can't win in Vegas, calls you up because he saw your Craigslist ad. And he's like, I am so desperately horny. Nobody will touch me because my pubic mound is too tiny. You've seen my pictures. There's no penis there. It actually, it creates a, look at the shadow. There's no genitalia. It is a triangular pubic mound because the penis is inverted. <laughs> anyway, calls up the hooker. Hooker shows up, and this is what she walks into. This is like one of those true crime podcasts, like uh, Coffee and Killers, or whatever the fuck. You know, all, all those uh, Coffee House Killers, whatever they're called. You know, you, you, YouTube channels that go over the psychopaths that end up killing somebody in a 30, 40 minute format. This would be like a picture that would be shown on that, like about 10 minutes into the video. And this is what she saw when she walked into the apartment. And it's just him holding a knife in a green screen suit with cats screeching all around him. Incessant screeching of cats. <laughs> okay. That's our merch. I just wanted to bring you up to date on who we're talking about. Give you a physical picture of what this guy looks like because we're going to see a lot of him sitting down. He doesn't get up a lot. He sits down quite a bit, so I wanted to give you a full body picture. Really let you take it all in. So it's been an interesting couple of days. And I've got some clips here of him being extraordinarily mad. So let's, uh, let's get those queued up. We're going to go right through them. And then I'm going to do something really funny and just blow him out of the water so he just looks like a complete fucking retard. Because <laughs> that's entertaining to me. Of course, before I do that, I probably should chill because I'm a fucking whore. And I got this fancy little video. Oh, I got a fancy little video about my hats, hats for hats, and all that shit. Oh, boy. Well, you know what? We're going we're gonna to hold off on my hats for hats for a minute. We're going to go into... I've actually listed these as Mersh Ass Pain Clips that I've stolen from somebody on Twitter who has a lot more patience than I do to clip them out. So this is how it started. This is clip number one. Trust me, just pay attention to this because it's going to be funny for reasons Mersh doesn't understand. <laughs> it's going to be really, really funny for reasons this fucking moron doesn't understand. Okay, so this is uh, Mersh asking number one. Let's cue it up. Have you guys seen the L's that Medicare has been taking lately? I But be... These are a lot of L's, folks. Now, he's he's pulling up a Twitter account. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Couldn't be me. But he's going to go over the L's that Medicare's taken. Let's take a look. Let's listen. Let's uh, listen in. Because he's been spricking about Ralph and a couple other people lately, and some of the things that have come out in Kino Casino and Hoffman, and I'm, look, by the way, I'm sure Hoffman has given Medicare money. I'll bet my reputation on it. Oh, he's, he's betting his reputation on a lot of things, really. There's a lot of things he's going to bet his reputation on. But I like that he brought up Gabe Hoffman to start with. Let's let's start there. 
because this is going to get funny for reasons you'll find out in a minute. So Gabe Hoffman's this Jewish dude who did this documentary about pedophiles, about hunting pedophiles. It's like a Jewish guy who hunts pedophiles. And Mersh hates him. Now, Mersh used to work with him. Got really friendly with him back in the days when he was doing Dan Schneider videos. You know, the Nickelodeon guy that's got the foot fetish. But uh, Mersh doesn't like him anymore now because Gabe Hoffman uh, apparently isn't a fan of Ethan Ralph and, you know, Ethan Ralph strangling women. <laughs> so uh, now he's on the shit list with Mersh. King Mersh doesn't like him. Oh, that Gabe Hoffman and his pedophile hunting. I really don't like that guy very much. Uh, but apparently I'm a part of the conspiracy. I work with Aquino Casino and Gabe Hoffman to um, do things. We'll find out. But I just, it's important you know who Gabe is. Trust me, it gets funnier. I've noticed a significant shift in uh, what we would call uh, sentiment towards Mr. Medicare. And just like Dan Schneider, it just feels like I was there, but I was there. You know what they always say, if you're right and you're early, it's basically like being wrong. So this is hours of him spurting tonight. This is Mr. Medicare, by the way. Don't you know, learn otherwise. Now, I want to, uh, uh, you know, entreat you all. Isn't that a fancy word? Listen to me using those big dollar, big boy words. Oh, I'm s feeling so smirt tonight. I'll entreat you all to go check out that Twitter account and look at the spurging he's particularly talking about. Uh, the Twitter account he's referring to is Moshi Moshi Moan over on uh, Twitter. That's M-O-S-H-I-M-O-S-H-I-M-O-A-N. And he's talking about uh, uh, spurging out. And he's, he's showing this, this long conversation, these multiple conversations. I want you, when you get a chance, after I show you why this is really funny to me, to go look and verify that what I'm telling you is true, and this catastrophic fucking retard has done the dumbest thing imaginable. <laughs> he normally doesn't tweet this much, and if I were a man dying, I certainly wouldn't be wasting my time doing this, but it started um, 10 hours ago. Like, this is a lot of tweets, by the way. This is going to be a little rabbit hole, but I'm going to have another smoke in your honor, too, Medicare. At some point, another shot. I'm gonna crush this whole fucking decanter. Oh yeah, he's bringing out the fancy drinks, having a cigarette, getting excited. Now, you may be wondering, and this is something I need to point out: is Mersh has always started hostilities with me. I don't know why. I'm not the one firing shots across his bow. He just randomly jumps in and decides to do it. And so he randomly decided to jump in and do it here. So let's talk about why this is funny. Now, remember what he just said. He brought up Gabe Hoffman, a man that hunts pedophiles. And he brought up Dan Schneider, a man that's accused of being a pedophile. And he's talking about me spurging out on Twitter. Oh, oh, these people, boy, uh, you know, uh, Medicare's out there. He's sure arguing a lot of people. He's looking pretty silly. All oh, these anons are teaching him a lesson. Uh, what Mersh fails to recognize, perhaps, or what he's oblivious to in this particular conversation, what got him to start ranting about me for multiple days and cheerily these people on. The people that are being argued with on Twitter, he's cheering them on, liking their tweets. Now, there's one little thing that he forgot to bring up. Um, it's all related to... <laughs> Jesus! He, he fucked up so bad! Holy shit! I don't even... I... <laughs> he fucked up! He fucked up so bad! Okay. Um, the arguments that were taking place here, the people he's cheerleading on, teaching me a lesson, um, they, they are satanic pedophiles. They're, they're satanic pedophiles. Mersh has decided to, to start coming after a dying man at the behest of satanic pedophiles. And I know you're thinking, there's no way. There's no way in hell. There's no way in hell this dumb, fat, retarded fuck is actually doing that. Oh, God, yes, he is. Oh, boys. Oh, boys. Let me introduce you to the people I was arguing with. You see, I was on Twitter one day arguing with a BDP whore. I like to call her Skeletor. I won't refer to her by her real name because she's an attention whore. She happens to be connected to a group of doctors, swatters, and pedophiles by the name of 764. She has a Discord full of people to defend her that are also, apparently, through her, connected to 764. What's 764, you might ask? Well, here's a Wired article. Let's go take a look. There are dark corners of the internet. Then there's 764. A global network of violent predators is hiding in plain sight, targeting children on major platforms, grooming them, and extorting them to commit horrific acts of abuse. This, listen to this. It sounds like cheap true crime conspiracy, an international network of predators steeped in Satanism, lure children from seemingly harmless online platforms like Discord, Minecraft, and Roblox, and extort them to sexually exploit and grievously harm themselves. 
Some victims are even pushed to suicide. Except, it's true. <laughs> uh oh, oh boy. Oh god. Oh, I don't feel so good, Mersh. Oh shit, Mersh. I don't feel so good right now, Mersh. Oh boy, something's not no. Oh god, no. So, Mersh is celebrating, clapping, cheering on the people I'm arguing with, and the people I'm arguing with are connected to satanic pedophiles. <laughs> He's cheering on satanic pedophiles. Oh, whoopsie. Oh, oh, that hurts a little bit, Mersh. Oh, I think you might hurt yourself today, buddy. Oh, holy fuck. Hey, hey, you know, God, that makes me think. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe you don't like Gabe Hoffman for other reasons. You know, the Jewish guy that hunts down pedophiles. You know, if you're willing to cheer on 764, Mersh. I mean, they're cool, right? They're those anons teaching me a lesson. I'm spurging out having an argument with literal satanic pedophiles that you're applauding. Look at me spurg out against those sex offenders that like to you know, push preteens into suicide and uh, sexually exploit them for financial gain. That's been reported on by about 20 fucking different international newspapers. <laughs> you stupid fucking bastard. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not looking so good, champ. It's a little hard for me. What, did you go after Dan Schneider, Mersh? Was it less that you hated him because he was, you know, into foot fetishism with children? Uh, you know, he's a creepy pedophile. Was it more just jealousy? Were you jealous of Dan Schneider, Mersh? Is that why you did all those videos on him? Because I'm confused. Why would you ever cheerlead on a group of people that openly admit they're a part or associate with or hang out in discords with people from 764, Mersh? I don't understand it. And all those uh, tweets that this particular person had where they bragged about it, being part of doxing and swatting, being connected also to tour swats, the people that swatted half the people in the sector, Mersh. You know, bragging openly about that. Uh, those are all archived. Those are all recorded. They're all they're all out there. There's it's irrefutable. There's no denying it. There's there's plenty of fucking logs to show it. And then there are little army of Discord simps that kiss their ass and come out and defend her every time somebody calls her out on associating with those people. But that's that's when you that's when you decided to jump in. At any point you could have jumped in, but this is a particular moment when the satanic pedophiles <laughs> when the satanic pedophiles show up, Mersh. That's when you decided to you know you're like, hey, I better go yell at Jim. He's arguing with satanic pedophiles. I can't say that enough. I can't say that phrase enough. Mersh of Revenge of the Sis. Attacking a dying man at the behest of satanic pedophiles. News at 11. <laughs> oh. You know, it's got me thinking. It's got me thinking in regards to all that cat love you've got. I mean, this is like a witch thing. I know Satanists and, ooh, all the spooky uh, supernatural stuff. Is that why you're so into cats? Are you stealing all those cats for your satanic rituals, Mersh? 764, what do the numbers mean? <laughs> I know that's a big number. That's like uh, septuple your usual viewing audience, but uh, apparently you didn't do any research on this one. What a dumb bastard. Holy shit. I, I can't believe it. Just, it kind of blows my mind. Like of all the things to jump in on, that's the one he jumps in on. But there's, you know, let's, let's let her go. Maybe he's got a brilliant, maybe he knows, maybe he knows more than we do. Let's, let's let him continue. I'm following you straight to hell. Just kidding. I'll be dead before you are. That's the ultimate win, isn't it? I mean, you're gonna win because I'll be dead before you are. But when it comes to being real, being true and telling people how I feel despite how it will affect my bottom line, or how it will affect like, oh God, how people perceive me. The difference is, you know what the difference is. Oh yeah, sure. Let me let me tell you what the difference is. Um, when I usually have a viewpoint, I stick to it. Like COVID, I haven't changed my mind on that. And God knows, you have cried about that for five fucking years, Mersh. You're a fair weather fuck. You'll change your your opinions and ideologies at the drop of a hat. Anything that it gives a financial benefit to you, like how you tell people that streaming on YouTube is dog shit, and they're sellouts and they're working for the system, and yet that's where Nightwave is. I thought you're big, uh, big buku dollars, big dick American money making it over on Rumble with all the bots. Why are you even having any business over on YouTube? Mersh, I'm confused. Why aren't you over on Rumble where all the money is? I mean, that's a viewpoint that you hold true to, right? That you stick to. 
Oh, and you also hate pedophiles. Yeah, that is, unless you're cheerleading on the satanic ones that are arguing with me, <laughs> arguing with me on Twitter for some reason. But no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't stick to something that people might change their mind on. I'm sure that COVID take I have is super popular, but I've stuck to it. You, on the other hand, one minute you're friendly with Gabe Hoffman, wanting to go after pedophiles. Next minute, all of a sudden you're cheerleading on seven six four. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm a little confused, but let's continue. Maybe he'll enlighten us. I tell people the truth. Oh, he's a truth teller. Even when I'm wrong. Get shit, Tucker. I've doubled down on being wrong on this fucking show. So once I'm dug in, I'm dug in. And I've been wrong about a lot of things, Medicare. When it comes to you, I think. Oh, I think you're going to look like an asshole tonight, Marsh. <laughs> I think I'm going to bury you so deep you're never coming out of the dirt. I mean, you know, it's going to be hard for you to wag away and kind of shoo-shoo away the fact that you are, for whatever reason, associating with a group like 764 and, you know, have any kind comments about anybody that would openly brag about being a part of that group, uh, being a part of swatting and doxing and child exploitation. I'm very confused as to why you would think that was cool. Why you uh, would go to war with people that do documentaries and hunt down pedophiles. Very confusing to me. But you also are wrong about quite a lot of things, and we'll get. I, it's, I'm going to so, show such irrefutable proof of it that I, that you'll just have nowhere to retreat. That that you'll literally be known as the guy that attacked a dying man at the behest of satanic pedophiles. That that is that is the that is the subtitle to your show from now on. <laughs> You're so fucking dumb. History will prove, just like with the Schneider shit, that I was ahead of the curve. That I was on to you before anyone else was. The difference is I show my face. I don't know if that's a difference to be proud of. How many camera lenses have you cracked? Your neighbors have to put their blinds up so they protect their fucking mirrors in the house. Oh shit, Mersh is showing his face again. Hide the glass, it's gonna crack. I show my face. He says wearing sunglasses in the house at midnight. I don't know. Why are you wearing those sunglasses? Could it be because your eyes are at two different fucking <laughs> nautical orientations? You're like some weird kind of insect. Instead of eye stalks sticking out so you could have a 360 rotation, they're trying to do it in the sockets. Now, believe me, I've had a medical emergency where my eye went all googly, but it fixed itself. Yours, on the other hand, have decided to stay permanently like that. Feel a little, little self-conscious about that? I don't know. I mean, he talked about hiring somebody to do a makeover. What sort of heterosexual man tells the internet he wants to do a makeover? Like, I could tell you that you need a fashionista to come in and tell you that uh, wearing T-shirts and five-day-old underwear is a bad idea? I mean, that's just kind of common sense. Jordan Peterson could tell you that. Wash your penis, bucko. Hi. For better or for worse. Hi. My name is Michael Stephen Shealy. I was born in Brookhaven Hospital. My family was living in Queens at the time, but we were out on Long Island and, uh, well... Wow, thanks for all that information nobody gives a shit about. We ended up staying there. And I, and I was born in, and basically as a baby spent my time in Blue Point. My formative years in Patchogue, where I moved on to Massac Beach, where I became a wigger. Um, I've done a lot of embarrassing shit in my life. Oh, I know. Like a lot of embarrassing shit. I've actually been more open and from day one, transparent about the embarrassing, disgusting shit I've done. Things where I'm the worst villain ever. And, uh... Oh, and we'll, we'll go over. He has a villain speech. Oh, I hope you're excited. The man that wears green screen leotards and does cat theater in his apartment lonely at midnight has a villain speech. An actual, honest to God, I come from a comic book villain speech. We'll listen to that later. From day one, I've always been very open about that stuff. Despite the fact that I hate my fans and I hate you and I hate the internet and I hate everybody and I hate myself Despite all that and despite being a shut-in creep uh, Who's at this point borderline agoraphobic But it's like There's either the guys that Either can go out and talk to people and be normal and, and, and finesse and hustle and have fun or there's just people that Listen to Medicare and like pot awful and never leave their fucking house. I hate myself. Despite all that and despite being a shut in creep uh, who's at this point borderline agoraphobic, I've always been an open book. With my flaws, my problems, 
what I'm going through. I'm gonna do kind of like, hey chat, we're gonna we're gonna do what 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 Mr. Medica does. Oh, you're gonna be successful? I don't think that's gonna work for you, buddy. He's gonna be like me, guys, and have an audience that's not in the three digits. He's gonna be like me, guys, and actually sell merchandise people would wear in public without cringing. He's gonna be like me, guys, and hold people's attention for more than five minutes in his drunken stupor. I don't think you're gonna be doing what Medica does. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, little ankle biter. I'm sorry, little Z celeb, uh, micro niche, uh, wannabe podcaster. I don't think you're going to be doing that. I'm so, I don't think it's happening. But let's 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 have him give it a shot. Except you guys know who I am as a person. This is what we've been doing for years. Faggot, go away, Fed. At this point, you're a Fed, and we're going to prove why. Okay, let's see. Uh, is Jim Medeker a fed? Jim Medeker is arguing with a group of satanic pedophiles and saying they're uh, dog shit. And Mersh has a contracted deal with Rumble that is botted where he expresses the views that 764 is neato. Which one sounds like a fed? Chat, which one sounds like a f Let's do a Jim Medeker. Chat. Let's do a poll. Which one sounds more like a fed? <laughs> uh, uh, the guy promoting 764 or the guy arguing with them? Who is the bigger fed? <laughs> would it be would it be Mr. Mersh or would it be Mr. Mersh? Let's see. Fair and honest, true and honest, Paul Chiat. Let's see. <laughs> Who's the bigger Fed? Fedeker's on the case. He's been sweeping up for Kino Casino. Ralph brought Raven on, whatever the fuck her name is. The boring British girl. Didn't Medicker base his entire salvo against me on like legit what did they do they believed in Ehor. Medeker like literally sunk himself to the level of teaming with pot awful and the reddit i i see i don't know exactly what he's referring to maybe he's referring to the last stream i did where i played audio proof of ethan ralph saying that he would kill his wife and strangle her well, you know, and beat her, you know, irrefutable audio proof of him saying those things. Suck his level to the e -whore. I don't know. Uh, he's talking about this chick that Andy Worski tried fucking. It's the s -s 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 stuttering his way into her panties. Maybe I'm not a hundred percent sure, but something, these are fed ops. Clearly the FBI and the NSA and the CIA knock on my door and they say, Jimmy, put down the chemo. We need you to go out there. We need you to go out there and team up with, uh, e <laughs> That's That's how we're spending our days. To get a cam girl who neglects her son. Didn't they take a whole story about me having a tiny penis? Oh, yeah, you do have an itty-bitty penis. I mean, it's it's been confirmed. We saw the picture. Do I have to show the picture again? I don't. Do you? Chad, I, I'm being honest. Do you see any genitalia in this? This is a skin-tight leotard. He's naked underneath it. Mersh is naked underneath that skin-tight leotard. I don't see genitals at all. This man is built like a Barbie doll. He's, he's a living Ken. There is no penis there. There are no testicles there. There isn't even a little fat, fatty fat vagina. There's just nothing. Maybe he's made of some kind of plastic underneath. I don't know what's underneath this leotard. But there are no genitals present. I'd say it's a fair bet there's not a very big dick under there. And then ejaculating in my pants with some fucking <laughs> fake titted cam whore try humping some fan try humping me what did i say a year or two ago when i said oh my god are you guys simping for cam girls are you guys literally simping for fucking cam girls and listening to women who i and as i pointed out and i want to point this out now because medica is doing this so it's it's not my fault show me kitties hire another attorney i guess uh, the backstory is, um, Show Me Kitties was a, a slut, a, a, a cam whore. Can we just focus on the fact that a man who is obsessed with stealing cats would try to hit it up with a woman named Show Me Kitties? Like, his cat obsession, the, ta the fucking parasites from the cat shit have wrecked his mind so badly that he can only date women with feline names. So, of course, it's Show Me Kitties. That was whoring around our community. And um, made out with me in our Airbnb, our shitty Airbnb. It was our first year in Vegas. We had no idea that you could just 
Airbnb better hotel rooms. We were in a bad apartment under the Rio, but whatever. She still showed up to it. She drove us around drunk in her fucking dad's car uh, while her son stayed with her dad to drive around a bunch of drunken fucking YouTube celebs. Uh, and then she came back to our place and she's like, I want to hang out with Aaliyah. And we made out. Uh, and she did the I really like you thing. And I'm like, ah. and I had a girlfriend at the time. I was just trying to fuck a big titted e girl. They took this chick on the air. Remember that? Medicare is doing what he's trying to like. I never talked to Show Me Kitties and I never talked to Raven. I've never talked to either of those women or even brought them up in any of the streams that I've done. I have laughed at you for having an itty bitty dick, as has been reported by numerous people, <laughs> and shown to us in pictorial abidance. Okay, that's pictorial abidance. Even the cat, look at, see, even even animals are aware that this is not the proper form of a human being. Look at the cat on the bottom, Mister Tinklewinks or whatever his name is. He's looking directly at his crotch, confused, trying to figure out why does this human being not have a penis. It baffles everyone that sees it. Even animals. Do, like, what, project onto Ralph right now. Oh, you got some spurned e-girl, and now you're going to do this whole... It's all fed behavior. He was a fed from day one. Medicare is a disingenuous faggot fed who pushed COVID shit and then pretended to die four times. Even fucking bro. It took fucking a week to bury Ronald Reagan, but we eventually buried the fucking guy, didn't we? Get over yourself. Tell the feds, build up somebody else that's trustworthy, that's not a faggot, that's not fucking some fat chink. He seems awfully angry. Very, very mad with me. Again, always shooting those shots over my bow. I gotta say, I gotta say, as mad as I might be at somebody, I wouldn't throw in with 764 like you did. You know, those satanic pedophiles merch. <laughs> Not a good look. That isn't some weird fucking also into the same weird lolly pedo fucking cults that everyone else is. Get another Patrick Little. Find a guy like that. Patrick Little's biggest mistake was that he just debuted too early. <laughs> I like how they how they fast forward the person to put this clip together through all the wrestling time. I don't know what it is with the sector and wrestling. Why every one of these fat retarded fucks wants to be a wrestler? None of them have the fucking physique of Ric Flair. I don't know why you want to emulate him. <laughs> you're already you're already far behind on it. All right, shut up. We're making fun of Medicare. You're going to get sidetracked. We're having fun. We're being drunk and whimsical, kids. We can't do that. Come on, chat. I'm trying to sell hats. I'm so bad at monetizing this, too. I'm still, like, I made some money tonight, but nobody cares. And that's fine. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's going to be those, oh, yeah, Mercer's Nanny doesn't make as much money. Yeah, if I had to spend the 40 years I've been on this earth worried about making less money than others, I'd have killed myself a long time ago. Well, well. You know, it's really interesting to me, and we're going to get into some of this now as we kind of move forward here. Lots of lots of things being thrown out, but we've learned a few things from clip number one. One, uh, Mersh is thrown in with a group of satanic pedophiles. Okay, I can, I, round of applause, everybody. He's living his best life. <laughs> Raises questions about why he hates Gabe Hoffman now and what his real issue with, uh, with uh, uh, Schneider was, when you think about it. We found out that he'll only date women with feline names. Also very interesting. He's not at all upset about me uh, selling hats. Of course, this is a complete and utter lie. I'd like to refer you to uh, some evidence that I have. Uh, let's play the clip. And I want you to know right now. Dramatic that if I, I will be keeping track and I will be keeping tabs. And if I ever see people over here trying to play, trying to play cool with all of us here at Nightwave, but then if I ever go over to a gym stream and I see you donating to Jim and sucking his fucking fake cancer dick. You're done. Oh, kiddos, you're fucking done. Now, our little truth teller here, our little savant who can see the future and knows so many things, has gone on and on and on and on for years now. 
about me being uh, a charlatan. I'm a fed. Uh, I'm clearly not sick. You know, Brian, king of pole, when he spurred out on me uh, for setting up Halloween decorations and saying my wife was doing somersaults on the rooftop, <laughs> said, Jim's, Jim's fake and everything. Jim doesn't have a wheelchair. Until Jim showed him the wheelchair that Jim owned. Until Jim posted pictures of his wheelchair to shut Brian up. And then Brian all of a sudden retreated into some other retarded shit. So I'm really looking forward to finding out what, what Mersh is going to say as we go through this. I put together a little collage, and I had to be smart about it. Now, there are reasons I have to be smart about it, and I'll, I'll show you why. Because uh, these people are insane. They're literal insane retards. Now, Mersh likes to say that, uh, oh boy, Jim's died four times, Jim's faking his illness and all this. And I've talked about being sick, and I've gone over it when people have asked in Super Chats, and I talked about it when I had my heart attack, and when I initially got diagnosed with cancer. But outside of that, I haven't really gone into great depth or detail on it, and there are certain reasons for that. One, like I said, these people are insane. I mean, they doxed my oncology doctor. This is Ethan Ralph, who took a test result I put up to mock him, and then tracked down the fucking cancer doctor and started spreading it on Telegram to teach me a lesson. Now, Mersh and Ralph are retards who would literally fuck with a dying man's cancer doctor because they are that angry. Take a minute to really think about that. How insane you have to be. At what level of ass seething cope you need to exist at to attack a cancer doctor of a dying man. But that's what these two dumb fucking morons did. You know, uh, we've got uh, Ralph, I'm going to strangle my wife. And of course, we've got uh, fucking Mersh, I love 764. Completely, desperately insane. So I had to put together my little collage here in a way uh, that's going to, you know, show enough to prove everything that I've said is true, while at the same time not letting these psychopaths, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what their plan was on that, but just to, just to cover my bases. Just to cover my bases. So uh, let's start with the easy stuff. You know, when I when I had my heart attacks and Mersh uh, said I faked those, yeah, I started posting test results, but those weren't good enough. Clearly, I've doctored these. These are clearly, do you know, they're fake. Those are fake. I made those all, you know, all up. Those those aren't real. I spent my time teletyping them. Uh, tink, 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 tink. Then I, you know, posted my cardiac discharge papers from getting a stent put in. But, of course, that also was, you know, completely fake. You know, love faking cancer so much. Decided to fake a heart attack, too. Four out of five infarctions, pretty good. You know, then I posted the image of my actual heart with a stent in it. But, you know, of course, this is all fake, all make-believe. I made that in Adobe Photoshop. That's Adobe Photoshop. You may not know that. You may also not know that they give you a fucking stent card when you get one. I had to block out anything that these retards could use to try to track down I, uh, the cardiologist. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure that shows the date of implantment and everything else because they put you on medication where you'll die uh, if they cut into you or if they put you in an MRI machine. It will rip it out of your fucking chest if it's too strong. But of course, again, these are all, this is all fake bullshit. Jim's not, maybe, okay, maybe Jim actually had heart attacks and had a stent put in. But Mersh is right. Jim's just been faking everything. <clears throat> so let me, you know, let me, so, let me put a backing track on here. I like to call this all the tests that Jim has had over the last uh, four years. Do you guys have five minutes? Just, just pause at any point to read through. The blacked out portion are the doctors and the medical facility names, but just, you know, take a moment to drink it in. You know, Mersh, um, I, I know you go on and on and on about me faking being sick, but I actually am very sick. Sick to the point that even the experts don't know what the fuck is going on. Sick to the point that they do test after test after test trying to fucking puzzle it out. Sick to the point that they're sending me to research medicine now because nobody can figure it out. And you've gone on this tirade, this weak bullshit lying tirade that I've been faking it for for some kind of gain. I don't know what that gain would be, Mersh, as we look at all these fucking tests, repeated new ones, or ordered from new specialists. You could probably even guess what the specialist is just based on the tests you're looking at. But you go on and on and on about it. And it's really bizarre. Now, sure, maybe I'm just really committed to the lie. You know, faking stent pictures, faking discharge papers, faking stent cards, uh, faking a list of tests pulled from my fucking uh, 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 account on the medical website. This is all just smoke and mirrors, Marsh. This is just me dedicated to the ruse. Oh, we're still going. Have we, have we reached 2022 yet? Nope, we're still at 2021. We're still at 2021. Uh, you know, it's also interesting to me, Marsh, um, 
even having cancer and heart attacks and autoimmune diseases and having to go into research medicine and even being in indescribable pain. Um, I don't have GoFundMes, Marsh. I'll do streams and sell hats, but I did streams and sold hats before I got sick. You, on the other hand, uh, you crash your car into a wall because you're a drunk driver and you do a GoFundMe. Uh, you steal somebody's cat and you do a GoFundMe. Can't make your rent, you do a GoFundMe. Need IRS money, you do a GoFundMe. Uh, need to pay off a debt, you do a GoFundMe. Want to go on a Vegas trip, you do a GoFundMe. You'll beg and barter and plead for money at every opportunity. And you'll do it in ways I don't. Now, I don't stream consistently anymore because I'm dying and because I'm horrifically sick. But I still stream occasionally to earn money to leave to my wife. What's weird to me, Mersh, is I saw you took a couple days off because you had a bad case of the SADS. Couldn't make it to your ROTC show you. Mersh had a little case of the SADS. Oh, oh, poor. Were you having a mental health day? Were you, couldn't make it to your stream because of a mental health day, champ? Um, oh, that's that's a toughie. I'm sitting here right now, Mersh, streaming. Uh, as my bones turn to dust, as the rheumatoid arthritis retches my hands in weird directions, as my heart is uh, fucked, as my lungs are fucked, as my organs are fucked, as I lose sensation in my body and can't walk properly anymore, uh, as I lose the ability to see properly or hear properly, as the headaches never end, Mersh, but I'm still streaming. But you needed to take a mental health day, because things got a little too tough for you, champ. Was it a, oh, God, was it a sad day for you? Couldn't steal enough cats to make rent at your Section 8 apartment, Mersh? Was that difficult? We're not done with the test, by the way. I don't know, are you seeing this? Because they're just continuing. They just continue, Mersh. Every day, poked and prodded. So fun. It's so much fun, Mersh. It's so much, it's, it's such a joy to go in and do this all the time. Oh, you know, just continuous, never ending. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of, you know, broken, broken this, broken that. Oh, oh, look at that. What's the most recent shit? Oh, yeah, that was uh, from the 15th of, uh, oh, is that this month? Yeah, when I, when I was having signs of another heart attack. That was fun. And uh, what is it? It's 50, it's two weeks later, and I'm, I'm here laughing at your retarded ass. But of course, you know, you needed that, that I got a real sad day. I got a sad day. Mersh got a sad day, guys. It's very sad. It's so sad. It's such a sad day. Shall we take a look at the list of shit, Mersh? That, uh, that they've tried to diagnose, that they've said, well, this is, you know, we think this is what you've got. This is what the antibody tests show. This is what all the different things show. Uh, maybe that's that's not good enough. I don't know. Uh, let me let me just pull up my little copy here to sh to read along. Let's uh, let's see what we've got here, Mersh. As we go, we'll start. You know, we'll 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 start. Oops, hold on one second here. Sorry, chat. I'm getting everything ready to read. Uh, in the upper right, uh, cutaneous B cell lymphoma it sounds like cancer, Mersh. Hashimoto's hypertension, vitreal artery dissection, pulmonary nodules, congenital spinal stenosis of the lumbar region, sensorineural hearing loss of the right ear with unrestricted hearing of the left ear, immunoglobin subclass deficiency, long-term use of systemic steroids, osteoporosis with pathological fractures, uh, precure, I can't even say that, percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty, Coronary artery disease involving native coronary artery of native heart with angiopectoris, or I'm sorry, without angiopectoris. Type 2 diabetes mellitus without complications, uh, a result of the steroids. Fun. Controlled substance agreement. That's for all the pain, Mersh. Uh, cushoid side effect of steroids. That's when your face turns into the moon. Inflammatory arthritis. Nice way of saying rheumatoid. Absence of sensation. Anxiety. Yeah, I got a little anxious as this was going on. As my hellscape continued. Kidney stones, migraines, congenital dilation of aorta, and disorder of the pituitary uh, gland. You know, just a few things, Mersh, I'm dealing with over here. Just really committed, really committed to the lie. I've put a lot of effort into this. I've, I've, I've put a lot of effort into this, Mersh. <laughs> you know, uh, Mr. Munchausen's going in there tricking those doctors. Tricking all those doctors, Mersh. Uh, let's see, what, what else can I show for a little Mershy poo here? Oh, boy. Uh, you know, uh, uh, of course, Jim, you know, it's, it's just faking everything. Let's look at some actual test results. Here's fun. Here, you know, this is when I learned that I was starting to fracture, you know, just ribs in my spine by itself. Uh, this was the whole body PET scan that they did on me, which again, oh God, it sounds like he's saying PET CT findings, a uh, residual mildly FDG avid soft issue, stranding, thickening in the right posterior scalp. Oh boy. Sounds like cancer dipshit. 
why was I going in again? What was the what was the 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 reason that they were sending me in? Oh, subsequent treatment planning and restaging for diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Oh, and then what's that secondary thing they saw there? Oh, the uptake from the fucking uh, uh, sugar dye they put in me that showed that I had a fucking busted couple of ribs that nobody knew about because they were all. And what was that? What was the date of that? That was that was uh, January, February, March, April. That was May, May of 2023 when they did that and found that. And then let's go to June where they do uh, X-ray of the chest and oh, what what do we find here? Up, oh, commutated acute left ri uh, fifth rib fracture, deformity of third rib. So. In the span of a month, I break two ribs and then two more ribs. And then let's not forget about the spine being shattered to glass because in December, new likely acute subacute anterior uh, compression deformity at L1 with approximately 30% of anterior height loss. And then, oh boy, good news, the L2 and L3 that broke earlier, those are okay. So one, two, three, four broken ribs and three broken lumbar uh, sections of my spine. But let's not forget, because I went in because I was having heart issues, and what did they find when they did an x-ray just to double check? Oh, you also have a new faint opacity overlying the right anterior or third rib, possibly another healing rib fracture. But, you know, we can't come, we just can't stop there. You know, the rheumatoid arthritis that cripples my hands, the broken ribs, the shattered spine, the heart attacks, the cancer, the loss of hearing, uh, eyesight, loss of sensation in the legs, being bound to a wheelchair. Let's not also forget, you know, wanting to go into probably do surgery for kidney stones. I got lucky on this one. The surgeon was ready to go in. You ever piss out kidney stones when you got a broken back and broken ribs, Mersh? It's super fun. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's, it's fucking tickles me pink. But of course, you know, I just want to just continue on faking it, faking it till I make it, you know, really just, oh, you know, show my daily regimen of pills, try my best to black out things. I'm sure they'll find another oncologist to dox, <laughs> teach the cardiologist a lesson. Now I bought this off the black market, Mersh. Um, because I was so committed to my lie, I was like, I need you to give me 15 different medications that I can show. Um, Brolanta, they always give that to people that make up things. It's such an easy medication to get for your blood thinners. And all the painkillers like the Extamsa and the Oxycodone. Doctors love giving out high-dose, powerful painkillers. It's the one thing they find to be the most enjoyable thing to do. And all the micro or uh, nitro bed and uh, you know nitroglycerin, it's all to keep the lie up. It's all to keep the lie up. You know, and the, and the letters to things like the Undiagnosed Disease Network, uh, where they're trying to get me into research medicine, or the Cleveland Clinic, or the place in Massachusetts. It's just all make-believe. It's all fictitious things in my head. You know, I don't know, Mersh, how much harder I need to blow your ass out of the fucking water. I'm really taking a moment to think that you've said for years now that I'm faking my illness, and I've posted test results... The doctor's fucking notes, uh, the diagnosis list, the medication list, the hospital discharge papers, the stent pictures. And the weird thing is, Mersh, even going through all of that, even sitting here in what I would describe, do you know when I went to the pain clinic? When you go to a pain clinic and you talk to a pain clinic doctor, they give you a sheet. And on that sheet, it says, what are your goals? What are your goals with why you're coming here? Like, what's, what's your reason for coming here? You want to uh, go to work normally, ride a bicycle, climb a mountain? And my answer was very, very simple. I don't want to die screaming. That's what I wrote down as my answer. Because it's intractable pain, Mersh. And it's so weird to me that I can sit here with a smile laughing at your uh, pubic mound <laughs> and your uh, buddying up with satanic pedophiles. And I can do a stream semi-coherently, maybe not the best stream, but a stream, but you got to take a day off for the sads? And you're the guy doing GoFundMes? Who's a grifter here, asshole? I'm really fucking confused. Why is the healthy guy taking days off his streaming career because he's a little upset and then running GoFundMes for Catsy Steals because he can't pay his Section 8 rent, but the guy dying in excruciating pain, doing it with a smile on his face, doing a normal stream, and shilling hats, I don't see a fucking GoFundMe around me, Mersh. So you make that, you know, square that up for me. Explain that. Chad, I'm confused. I'm confused. That's right. Light them up, baby. I'm confused, Chad. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. I'd be feeling a little embarrassed. We haven't even got into the embarrassing shit, Mersh. I, I jumped ahead a little bit here by showing some of this. I just wanted to set, because your first one was, 
uh, Jim is faking it. Uh, that's a lot of faking, man. I mean, to dox a doctor that doesn't exist, to get all those medications must have really, <laughs> is really putting in the effort. I must have sat there for hours putting together that fake test list, Marsh. You know, getting those PET scans to show results. I'm just very, I'm a hacker man. I'm hacker man out here hacking things. Now, I know, too, you've also asked the question, boy, why won't you die, Medicare? Well, I know Rolf asks that all the time. He maybe has a legitimate reason. Because <laughs> uh, we fucking hate each other. You, I don't get so much. But you ask things like, why won't I die? And we've hold, you know, held four funerals for you. Um, why are you streaming? Why aren't you spending your time differently? I'll tell you, it's very simple. Because unlike you, who lives with cats in a Section 8 apartment, I have a wife, you dumb fuck. When I'm dead, she's on her own. So even though I'm in horrific pain, even though life is misery, and these diseases suck, and I'm trying my best to cope with them, I'm going to take every opportunity I can to be a whore and sell a fucking hat, Mersh, so that when I'm dead, she can deal with it. I'll let you in on a little uh, lore here on uh, a little Jimmy. So my mother, when she died, uh, she had a, a aortic tear. And she lasted for about a year after that. But her insurance wasn't the best. And so because her insurance wasn't the best, uh, we couldn't afford a live-in nurse. So I took up that. Some other family helped as well, too. But, you know, I was in charge of uh, making sure the oxygen tanks were full, uh, watching that she had the cannula in, getting her appointment set up, getting her to her doctor, dealing with medical emergencies. You know, there's nothing more fun than being woken up at 3 in the morning by somebody who has fallen out of bed and their cannula has come off and they are hallucinating that there's a bat in the room and they're convinced of it. And so you have to calm them down because you don't want their heart to explode. So you move out every single fucking piece of furniture, Marsh, in the room uh, to convince them that there's nothing in there and then move it back in to calm them down. And I did that for about a year to a year and a half until she finally passed away because that's what you do for family. So I've been on the other side of it. I know what it's like to take care of a dying person. But the thing is, when she died, her estate wasn't really in order. And so when somebody's estate isn't really in order, you've got to do all this sort of shit. And there's so much pressure involved with that and in planning a funeral and dealing with uh, debts and distributing assets and just doing everything related to somebody dying. It is, it's just a ton of fucking work. And so I swore to myself when I started getting sick and when I knew I was going to die, that I would set it up so that my wife wouldn't have to deal with that. So that when I die, they can throw my ass in an oven, cremate me, scatter the fucking ashes, and everything's on autopilot. That she has money in the bank, that the house is taken care of, that there aren't things that she has to fix, that the car is working, that she knows uh, she won't have to worry about getting a job because uh, we, we've dealt with college multiple times to get multiple degrees. Uh, that she's set up to be fine, that she's taken care of, that there isn't a weight hanging over her head. So I, I'm sorry I'm not dying in the way that you think I should die. I'm sorry that I'm, I'm taking too long to do it or that I'm uh, sticking around to sell a few hats. Uh, but, you know, it's part of the responsibility of being in a marriage and having, you know, people survive you. It's one of the reasons I didn't have kids. You know, my dream for my life was very, uh, very middle of the road. Most people who become like YouTubers, oh, I want to be famous. Oh, I'm going to meet all these fucking people, these TikTok sluts and drive Lambos and do all that shit. Uh, my my dream for my life, whether it was through YouTube or other means, was to have a normal suburban house, have a couple of pets, be married, and have some kids. That was it. And I was very close to it. Got married, loved my wife, we got a house, we were happy, and then the next plan was, we're going to have kids. But too sick to do it, not responsible and you know, uh, of me with whatever the fuck this is to have kids. Because I don't want to, one, die when they're five, and then two... Whether I die when they're five or not, they end up getting what I have because we never got it figured out. So I have those responsibilities. They may not be to children, but I still have a wife. So it's really weird that you like don't get that or you can't figure it out. Or this is like some mystery to you as to why why would why, why would Jim still sell hats? Why would Jim still stream? Isn't he dying? Isn't he in pain? Yeah, I am. I am dying and in excruciating pain. But uh, you know, it's part of being a responsible adult. I know that's a difficult concept for you. You steal cats. <laughs> you steal cats and live, you know, and uh, get mad at people on the internet at the behest of apparently satanic pedophiles. But there are, you know, normal people out there that do normal things. It's not that bizarre to normal people. Uh, what I've explained, I'm, I'm pretty sure most people would hear that and be like, "Yeah, 
yeah, you probably want to make sure things are taken care of for your family once you're gone. Um, yeah, uh, being sick would suck, and you'd probably try to track it down as best you could. But apparently this is these are all mysteries to you. You don't get it. And yet I'm the grifter. And you're the one running GoFundMes because you drunk drive into a wall. You drove your car drunk into a wall. And that deserves a GoFundMe. I'm dying and leaving behind family. And I'm not doing that. I think you maybe need to reassess your opinion on this, champ. I think maybe you fucked up a little bit here, champ. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm the weird one. Maybe I'm the stream. Maybe it's all those drugs have gotten to me. They're all, they're all fucking me up. But again, I guess I got to remember that we're dealing with a villain. <laughs> we're dealing with a villain. I'm sorry. I forgot. Comic book merch is coming to get us. I'd sacrifice a thousand Medicars to go back to pre-COVID. I would throw Medicare into a goddamn volcano screaming to go back to pre-COVID. Think I give a fuck about your immunocompromised ass? Die already fucking stomp on our constitution kick the fucking every support beam and whatever fucking thing we had left holding up this country on your way out just die you fucking literally for and, and everybody goes oh no Jim what a mess he's a boomer on paper and in his attitude he's a literal fucking boomer he boomered all of you and you still buy his hats like fucking Marx. see that hat thing really pisses him off which is the perfect segue into a hat commercial oh boy Jimmy's going to sell some hats with his fantastic <laughs> hat commercial. And then we're going to come back and watch him seethe more. Like I said, this wasn't like one day of him being mad. This was fucking continuous for four days. Four days of ass-pained Mersh. Angry, angry Mersh. Convinced I'm faking my illness and then trying to hedge it at the very last minute. So my point with this stream is just to make him look like the asshole that he is. And to also show that he decided to go on this tirade at the very beginning because I was arguing with satanic pedophiles. <laughs> you can't write shit like this. You can't, you know, even, even on the, even at my end, I'm running into shit like this. This is this Tumblr DA shit. You, it's just amazing to me that he walked willingly into it. I don't know. Uh, so let's do a small break. I'm going to grab a drink. I'll put up my little hat commercial. We'll come back, watch Mersh get, uh, get angry. Maybe we'll see his little T-Rex arm slap at the air. I don't know. I don't know what this crazy fucker is going to do. Listen to his villain speech. <laughs> 